Under a dark, overcast sky, there is a red stone tower with a strange shape. Black monsters with sharp teeth, on the heads of which you can see the brain, stand in front of the main character. The red dialog box says that he is connected to the community of the dead. The next red window cheers up Su Hayek and tells them that they believe in him. Frowning intently, Su Hayek holds a carved staff that radiates purple energy and purple light. The red dialog box asks if a mage can have such power, and again encourages the main character, saying that they believe in him. Su Hayek let out a loud battle cry. Red dialog boxes repeat, Go ahead. Surrounded by monsters, Su Hayek swings his staff, which gives off a bright light. Birds fly under a red sky, and the ground is littered with the dead bodies of bug-like monsters. The main character opens his mouth slightly, there is blood on his cheek. He is lying on the ground, pierced by a huge stone spike. One of his legs is missing, and he grins, gritting his teeth, saying that he hasn't killed many people yet. Red dialog boxes say how sorry they are and ask Su Hayek to come up. The monsters are closing in on Su Hayek, who is lying on the ground. The red dialog box says that with a melee weapon, he would definitely kill everyone. The main character moved his hand slightly. The red dialog box asks if this is the end. A small multifaceted yellow game cube drops near Su Hayek's hand. The white dialog box says that Ha Hee Young, sponsored by an unknown constellation, is using her share of ownership to roll the fate die. The yellow die glows brightly, and the number 2 is visible on it. A girl in a white turtleneck with shoulder-length brown hair holds a glass of beer in her hand while sitting at the diner table, and while blushing from the alcohol, tells Su Hayek that she is a regressor. Su Hayek is holding a glass of beer in his hand, his face is also red from the alcohol, and saliva is coming out of his mouth. He asks her if she's crazy. Exhaling, he set the glass on the table, got up, and suggested that they go home, since she was drunk. The girl grabbed his wrist and told him that now was not the time for this, and asked him to listen to her. Su Hayek looked at the girl who was looking at him with a serious face and wondered why she was so serious. Raising his eyebrows, he asked if she had something important to say. With a serious frown, she said that he might not believe her, but there would soon be a tower of trials on earth. The main character jumped up from his chair, slamming his hand on the table, and asked if she was mocking him because he was abandoned by a girl. The girl irritably told him to shut up and listen carefully. Su Hayek gritted his teeth and agreed. You can see the bump on his head from the impact. The girl held up three fingers and told him to remember three things. The first is to never open the characteristics window. The second is to make a contract with the god who looks the worst when he gets to the sixth floor. The third is when his ability is awakened, to hold the weapon firmly in his hands. Frowning, Su Hayek scratched his head in puzzlement, wondering what she was talking about and if it was a joke. The girl held up three fingers and repeated once again that no matter what happened or what anyone told him, Su Hayek wouldn't open the stats window even if time was running out, otherwise her time travel would be in vain. Su Hayek scratched his head in puzzlement and said that he understood. Frowning, the girl said that until the fifth floor, he would be trained, and many gods would ask him to sign a sponsorship contract. She told him not to agree to anything, whether it was the god of light or the god of war who looked great. She said that there would be a resting place in front of the sixth floor, where he should find the most nondescript god and make a contract with him. Su Hayek thought this was definitely a joke. The girl jumped up from her chair with an exasperated face and said that when Su Hayek awakens his ability, he must hold a weapon in his hand a sword, axe, spear, or something like that. She shouted that she would kill him herself if he took a staff, bow, or sacred object. Frowning, he asked why, and said that magic was for real men. He explained that if he can throw fireballs, there will be a queue of people who want to make friends with him. Su Hayek left. He imagined putting his hand over several girls who were looking at him with amorous eyes while the monster burned in the fire. One of the girls has blue hair tied in two ponytails and is dressed in a pink maid costume. A girl in a witch's hat with blue hair squeezed her eyes shut, letting out a girlish cry. A girl with red hair and a bunny ear band on her head says that Su Hayek is very cool with her eyes closed. A girl with long lilac hair wearing a long dress with a big red bow looks at him with admiration. The girl shouted at him that he had no talent for magic, and he would have to beat the monsters with a staff like a stick because he couldn't do magic. Su Hayek furiously replied that if he couldn't play as a mage, then he wouldn't play at all. There were more bumps on the main character's head, and he said with an indifferent face that he would remember that he was not allowed to open the stats window, he was not allowed to make contracts, and he had to choose the weapon that she said. The girl let out a sigh of relief, her face relaxing a little. They were surprised to see a white dialog box appear in front of them. It says that the green belt around Zone C66432 has been removed in accordance with the law. From Zone C66432, 1 million users have been selected and are allowed to enter the Challenge Tower. If they fail to capture the Challenge Tower, their ownership of Area C66432 will be revoked.
With a tense frown, the protagonist asked Ha Hee Young what was going on and how she wasn't joking. Ha Hee Young opened her mouth with her brows furrowed, trying unsuccessfully to say something, and realized that she couldn't speak anymore. She pointed her finger at her head and showed three fingers on her other hand, asking Su Hayek to remember everything in her mind. The protagonist read her lips, three things. Clenching his fists, he nodded his head with a serious frown. He wondered if Ha Hee Young was really a regressor. She kept showing him three fingers. A white dialogue box appeared in front of the bewildered protagonist. Su Hayek thought about how he still had so much to ask Ha Hee Young. He disappeared with a flash of blue energy. A red dialogue box indicates that a secret message has been received. The next red dialogue box says, The basic system of the test tower has been changed due to decree C146231. Now the Tower of Trials can impose unfair contracts on users, as well as deceive users. A white dialog box greeted the main character, announcing that he had been selected as the conqueror of the Tower of Trials due to Act G14823. The next dialog box asked him to select a weapon to start the battle with. Su Hayek is sitting on the floor in a white room with a dialog box in front of him. Getting to his feet, he asked if this was the challenge tower that Ha Hee Young had mentioned. The white dialogue box announced that the main character's class would be determined based on the chosen weapon, and he would only have one opportunity to awaken his powers, and he would have to choose wisely. The main character took a serious look at the weapon. A bow, dagger, sword, and staff hung in the air in front of him. He said that according to Ha Hee Young, you should choose either a sword or a spear. Su Hayek held out his hands in his staff, smiling absurdly and blushing, and said that real men use magic. He remembered her saying that he would beat everyone with a staff like a stick because he couldn't use magic. Taking his hand away from the staff, he gave a frustrated smile, grabbing his wrist and saying that he would have to forget about it and better listen to the regressor. The pink dialogue box describes a rusty longsword, too long a sword, so old that it will crumble at any moment. It can still kill you. The following dialogue box asks if he chooses rusty longsword. Su Hayek, standing with the sword in his hands with a serious face, said, yes. The blue dialogue box asked the main character to open the stats window, saying out loud, stats window. Su Hayek glanced at the dialogue box. The following dialogue box indicates that the stats window is an extremely useful element when conquering the challenge tower, and users can use it to improve their abilities. Pursing his lips, Su Hayek thought of Ha Hee Young. The following dialogue boxes indicate that he will be given 5 points of characteristics, with which he will be able to strengthen himself, and he will also be able to track the growth of all indicators. Without the stats window, users are restricted in acquiring and using skills. The dialogue box asks the main character to open the stats window, announcing that there were 5 minutes left. Looking up, Su Hayek wondered if this was exactly the right thing to do. Pursing his lips and closing his eyes, he thinks about how he should do this, wondering if this could be some sort of slave contract. The dialog box announced that 1 minute and 13 seconds remained. The next dialog box announced that there were 49 seconds left. Sweating nervously, Su Hayek opened his eyes, thinking that he wouldn't say anything. The dialog box announced that there were 10 seconds left. The main character's face twisted in panic. He thought about whether he should say it or shout it out, and whether he could trust Ha Hee Young, and why she didn't do it herself if she was the regressor. He thought about how he wouldn't be able to use the skills properly and would die a useless death, and wondered about what he should do and what if Ha Hee Young made a mistake. Su Hayek thought about whether he should still shout. Su Hayek gritted his teeth, sweating nervously. He was thinking about what he should do. The dialog box announced that the time was up. The main character looked at the dialog box in fright. It said that he hadn't opened the stats window and would be moved to the first floor of the challenge tower. The dialog box congratulated him on his difficult choice. Su Hayek hesitantly noted that he seemed to be alive. He was surprised to see that he was starting to lift off the ground, surrounded by blue squares. A blue flash flashed. The dialog box says that user Su Hayek refused to open the characteristics window and received the status of a contender. Challenger Su Hayek will not be constrained by the ability and stat window enhancement system, and the difficulty is set to the challenger level. The dialog box asked the main character to be careful, because the gods know how to change their names, and the original names will be used starting from the sixth floor. Su Hayek appeared in the dark tunnel of the mine. The white dialog box says that he needs to destroy all enemies, and he has 18 hours left. Looking ahead, Su Hayek noticed that it was a little dark here. Stepping forward, he decided that he needed to calm down and everything would be fine, because this was just training. Startled, the protagonist screamed and swung his sword in front of him. Exhaling and chuckling nervously, he noticed that there was nothing in front of him, and he shouldn't have bothered. He looked ahead nervously. Suddenly, the main character started to fall. Trying to stay on his feet, he fell forward with a cry and fell to the ground. Lying on the ground, Su Hayek exhaled and said that he almost died. 
he started to climb up, leaning on his sword, and said that there were traps here and he needed to move more carefully. He pressed his sword down on the stone, and it made a sound. Something shot towards the main character, and then he tried to dodge in fright. A shell grazed him, and blood spurted from his wound. Su Hayek squeezed one eye shut and gritted his teeth, noting that he had fallen into a trap a second after he said caution. Small stones fell from the ceiling. Looking up, the main character found a green goblin with long pointed ears, armed with a dagger, which with an evil grin shouted that it would kill a person. The goblin jumped down with a dagger strike, but Su Hayek dodged it by jumping back. Turning around, the protagonist gritted his teeth, frowned, and asked what was it this time. The goblin straightened up and turned to the protagonist, saying that he was lucky to have survived the secret attack. The dialogue box contains a description of the goblin assassin. Goblin and assassin, attacks in the dark, there is a secret attack. Grinning evilly, the goblin opened its sharp-toothed mouth, sticking out its sharp tongue. Grabbing the sword with both hands, Su Hayek tensely thought about how he would first try to break the distance and analyze it. The goblin assassin took out a crossbow, calling the main character a stupid person. Turning his attention to the crossbow, Su Hayek gritted his teeth. As he gripped the hilt of his sword tighter, he realized that the arrow wasn't from a trap. With his sword outstretched, Su Hayek charged at the goblin assassin, deciding to deal with it before it fired. Aiming a crossbow at him, the goblin assassin said that it was too late. The goblin fired his crossbow. Su Hayek thought about how he wouldn't die so easily and dodged the shot while ducking. As he continued to approach the goblin assassin who was reloading his crossbow, he thought that he had a better chance because he was bigger. Grinning tensely, he decided to kill it before it could recharge. To the protagonist's surprise, the goblin struck him with a swing of his dagger as he approached. The goblin's kick cut the main character a little, and he was glad that he managed to pull his body back for a hit, and it was just a scratch. Su Hayek thought about how it was his turn now. He swung his sword at the goblin with a grim face. Hitting the goblin with his sword, Su Hayek ended up behind it with his hand on the ground. The goblin fell to the ground. Su Hayek was breathing heavily with a shocked face. Touching his mouth with his hand and sweating profusely, he thought that he had killed him. Standing in front of the goblin that was lying on the ground with its head chopped off, Su Hayek decided that he didn't have time to think about it. Glancing at the dagger in the goblin's hand, he decided to take his weapon just in case. Su Hayek crouched down, reaching for the dagger. Suddenly, he noticed that he was sick and fell to the ground next to the goblin. Lying on the ground, he thought about why he felt so bad. Su Hayek was looking at the goblin's dagger, which was glowing purple. The dialogue box described the goblin assassin's dagger, a crude blade that was carefully monitored. Good condition, covered in homemade goblin killer venom. Swearing, Su Hayek lowered his head to the ground. Red dialogue boxes indicate that the main character has avoided a new trap for the first time, and his dexterity has been increased by one. Four more dialogue boxes announce that he has avoided a new trap for the first time, and his dexterity has been increased by 0.3. The following dialogue box indicates that he has defeated the goblin first-time assassin, and his strength and agility have been increased by two. The next dialogue box says that he has withstood the goblin assassin's poison and gained the first-level poison resistance skill. Su Hayek is lying on the ground next to a decapitated goblin assassin. Trembling, he opened his eyes with difficulty. He coughed up blood. Sitting up, Su Hayek noticed that he had fainted. Glancing at the goblin, he noted that it was close. Frowning, he raised an eyebrow, wondering how much time he had left. The dialogue box said that he had 11 hours and 57 minutes left. Su Hayek noted that about 5 hours had passed. Putting on a belt with a crossbow and a goblin killer dagger and hanging a quiver of arrows on his shoulder, the main character decided that he would definitely survive. He looks ahead with a serious face, holding a rusty sword in front of him with both hands. Su Hayek carefully walks forward, holding the sword with both hands. The piece of ground under his foot glowed pink. With a tense twist of his face, he dodged an arrow that flew out and flew close to his face. Turning around, he noticed that dodging had become much easier. Pointing his sword at the floor, he decided to check it out. He pressed down on several pieces of earth in turn with his sword, and a pink light emerged from them. As he dodged the arrows flying at him, he noticed that the more often he dodged, the easier it became. He assumed that his physical abilities had improved after waking up. Su Hayek walked forward, dodging all the arrows, and noted that he had indeed become much faster. When he noticed the monsters, his brows tightened in surprise. Hiding behind the wall, he looked at the female goblin in a purple ragged dress and the male goblin who was sitting on the ground with his eyes closed. Su Hayek thought about how they didn't know he was around yet. As he drew his crossbow, he noted that he needed to kill at least one to make it easier. As he placed the arrow in the crossbow, he thought about how he needed to aim carefully and not tremble. As he took aim, he thought, now. Hearing a sound behind him, the main character turned around in surprise and shot there. He jumped back, dodging the arrow that was flying at him. Two goblins charged at the protagonist with a shout. 
Looking at their evil smiles, he knew it was a trap. Waving his sword, which glowed green, in front of the goblins, he decided that it was too dark here and he needed to move to a bright place. He jumped back. The goblins bared their teeth and growled. Holding the sword in front of him with both hands, Su Hayek ordered himself to calm down. When he saw the purple flash, he thought, I see it. He parried the arrow with his sword, breaking it in half. As he stared down at his sword, he thought that he had been watching and waiting for their next attack. The goblins swung their weapons at the main character. The dialogue box described a couple of goblins, even though they were goblins, they were still a couple. They're always together. The main character was surprised to notice that they were a couple. As he dodged the attacks, he thought about how he also had a girlfriend until yesterday. Looking at the goblin, who was pointing his dagger at him with a malicious smile, he shouted that if he hadn't come here, he might have returned to her. With a slash of his sword, he sliced the goblin in half. Before dying, the goblin growled in disbelief. Su Hayek looked at the female goblin seriously. She exclaimed with tears in her eyes as she looked at her dead partner. Su Hayek gave her a dead look, cursing the couples. He glared irritably at the female goblin who leapt at him, swinging her axe. Gritting his teeth in frustration, he said that being a loner was much better. With a swing of his sword, he chopped off the goblin's head. Before she died, the goblin woman with tears in her eyes growled that she couldn't get revenge and asked for forgiveness. The axe flew out of her hands and spun through the air, stabbing into the ground behind the protagonist. Shaking with anger, Su Hayek spoke to the gunslinger from the darkness. Eyes wide with rage, he asked if he was in a relationship, too. A goblin in the darkness shouted that he was alone. Su Hayek asked with a calm face, how can he believe him? The vein in his face was swollen. The goblin shouted for me to believe him. Smiling good-naturedly, the main character asked the goblin to come out as soon as possible so that he could quickly kill him. Out of the darkness came a very small goblin who was begging for mercy with tears in his eyes. Shivering, he said it was dark and he couldn't see anything. The dialogue box described the younger goblin, a small and weak goblin, too young to fight. He hides in the dark when he's scared. Shaking with tears in his eyes and clutching the crossbow, he asked Su Hayek not to kill him. The main character asked what it was doing here. The younger goblin frowned, telling the protagonist that he was stupid and remarked that he was doing his duty. Frowning in annoyance, the protagonist said that he wanted to let him go, but he decided to call him names. Closing its eyes in fear, the goblin screamed and started to run away. Shaking, he crouched in a corner, begging for forgiveness, begging for mercy. Looking at it, Su Hayek wondered what kind of goblin it was. He calmly said that if he answered one question, he would let him go. Turning around with pitiful eyes, the goblin agreed. With the tip of the sword buried in the ground, Su Hayek asked what the monster's intentions were. The goblin was lying on the ground, clutching its head. Raising his face, he replied that he had to stop the people and was doing his duty. With an evil grin, the protagonist said that he didn't want to kill the child, but he had no choice. The goblin screamed, tears streaming from its eyes. Walking up to the goblin, Su Hayek said with a smirk that they were both just doing their job. Closing his eyes, the goblin shouted that the goblin didn't have to do his duty. With a frown, the protagonist said that he himself said that they should do this. The goblin protested that the goblin didn't have to. Su Hayek replied that he already felt like hitting him. Opening his eyes in surprise, he noticed that when this goblin was talking about a goblin, he was talking about himself. He thought that he couldn't be trusted and suggested that he might not be part of the assassination mission. Waving his arms in the air, the goblin shouted that the goblins weren't lying and asked them to believe him. Stepping forward, Su Hayek thought about how he could just kill him in the dark and how it was a tough choice. The dialogue box says that he has 10 hours and 10 minutes left. The goblin shouted that goblins don't lie. After looking at the main character, he said that they didn't need to fight and asked him to believe him. Lowering his sword, Su Hayek glanced at the little goblin and decided that he could wait and that he could kill it at any moment. The dialogue box says that he has 10 hours and 9 minutes left. Smiling, Su Hayek said that he wouldn't kill him. The goblin looked at him happily. The dialogue box says, saving the younger goblin. Secret mission of the first floor, challenger mode. The goblin's secret sorrow quest begins. At the same time, training Ha Hee Young. Ha Hee Young is hiding behind a rock, holding a wooden staff. She frowned. The goblins grinned maliciously as they looked around. Ha Hee Young thought about how she didn't expect things to change so much if she didn't open the stats window. Gritting her teeth, she thought of Su Hayek taking care of himself. She closed her eyes and told herself to concentrate. A fireball appeared in her hand. Ha Hee Young thought about how she didn't try so hard to give up right now. Peeking out from her hiding place, she extended her hand forward and shot fireballs at the goblins. Su Hayek tells the younger goblin that there is a condition under which he will spare his life, and the latter asks what it is. Holding up his hand, he said that he would tie his hands, and objections are not accepted. The goblin smiled, clenching his fists in front of him, agreed and told the protagonist that he was stupid, but kind. 
Su Hayek gripped the hilt of his sword with both hands in exasperation and said that he had changed his mind and would kill him. The goblin started running away, closing his eyes and saying that he was sorry and that he wasn't stupid. Su Hayek lightly hit the goblin's head, telling it to be quiet. Holding the sword with both hands in front of him, the protagonist began to look around, wondering if there was a rope here. When he found the rope, he was overjoyed and said this one would do. After tying the goblin's hands, he smiled with satisfaction and said that everything was ready. He asked if he liked it, and the goblin irritably asked if he would like it. Noticing something, Su Hayek asked what it was. Goblin asked irritably what he was talking about. He said he was talking about the glittering thing on the goblin's neck. Something glinted on the goblin's neck. The goblin covered his face with his hands and replied irritably that it was nothing. Su Hayek grabbed the goblin by the neck and lifted it off the ground, asking what he meant by nothing. The goblin tried unsuccessfully to break free of his grip. Su Hayek picked up the necklace around the goblin's neck. The dialogue box described Junior Goblin's ruby necklace, a necklace carefully kept by a young goblin. There may be a secret hidden in this shining gem. In the protagonist's hand, there was a square purple gemstone tied to a white thread. With drool coming out of his mouth, he asked what it was, noting that this necklace looked expensive. The goblin was shaking in fright with tears in its eyes, telling it that it couldn't. Su Hayek said with a crazy smile that the goblin would pay them for his life. The goblin gave him a startled look. He squeezed his eyes shut and shouted that he couldn't take it off. After glaring furiously at the goblin, Su Hayek asked if it wanted to die. He said that he would cut off his hands if he interfered, adding that he needed a reward for sparing him. The goblin shouted that he was telling the truth. The main character pulled the necklace, demanding to give it back. He noticed that it really wouldn't come off. The goblin is hanging from a necklace that the main character is holding in his hands. Su Hayek released him, and the goblin turned away and said irritably what he had told him. Scratching his head, the protagonist apologized. Su Hayek said that the item might fall out if he killed it, and started looking for his sword. The goblin shouted that he wouldn't take the necklace after he died. Su Hayek laughed and said it was a joke. Crossing his arms in displeasure, the goblin said that he was a barbarian, not a human. Picking up the sword from the ground, the main character repeated that he was joking and urged to go further. The main character and the goblin go through the mine. Su Hayek asked his name. The goblin replied that his name was Goblin. Turning around in exasperation, the protagonist told him to say his real name. The goblin looked at him with innocent eyes, then looked down at the floor in frustration. Su Hayek assumed that he really didn't have a name and thought about how he looked like a character from a movie. He remembered the goblin in white rags saying, Dobby is free. With a wave of his index finger, Su Hayek said that he would call him Dobby. The goblin got angry and told him to call him Goblin instead of Dobby. The main character said that he thought so. They walked on, and Su Hayek said with a frown that this was to be expected of a child. The goblin shouted that there was a trap. The protagonist's foot froze in midair. Turning to him, Su Hayek asked in surprise how he knew there was a trap. The goblin said with a smile that it was simple. He grinned, explaining that he could see in the dark. The protagonist thought irritably that he was pretending to be afraid of the dark. Glancing at the goblin, who was looking at him with bright, expectant eyes, he noticed that the goblin was waiting for praise. Closing his eyes and pursing his lips, he thought it best to calm down and the goblin might still be useful. Smiling nervously, Su Hayek patted Dobby's head and praised him. He told him to speak immediately when he saw traps or enemies. With a satisfied grin, Dobby said that he would definitely warn you. The goblin said to the main character, two steps to the left on the floor. Tension trap, three steps to the floor. Trap, five steps left and right. Smiling, Su Hayek noted that it was useful. He told Dobby to step back a little. The man looked at him in surprise. The main character with a serious face frowned and thought that this is convenient, but you need to give it your all. After activating the trap, Su Hayek deflected the arrow with his sword. He noted that the more he dodged, the faster his reaction time became. Noticing an arrow flying near his face, he swung his sword a few times as he leaped forward. Dobby applauded and said he was incredible. Su Hayek chuckled smugly as he put his hand to his chin and said that he would be the hope of humanity. The goblin warned of the approach of two goblin assassins and goblin warriors. The main character's face was trembling and his cheeks were sunken. He grumbled and asked why it took so long, adding that they had been walking for two hours. Panting, his mouth wide open, he asked Dobby if there were any enemies nearby. Dobby exclaimed with a smile that they had come. Brightening up, Su Hayek raised his head and looked around. In front of them was a stone bridge with torches and a large locked door. They tensed, and the protagonist gripped his sword tightly. The dialogue box above the door asked if the main character wanted to enter the boss room. Gritting his teeth, Su Hayek noted that it had been 11 hours since he got here, and he finally made it to the boss room. Frowning, he grinned. The dialogue box says that there are seven hours left. Su Hayek and Dobby are standing in front of the door to the boss room. The main character asked Dobby if he knew what would be inside. 
Frowning, he said he didn't know. Leaning both hands on the sword, he looked at it seriously and said that it was suspicious. Dobby shouted that he never believed him. Su Hayek smiled and touched the door with his hand, saying that he believed. Glancing at the door seriously, he thought about the fact that he would have to go in anyway. He thought about how he needed to stop being afraid, since he had already cleared an entire floor. The dialog box asks if he wants to enter the boss room. Su Hayek responded positively. Blue light with squares surrounded them. They disappeared in front of the door. Lava gurgles. The dialog box says that there are seven hours left. Purple hooded goblins go about their business among the rocks and lava. The dialog box says that there are ten seconds left before the battle starts. Su Hayek was standing in a fighting stance with a sword. In front of him was a row of seven goblins with swords, and behind them were two more purple hooded goblins. A man in steel armor was sitting on the throne. Frowning nervously, Su Hayek counted the opponents, one goblin in steel armor, seven goblin warriors with swords, and two goblin assassins with crossbows. Gritting his teeth, he noted that there were ten of them, and he had only fought four at a time and had never encountered such monsters. The goblin paladin sat on the throne with his legs spread wide. The dialog box described him as a goblin, but a paladin. A real paladin who has access to sacred magic. Su Hayek thought furiously that the goblin paladin was nonsense. The dialogue box announced that the battle was still five seconds away. Frowning, the protagonist urged himself to calm down and thought that he could handle it. Dobby complained that he was hot. The dialogue box announced that the battle was three seconds away. Dobby continues to call out to the main character, complaining that he is hot. Su Hayek irritably shouted at him to be quiet. The dialogue box announced that the battle was one second away from starting. As he picked up the crossbow, he thought that Dobby might not be harmed by the goblins. The dialogue box announced that the battle was zero seconds away from starting. Rushing into the front with a sword in one hand and a crossbow in the other, the protagonist thought that he would definitely be killed if he didn't kill them himself. Dobby smiled and told him to be careful. Two goblin warriors swung their swords at the protagonist, shouting at Tom to die. Su Hayek aimed his crossbow. Frowning deeply, he thought that he knew he had to be careful. He dodged the rolling swords, shot one of the goblins in the back, and got to his feet. Gritting his teeth, he found himself facing three goblins with swords in their hands. He realized that they were too close to fire the crossbow and decided to just drop it. Su Hayek ran forward and threw the crossbow at the goblin's chest, causing it to be thrown backwards. He thought that if he lost his pace, he would die. With quick swipes of his sword, he struck two goblins in the torso. With a start, he noticed five goblin warriors. He noted that he was lucky that the paladin didn't interfere. Su Hayek stands among the dead bodies of goblin warriors. Gritting his teeth, he whirled around and leaped towards the goblin assassin. The goblin assassin aimed a crossbow at him. Stopping behind him, Su Hayek kicked the goblin in the back of the head. With a ridiculous smile, he said, Hi. The goblin opened its mouth in surprise, visibly nervous. The main character kicked the goblin into the lava. Standing with his back to the goblin that had drowned in the lava, Su Hayek frowned and gritted his teeth. The goblin warriors charged at him, swinging their swords and shouting for revenge. Su Hayek blocked the blow with his sword and pierced through the goblin's torso. The main character screamed furiously as he pierced through the second goblin. Watching this, Dobby was shaking, saying that humans are monsters. Su Hayek stood over the goblin's bodies, his sword glowing yellow. Dobby said he was a real monster. Tired, the protagonist breathed heavily and thought that he had put his life on the line to kill them, and the paladin sat and looked like a king on a throne. Gritting his teeth, he looked in his direction. The goblin paladin sits motionless on the throne, surrounded by blue energy. One goblin warrior charged at the main character from behind. Su Hayek wondered if he was amused by the danger he was putting himself in. Turning around furiously, the protagonist cut the goblin in half with a sword strike. Two goblin warriors threw themselves at the main character, swinging their swords. Leaning on one knee, the main character thought that he was tired of everything. He gripped the hilt of his sword in exasperation. As he swung his sword at the goblins, he thought that they were the lowest monsters in the fantasy world and should know their place. He lowered his sword to the ground and breathed heavily. Leaning on the sword with both hands, he thought that he was tired to death. He glanced at the paladin. The dialog box indicated that there were 6 hours and 53 minutes left. The goblin paladin still sat motionless on the throne. Then he picked up his sword and shield. He was breathing heavily, and a bright blue light could be seen through the slits of his helmet. Raising the sword in his hands, the protagonist asked if it was too cruel. Smiling, he said that he had killed a dozen goblins with this sword and that one came with full health and cool armor. The paladin replied that he had fought well for humans, but that he would only die with him. A bright blue light flashed through the crack in his helmet. Su Hayek asked irritably what kind of nonsense he was talking about. The paladin rushed towards the main character, swinging his sword, and told him to prepare to die. Su Hayek jumped back from the paladin's punch that left a blue trail. 
Gritting his teeth, he thought that such attacks would only benefit him. Su Hayek leapt at the paladin from behind, swinging his sword. He shouted for it to die, and the goblin turned around. The paladin covered himself with a shield, and the protagonist was surprised to notice that his sword had broken. Dobby let out a surprised cry as Su Hayek's sword broke. Two blue lights could be seen in the paladin's helmet. The protagonist opened his mouth in surprise, looking at the broken sword in his hands, and wondered if he was finished. The goblin paladin swung his sword in front of him with a shout. Su Hayek dodged by doing a backward somersault. Lying on the ground, he gritted his teeth, wondering what he should do. He thought of the goblin dagger he had picked up. The main character rose to his feet and took a fighting stance with a dagger in his hand. He thought that the goblin was smaller than he thought, and he could handle it. Su Hayek raised the dagger at the level of his face and announced the second round. The paladin charged at the protagonist, swinging his sword. He dodged the blow and jumped out of the way. Su Hayek glanced at the goblin paladin's neck and noticed that it was open, deciding to hit him now. He leapt at the paladin, swinging his dagger over the paladin's neck, but the paladin whirled around, thrusting his shield forward. The paladin slammed his shield down and knocked the main character aside. Su Hayek fell to the ground. Standing in front of him, the paladin raised his sword over him. He told him to die and go to Colin. Blue light could be seen through the slits in his helmet. Su Hayek dodged the blow by jumping back, and the paladin slammed his sword into the ground, causing cracks to appear that glowed with blue light. The goblin paladin growled for Su Hayek to surrender. The main character was breathing heavily with a surprised face. He quickly charged forward, surrounded by yellow energy. The paladin pointed his sword in front of him and said that it was useless. Su Hayek slammed his shoulder into the goblin paladin's helmet. He was thrown backward and rolled on the ground in a somersault. Shouting, Su Hayek grabbed the paladin's head and swung his dagger. A crack appeared on the goblin paladin's helmet from the dagger's strike. He was shaking and cursing. Su Hayek shouted that he was finished and continued to stab with his dagger, splashing the goblin's blood. Stopping, he tries to catch his breath. Su Hayek fell to the ground next to the dead goblin paladin and said that he made it. Rolling his eyes wearily, he said that he almost died. The goblin paladin growled, healing. The main character looked at him in surprise. The wounds on the goblin's neck began to glow blue. Frowning, Su Hayek remembered that he was a paladin. The goblin started to rise from the ground. Shaking with fatigue, they both got to their feet. Dobby was surprised that Su Hayek could still stand. Taking a fighting stance, the goblin paladin said that the main character was strong, otherwise he would even be able to get here. Panting heavily, Su Hayek grinned and irritably told him to shut up. Clutching the bloody dagger with a trembling hand, he thought that he should kill it. A goblin paladin stood in front of the main character, surrounded by a blue aura. Su Hayek noticed that his body wasn't working properly. Suddenly, to the main character's surprise, the goblin paladin staggered and fell to the ground. Su Hayek asked in surprise why he had fainted. The dialogue box described the goblin assassin's dagger, a crude blade that was carefully monitored, covered in homemade goblin killer venom. Su Hayek thought that he understood. Waving his dagger mockingly in front of the trembling goblin paladin on the ground, Su Hayek teases him for not guessing. The goblin paladin snarled, poison extraction. The main character was amazed that he had a spell for this as well. He ran towards the goblin paladin, furiously asking how many trump cards he still had up his sleeve. He kicked the goblin paladin's helmet with his foot, leaving a crack on it. Su Hayek noted that it was too hard. A crack can be seen on the leg bone of the main character. Trembling, the goblin paladin called the protagonist a fool. Su Hayek angrily shouted at him to shut up and that he was finished. The goblin paladin's arm shook and he coughed and died. The main character was breathing heavily as he stood over the goblin paladin's body, which had a dagger sticking out of it. Falling to his knees and raising his hands in the air in a solemn manner, Su Hayek smiled and happily shouted that he had made it. The dialogue box announced that there were 6 hours and 31 minutes left. Noticing that the dialogue box still does not consider the task of destroying all enemies completed, the main character was surprised to ask that there was more to come. Dobby stepped forward, saying, healing. A surprise Su Hayek was enveloped in a green light with pluses. The wounds on his body were gone. Pleased with himself, Dobby smiled and said that he had healed Su Hayek. Frowning, he asked why he hadn't done it before, if he knew how. Dobby protested that he hadn't asked. Su Hayek smiled irritably as he thought about how he needed to calm down. Smiling nervously, the protagonist approached Dobby and said that it was his own fault and added that they still had a problem. Dobby asked what the problem was. Pointing his index fingers up with a smile, Su Hayek said that he had killed everyone, but the dialogue box didn't disappear. He hinted that the last enemy was Dobby. He protested that he was not the enemy, asking them to believe him. The main character replied that he knew and was just joking. Su Hayek wondered if he had missed anyone and that there were no other roads. He wondered what was wrong and if he really needed to kill Dobby. 
he noted a strange necklace that he can't take off and a younger goblin that doesn't fit the place at all. He assumed that there was something hidden in it. Dobby looked at him questioningly. Sue Hayek reached out to him and asked for a necklace. Dobby replied angrily that the necklace wouldn't come off. He called the main character a barbarian and asked him not to kill. Sue Hayek furiously clenched his fist and shouted for him to hand over the necklace, threatening to kill him. Dobby looked startled. Pouting in displeasure, he lay down on the ground, placing the necklace stone in front of him. Approaching him, the main character said that he is much nicer when he listens. Picking up the sword from the ground, he told it to lie there. He said his head might get hurt if he moved. Dobby shivered in fear as he looked at Sue Hayek, who raised his sword ominously. He slammed his sword into the stone of the necklace, shattering it into fragments. Dobby glowed red and let out a loud cry. Covering himself with his hands against the strong wind, the main character asked Dobby if he was all right. He opened one eye. Dobby stood before him in a table of light, his face expressionless. Dobby was surrounded by yellow energy, and Sue Hayek asked if he was still Dobby. Dobby, glowing yellow, bowed and said that Goblin Penrick expressed his deepest gratitude. Sue Hayek opened his mouth in surprise when he noticed that he called himself Penrick. Penrick began to say something in a language the protagonist didn't understand. Sue Hayek wondered why he didn't understand anything. A white dialogue box congratulated the main character on passing the first floor of training. It said that after summing up the results of the passage, he will be moved to the waiting room. Sue Hayek smiled happily, saying that he knew it was the necklace. Then the smile faded from his face as he realized that he was being moved to the waiting room. He shouted that he hadn't picked up the shield yet and rushed towards the goblin paladin's body. In the white dialogue box, the task to destroy all goblins was highlighted in red. The next dialogue box reported that the secret quest for the goblin race mountain was completed. The following dialogue box announced the total passing score. While busily searching the goblin paladin's corpse, Sue Hayek asks about whether they understand how much effort it took to defeat him and whether they want to leave him with no items and go to the second floor empty-handed. The dialogue box described the goblin paladin shield, a good strong shield that contains holy power, opens access to the second level healing skill, which has a 24-hour cooldown. Sue Hayek happily noted that this shield even gives healing, and that goblin was playing dirty. The dialogue box says, as a reward for completing a secret quest against the goblin race, Dobby the goblin will join user Sue Hayek in clearing the tower. Sue Hayek lovingly hugged the shield he picked up from the goblin's corpse. Dobby wondered what he was doing to the corpse. When he came to his senses, the main character said that Dobby as a reward for completing a secret task is not a very fair exchange. Waving his hands furiously, Sue Hayek demanded that the system answer his question about how the threat to his life was worth one goblin. The dialogue box announced a move to the waiting room. Shrouded in blue light, Sue Hayek shouted angrily, asking if the system knew what he had been through. The dialogue boxes say that Sue Hayek has defeated a goblin paladin, and his agility and stamina have been increased by three. Sue Hayek has passed the boss room, and all his stats have been increased by two. The pain threshold and regeneration have reached level two. Perseverance and combat concentration have reached the second level. Due to the contract of the first rank constellation, the nine celestial bodies of the Colin, the shackles binding the fifth rank constellation of the Golden Light of Penric, have been destroyed. The dialogue box announced that the first floor of the test tower had been completed and moved to the waiting room. Sue Hayek is moved to a waiting room where he can satisfy his hunger and rest. The main character and Dobby, surrounded by blue light, appeared in a white room with a bed, table and chair. Frowning and clenching his fist in front of him, the protagonist said that the reward was bad, but at least he was alive. Holding a shield in his hand, Sue Hayek moved his hand and asked if they heal after appearing in the waiting room. He noted that he feels great. The dialogue box announced that he could now enter into contracts with first-class constellations. Users can receive support in the form of achievement points or abilities by signing contracts with constellations, which will be very useful in conquering the tower. Sitting down at the table, Sue Hayek asked what it was this time. Several dialogue boxes appeared in front of him. The first one said, a first-class constellation. The Sky Demon of Space offers you a contract. The second one said, a first-class constellation. The Sword God who divided the galaxy offers you a contract. Next up, a first-class constellation. Ari, a lover of steel lava, offers you a contract. On the last one, a first-class constellation. Echo of the Furious Heavens offers you a contract. Sue Hayek thought with a serious face that the fifth-grade constellations would appear on the fifth floor. He decided that there were only scammers here, and it would be better to wait for the fifth floor. The dialogue box announced that the second floor of the test tower was 11 hours and 57 minutes away. It asked Sue Hayek to rest. There was a glass of water and a plate of bread on the table. Looking at the table, the main character noticed that a long time had passed since he was in the tower. Just as he was about to take a bite of the bread, Dobby shouted for water. 
When he noticed him, he was surprised that he was in the waiting room with him. Dobby said to give him bread. Smiling, Sue Hayek said that he did a good job and suggested that they eat together. He handed him a loaf of bread, and he grabbed it in his mouth along with the main character's hand. Sue Hayek looked at his drool-covered hand in disgust. Looking at Dobby happily eating his bread, Sue Hayek wondered if it was definitely a goblin and not a pig. In his mind's eye, he was glad that he could get as much bread and water as he liked. As he chewed on his bread, he asked Dobby what he had been talking about in the boss room, trying to remember the word Penrick. Dobby turned and said something unintelligible through a mouthful of bread. Sue Hayek tell him to swallow the food first. He asked him that there was a god there. Dobby replied that Penrick was sealed. While chewing on the bread, Sue Hayek asked about the fact that there was a god in the necklace. The goblin replied that he didn't know. Looking up thoughtfully, the protagonist asked where Dobby got the jewelry with the sealed god. Dobby replied that he was a constellation, a sacred artifact of Penrick. Sue Hayek asked in surprise about Dobby being a constellation and him saving the goblin god. Dobby smiled and said it was true. He thanked him and said that he would follow him. While taking a bite of the bread, Sue Hayek looked up thoughtfully, thinking that he couldn't believe that the only person who got to save God was Dobby. Falling back on the bed, he exhaled heavily and thought that the difficulty was too high and if he was a mage, he wouldn't have passed the first level. As he chewed on the bread, he guessed that the difficulty level changed depending on the class. He noted that it is still very difficult. Closing his eyes, he asked how Ha Hee Young was doing. He thought that she was a regressor, so she would probably do a better job than him. The dialogue box says, a constellation of the first rank. The owner of five wheels offers to sign a contract. Ha Hee Young is sitting on the bed in the waiting room. She thinks about how they made a contract on the fifth floor before time travel, but now he's on the first floor and his rank has dropped. She assumed that moving in time had weakened him. She said he was getting weaker because of them. Ha Hee Young apologized and thanked him. She said with a serious face that they would prove that he had not believed in them for nothing. Blue light with squares shrouded her. A white dialogue box greeted the second floor of the challenge tower, the second stage of training. The next dialogue box says the task is to destroy all enemies. The time counter shows that there are 10 hours left. Sue Hayek and Dobby, surrounded by blue light, appeared in the cave. Looking around, the main character asked how this place differs from the first floor. He noted that it is a little brighter here and there are two paths ahead of him. He thought about the fact that the timer had been shortened by 8 hours, so the choice was important. Sue Hayek asked Dobby where they should go. Dobby's eyes widened in surprise. The main character asked him to ask his god which path to choose. Frowning, Dobby said Penrick wouldn't say anything about it. Sue Hayek asked where Dobby would go. He said he would go to the left. Following Dobby, the main character decided to go to the left, noting that he clearly needs to navigate better than him. Sue Hayek paused for a moment. He thought about how he felt sorry for him, because Dobby was a priest class, so he would have to be protected all the time. He thought about taking the paladin's armor, but now he only regretted it. Sue Hayek told Dobby not to run ahead of him because there might be traps here. He agreed. After a while, they walk up the cave. Sue Hayek asks if they're exactly going the right way. Dobby confidently told me to trust him. The main character, frowning, replied that he wanted to trust him, but in 20 minutes they found nothing. Dobby shouted about being too distrustful. Turning around, he apologized and said that it was hard to believe in him. The goblin replied irritably that he was being rude. Looking ahead, Sue Hayek noticed that the tunnel was getting steeper and harder to walk. He said it was definitely the wrong road and they should go back. A small piece of earth fell under the main character's foot with a click. He shouted that it was a trap and that Dobby should be careful. Crouching low, he noticed that the arrows weren't flying. He assumed the trap was broken. Dobby gave a startled squeal. With a nervous grin, Sue Hayek asked if he was wrong and if that was what he thought. A huge round stone rolled down the tunnel from above. They opened their mouths in surprise and ran with all their might. Second floor walk through Ha Hee Young. She goes through the cave with a staff in her hands and says that there are two paths on the second floor, and it is usually better to go to the right. She put her hand to her chin thoughtfully. He Ha Young goes further into the cave and says that because she just didn't open the stats window, training has become much more difficult. Her eyes twinkled and she looked down. In her mind, she wondered if Sue Hayek was okay. She thought that if he chose a melee weapon, it would be harder to defeat the boss. She checked herself, wondering why she was even worrying about him. She remembers drinking beer with the main character. He Ha Young congratulated Hu Siak on finally breaking up with his girlfriend. She said that even though she was the one who left him, it was good that it ended well. She added that she had heard that she cheated on him. Sue Hayek, looking down with a bitter grin, said that he knew it was stupid, but he still liked her. He added that he must have really loved her and now he misses her. He said it was funny. Ha Hee Young pours beer into a glass. Hearing his words, she gritted her teeth and abruptly started drinking. Sue Hayek asked in surprise what was wrong with her and told her to stop drinking in one gulp. She said irritably that he was a fool and that it made her want to get drunk. 
She asked the waiter for three beers. Su Hayek called out to her worriedly. Ha Hee Young walks along the cave and says that he doesn't even understand how worried she is about him. In her mind, she asked him not to die. Ha Hee Young found herself facing an orc with an axe that was snarling angrily at her. Gritting her teeth, she noticed that he had appeared very quickly. Wrapped in orange energy, she closed her eyes and said, Concentration. Her eyes snapped open and she shouted, Fireball. A fireball shot out from her hand towards the orc. A loud shout rang out. The orc painfully holds his hands to his burned face and screams that he will kill her. The veins on his head swelled up, and he shouted angrily that he would show her the strength of the orcs. Ha Hee Young interrupted him with a punch to the face. With a wicked grin, she roughly told him to shut up. She thought about having something to say to Su Hayek. Ha Hee Young ran past the fallen orc and said that they would see each other on the sixth floor. Running away with all his might, Su Hayek shouts at Dobby that he said this wasn't the right way. Dobby helplessly runs away from the approaching rock and screams. The main character noticed that his legs were too short. Folding his hands behind his back, he shouted for him to jump on his back. Dobby's eyes widened in question. He agreed and jumped on his back. Sitting on Sue Hayek's back, Dobby pulls at his face and hair and yells about being scared and uncomfortable. The main character shouts irritably at him to stop grabbing like that. Dobby pulled his face even harder, and Sue Hayek said he would kill him when they got out of here. Looking back, he said that the stone was already close. He thought he should run faster, and told himself to concentrate. Dobby was shouting with bulging eyes that they were going to die soon because of Sue Hayek. Looking back at the stone, he shouted that he would curse it. The main character irritably shouted back that it was his own fault. He frowned hard, the veins in his face swollen, and he thought about holding on tight to Dobby. Sue Hayek pursed his lips and pushed off from the ground. He leaped forward, his eyes bulging. Dobby yelled that he was going to throw up, and Sue Hayek yelled for him to be patient a little longer. They jumped out of the way at the fork, and the rock rolled past them. Dobby happily asked the main character if he was alive. Sue Hayek's face was pale with fatigue, and drool was coming out of his mouth. He waved his hand and told him not to talk to him because he was tired. Dobby held out his hands, glowing green, and said, Regenerate. The main character was enveloped in green light, and he raised his eyebrows in surprise. Looking down at his hands in surprise, he said that although Dobby was being silly, his abilities were excellent. Dobby danced happily, singing about how they had survived because of him. Sue Hayek praised him, and Dobby looked at his hand above his head in surprise. The main character patted Dobby on the head, and Dobby, smiling contentedly, said that he was also grateful to him. Sue Hayek thought about how he found him cute now. He smiled and suggested that he go on the right side this time. Dobby said go left and went left. The protagonist asked in surprise if he had forgotten that they had just run away from the stone from that path. Dobby walked along happily and talked about how they were going to the left. Raising an eyebrow, Sue Hayek asked what was wrong with him. He added that it is dangerous there. In his mind's eye, he guessed that there might be another secret mission there, and he might get something more useful than Dobby. Dobby repeated that they would go to the left. Sue Hayek agreed. Smiling, he thought that he would trust him one last time. The dialog box says there are 9 hours and 21 minutes left. Sue Hayek looks in front of him in surprise, breathing heavily. In the cave in front of them is a huge round stone. The main character offers to go back and tells Dobby that he won't be mad at him. He said it was all right and called him down. He noticed that Dobby's hands were outstretched toward the floor. He pressed the pressure plate in the floor. A passage opened up in front of them. Sue Hayek shivered and hugged Dobby, smiling happily and saying that he did a great job. Dobby tried to push him away because his breath stank. Sue Hayek's eyes glittered with delight as he looked in front of him. In front of him was a stone orc with a mace wrapped in lightning in front of it. The main character said that she looks cool. The dialogue box described the mighty orc warrior Karakshi's lightning mace, old but luxurious. The mace is covered by the power of lightning. The owner is not affected by lightning damage. Sue Hayek ran up to her, talking about how good her bonus was. The stone orc was covered in red cracks. Its stone shell shattered, and it roared loudly, clenching its fists in front of it. Looking at him, Sue Hayek smiled nervously and thought that he was finished. A red dialogue box announced that he had discovered a secret quest on the second floor of the Tower of Trials, the forgotten tomb of the mighty orc warrior Karaksh. This will be taken into account in the final calculation. The great orc warrior Karaksh stood in front of the main character, shrouded in a red aura. His eye flashed red. With a loud growl, he slapped his hand in front of him. With a startled cry, Su Hayek jumped to the side. He told himself to compose himself, and his face became serious. He thought about the fact that the mace is closer to Karaksh. The orc reached for the mace, and the protagonist thought that he would take it. Karaksh took the mace in his hands and charged with a loud roar. He leapt at Su Hayek, brandishing his mace and roaring loudly. Raising an eyebrow in surprise and opening his mouth with a shield, the protagonist thought about how this brainless giant could use a weapon. Karaksh swung his mace from above, 
and Su Hayek decided not to dodge but to fight back. Karak struck the shield with his mace, and lightning bolts flew around them. Su Hayek jumped back and thought that the advantage was clearly not on his side. The hand that held the shield was shaking, and he thought that Karak's was stronger and faster, and his hand was still shaking from the electricity that had passed through it. He decided that he would not be able to delay the fight, and he would have to attack first. Su Hayek gripped his sword tighter. He and Karak's charged at each other, shouting. The mace in the orc's hand sparkled with lightning. Su Hayek thought that he would miss this strike and then be able to attack. His face was serious, and he gritted his teeth. The mace glowed with a bright blue light as it struck the shield. The protagonist's eyes widened as he felt the electric shock. Karak swung once more and hit the shield of Su Hayek, who squeezed his eyes shut, gritting his teeth hard. With a swing of his mace, he threw the main character back. Lying on the ground, Su Hayek noted that he was in a lot of pain and would have to use healing. His shield glowed green. The dialogue box described the goblin paladin shield, a good strong shield. Keeps the holy power in itself. Opens access to the second level healing skill, which has a 24-hour cooldown. Standing in the aisle, Dobby shouted that his healing magic wouldn't work. He squeezed his eyes shut and loudly wished him luck. Stamping his foot on the ground angrily, Su Hayek started cursing and demanded that he come closer and treat him. Dobby ran away in fright, shouting about how scary he was. Karex waved his mace again, and the protagonist jumped back. Frowning and gritting his teeth, he decided that he would have to figure it out for himself. Looking at the approaching orc, Su Hayek thought about how he could defeat such a monster. He noted that he loses to him in strength, speed and equipment. Letting out an enraged roar, Karak swung his mace. He hit the main character three times with the mace, and the latter dodged three times, jumping back. The main character noted that his attacks are predictable. He decided that he had no choice but to take the risk. He jumped back. Brandishing his sword, he called out to Karak. While calling him names, he told him to approach him with a furious face. He continued to call him names and provoke him. Karak stared at him with clenched fists. With a loud roar, he charged at Su Hayek while swinging his mace. With a confident frown, the protagonist noted that the provocation had worked. He decided to dodge the first attack. Karak swung, snarling angrily. He hit the ground with his mace, and Su Hayek dodged by jumping to the side. As he landed, he thought that wasn't enough. He thought about the fact that when the opponent made wide moves, they would have a chance to counterattack. Su Hayek ran past Karak, stabbing him in the torso with his sword. He found that he had only left him a scratch. Karex ran towards Su Hayek again and swung his mace with a loud roar. Startled, the main character screamed and started running away. He shouted at Dobby to distract him. The man looked at him questioningly with innocent eyes. Opening his mouth in shock and annoyance, he noted that it was useless. Karex continued to chase after the main character, swinging his mace furiously and growling loudly. Shedding tears, Su Hayek squeezed his eyes shut and thought about how he didn't have time to be upset, and Dobby wouldn't even be noticed anyway. Karex swung the lightning-shrouded mace. Frowning, Su Hayek noticed that this was exactly the distance he would use such an attack. Karex was approaching him, swinging his mace. Grinning, the protagonist decided to block it, but not completely. He held up his shield in front of him. He decided that the moment the shield and mace made contact, he would push the shield forward and deflect the mace. The orc's mace glowed brightly. Karex hit her on the main character's shield. Su Hayek thought about the fact that Karex would have to raise his hand, and he would take advantage of this moment. Karex raised his hand up, swinging the mace. The main character thought that the next move should be a downward kick. The orc slammed his mace to the ground. As he jumped away from the blow, he thought that it would try to execute the next move, and at that moment it would be over. The mace in Karex's hand sparkled with lightning, embedded in the ground. Pushing off with his foot, Su Hayek leaped up, swinging his sword to attack the orc. Karex looked up. The main character with a bright flash hit Karex with a sword. The orc screamed and blood spurted out of its mouth. He fell to the ground, the main character's sword protruding from his chest. Smiling happily, Dobby ran up to the protagonist, asking if he was okay. Su Hayek takes out his sword from the orc's body and turns around, frowning as he notices that the orc has just decided to come out. Dobby smiled broadly and gave the main character a thumbs up. Su Hayek said in frustration that it was his own fault and what else could you expect from Dobby. Dobby asked him why he said that. Su Hayek dejectedly replied that it was because he had encountered reality. A white dialogue box announced that he had defeated the mighty orc warrior Karak, who was possessed by a demon. This will be reflected in the final score of the main character. The dialogue box describes the lightning mace of the mighty orc warrior Karak, old but luxurious. The mace is covered by the power of lightning. The owner is not affected by lightning damage. The mace in the protagonist's hand was covered in electricity. He waved it in front of him with a smile and said it fit perfectly in his hand. 
Dobby said his weapon was cool. Turning around, Su Hayek said that his weapon wasn't bad either. The goblin smiled happily as he held the sword in his hands. With a nervous grin, the protagonist mentally apologized and added that he just threw that sword away. Dobby shouted at Su Hayek to be careful and that there were orcs ahead. Four orcs stand in the way of the main character. They growled loudly. The dialogue box describes an orc warrior, brave orc. It stinks. If he catches you, it will be bad. Swinging his mace, Su Hayek shouted about them attacking him after the secret boss. Running through them, he threw two orcs into the air with an electric mace. The other two orcs opened their mouths in surprise as they looked at him. Su Hayek stopped, two orcs were lying on the ground around him, and the remaining two were looking at him in surprise. He opened his mouth and eyes in surprise as he looked at his mace and thought about how good this mace was. The two orcs looked at him uncertainly. The main character thought that the advantage was now on his side. As he took out his shield, he decided to check if there was another secret quest. Covering himself with his shield, he asked if the orcs wanted to live. They furiously shouted for him to die. Su Hayek pointed out that it seems that the only hidden item is a mace. Gritting his teeth, he gripped his shield and mace tighter. Shouting furiously and brandishing his weapons, he threw the orcs into the air. Dobby and Su Hayek are standing in front of a fork in the road with two passageways. Su Hayek asked where they should go next. Dobby said they should go to the right. The main character agreed with a smile. Dobby wondered why he didn't ask why to the right. Su Hayek looked at him with a smile and said that he just trusted him. Dobby puffed out his cheeks in embarrassment. Closing his eyes and beaming with joy, he ran forward and shouted that he should have been trusted from the very beginning. He said he would go first. Su Hayek ran after him, shouting about how dangerous it was. After that, there were four more battles. The main character swings an electric mace. He wants to know how Ha He Young is doing. He Ha Young stands with his staff and free hand facing each other, creating a fireball. Su Hayek and He Ha Young said with a smile about each other that they were very talented, and they were definitely doing a great job. The dialogue box says that there are five hours left. The main character and Dobby stare intently ahead, weapons drawn. The dialogue box asked if they would like to enter the boss room. In front of them was a large red double door with a huge lock in the middle. Su Hayek asked Dobby if he was ready. He answered in the affirmative. A blue light enveloped them, and they disappeared. They appeared in the boss's stone-floored room. There were many orcs in front of them, and behind them, an armored orc sat on a throne. He was sitting with his arms folded. The black-robed orc, the chain-armored orcs, and the orc warriors all looked tense. The dialogue box announced that there were 4 hours and 56 minutes left. There are 10 seconds left until the battle starts. Su Hayek thought about how they were finished. Noticing the black-robed orc with the staff in his hands, he noted that he looked like a mage and assumed that they would have to start with him. Eight seconds until the battle starts. Glancing at Dobby, he thought that then the two orc warriors would be left to him. Four seconds until the battle starts. Dobby looked at the protagonist questioningly with round eyes. Su Hayek thought that he would only get in the way. Dobby called out in exasperation that he felt that Su Hayek was thinking bad things. The main character turned away with a grim expression. He thought about what he should do and which option to choose to deal with all of them. Two seconds until the battle starts. Frowning resolutely, he decided to protect Dobby first because he was a priest. The timer went to zero and the dialogue box announced the start of the battle. Looking at the orcs with swords, Su Hayek mentally urged them to attack. He stared at them without moving. The orcs also stood motionless. Su Hayek couldn't understand why they were frozen. The armored orc was shaking as he sat on the throne. He shouted to them to attack now and that the Colleen was with them. A mailed orc leapt at him, swinging his sword. The armored orc's head flew off his shoulders and fell to the floor. Su Hayek was puzzled as to why they killed their ally. Dobby replied that it was because of Karaksh. The main character was surprised to assume that he would be missed because of his weapon in his hands. The dialogue box congratulated Su Hayek for clearing the second floor of the challenge tower. It announced a move to the waiting room. The dialogue box indicated in red that there were 4 hours and 55 minutes left. It announced that all enemies were defeated. The mailed orcs fell to their knees, eyes closed. One of them called for greeting the Liberator. The dialogue box read, Secret Quest Forgotten Grave of the Mighty Orc Warrior Karax Completed. Bloodless Passage of the Boss Room. Achievements will be taken into account in the total score of passing. The door behind the throne opened, revealing lava. The orcs lined up in two rows along the road to the throne. Su Hayek asked Dobby to explain a little more. The red dialogue box says, You have defeated Karax, the orc warrior who lost his soul. Strength, agility, and stamina increased by 4. Secret quest completed. All stats increased by 2. Level 3 pain threshold. Level 3 regeneration. Level 2 electricity resistance. Level 5 perseverance. Level 6 combat concentration. 
the main characters are standing in front of the orcs, who are kneeling in two rows along the road to the big door. The two male orcs at the end cross their swords. The dialogue box says, after completing the secret quest Forgotten Grave of the Mighty Orc Warrior Karak, an additional optional task is opened, Orc Liberator. Additional tasks are often more difficult than regular arcane tasks. In front of Su Hayek and Dobby, there was a lava lake with rock islands floating on the surface. Su Hayek asked about the fact that Karak itself was difficult, and the extra task would be even harder. He thought about how he couldn't trust what the Tower of Trials was saying. He remembered that she had provoked him to kill Dobby. He thought of Dobby shivering in the darkness of the mine. He remembered that she had then set up a trap so that they could miss the secret mission. He remembered the fork in the cave. The dialogue box informed him that after the time was up, he would not be able to change the selection. Sue Hayek frowned. The dialogue box said, if you want to cancel the additional secret mission and move to the third floor, please say, waiting room. The dialogue box announced that there were three seconds left. Dobby stared ahead, frowning. The dialogue box announced that there were two seconds left. Closing his eyes thoughtfully, Su Hayek thought about how high risk means high reward. Stepping forward, he beckoned firmly for Dobby to come. Dobby called out that he was coming. A dialogue box announced that the secret quest orc liberator was starting. 59 minutes and 59 seconds left. As they moved along the dungeon, they noticed a brown orc. Su Hayek noticed that he was pushing a huge rock out of the blue. Frowning with his weapon ready, he thought about how he hadn't even been given any explanation. The dialogue box announced that there were 46 minutes and 51 seconds left. Su Hayek noticed that the mission was called Orc Liberator. The face of the orc in front of him looked old, it was covered with wrinkles, it had long gray eyebrows, and its green eyes looked tired. Su Hayek assumed that he wasn't the enemy. Turning to Dobby, the protagonist asked if he knew who it was. Dobby spread his hands. The orc turned to the main character as a liberator. He asked if he could hold the stone and said he needed a break. Su Hayek tensed up nervously. He asked who he was. The orc replied that his name was Perictus. The main character asked in surprise why he was holding him, if he could let him go. Perictus calmly replied that then all would be lost. Su Hayek said that he might just jump out of the way and asked how he could trust him. Perictus said nothing. The protagonist turned to Dobby and asked if it was a check from the tower. Dobby just stood there, staring off into space with a stupid face, drooling from his mouth. Su Hayek noted with disappointment that it was stupid to ask. The dialogue box announced that there were 43 minutes and 37 seconds left. Su Hayek suggested that he check out the passageway first, then hold it. Perictus raised his eyebrows in frustration. Sighing, the protagonist put down his weapon on the ground. Propping a rock on his back next to the orc, he said he could handle it and he could let go. Su Hayek noticed that the orc was chuckling and suggested that it was better to disagree. He could feel all of it, and the veins on his face bulged with tension. With his feet barely planted on the ground, he realized that this was a trap and wondered if he really had to sacrifice himself to free the orcs. He thought that if he was distracted for even a second, the stone would smear him. Smiling happily, Perictus thanked the main character, calling him a dear liberator. Gritting his teeth against the weight and sweating profusely, Su Hayek thought about how he couldn't even say anything back. Perictus put his hand on Su Hayek's shoulder with a smile and told him to just stand there for a second and never let go. The main character thought irritably that he would not let himself be crushed so easily. Folding his hands behind his back, Perictus called Dobby to come with him, calling him the child of Penric. Dobby followed, dropping his sword on the ground. As Su Hayek watched them go, he wondered where they were going and if Dobby had betrayed him. Shaking and pale from exertion, Su Hayek mentally begged Dobby not to leave and thought about how he needed help. Su Hayek found that the rock had moved. Shouting loudly and shaking, he struggled to keep the rock in place. Gritting his teeth and bulging his eyes, he thought that he was going to die. The dialogue box says that there are 42 minutes and 31 seconds left. Holding the rock with his body with difficulty, Su Hayek mentally called out for Dobby. The dialogue box says that there are 23 minutes and 54 seconds left. The main character's face is emaciated, tears are coming out of his eyes. He wondered why no one was coming back, since it had already been 20 minutes. Tarek disappeared in front of Su Hayek's face. He smiled and told him that he had done a great job. Dobby, who was standing next to him, told him that he was doing great. Perictus said with a smile that he had only held the yoke of life before, but thanks to him, he would be able to carry it forward. He was holding a necklace with a large green gemstone in his hands. Perictus said that he would definitely repay him for his kindness. He put the necklace around the tired protagonist's neck. Leaning his back against the rock, Perictus said that Su Hayek could let him go now and thanked him. The necklace around Su Hayek's neck, who was panting heavily, started to glow brightly. The dialogue box described the Perictus will necklace, a necklace given to the Liberator by Perictus. An unknown power is contained in the dark green stone. 
Perseverance plus 5 levels. Combat concentration plus 5 levels. Leaning tiredly on his feet and breathing heavily, Su Hayek thanked Perictus. He replied that it was a reward for his good intentions. The main character drew attention to the ring on the finger of Perictus. He thought about the fact that it wasn't there before and assumed that he wanted to pick it up from that passageway. Dobby and Su Hayek pick up their weapons from the floor, and the main character puts the shield behind his back. He beckoned Dobby to move on. Turning around, he raised his eyebrows. Su Hayek said that he had just moved and asked if Dobby had seen it. Dobby wondered what he was talking about. Frowning, the protagonist wondered what he had imagined. The white dialog box says, additional secret task completed, the result will be counted instead of passing the third floor. After counting, you will be moved to the waiting room. Su Hayek asked Dobby to wait. He walked over to the stone and started pushing it. Perictus looked at him in surprise. Gritting his teeth with the effort, his eyes bulging, he began to push the rock with all his might. The orc opened his mouth in surprise. The main character thought that he wanted to help him at least a little. He screamed as he pushed the stone. Smiling, Perictus thanked him and told him to make sure to survive until he could repay him. To the protagonist's bewilderment, he was shrouded in blue light. The dialogue boxes read, Additional Secret Quest Orc Liberator Completed. Despite your weakness, you have challenged the overwhelming odds. Additional achievements will be taken into account. 17,432 points were added to the main character's score. Total points, 44,108. Move to the waiting room. Wrapped in blue light, Su Hayek and Dobby appeared in the white waiting room and fell to the floor. The red dialogue boxes read, Additional secret mission completed. Strength, agility, and stamina increased by 3. Bloodless victory in the boss room. Strength and agility increased by 2. 8th level combat concentration. 8th level perseverance. 5th level 6th sense. Due to the contract of the first rank constellation, the nine celestial bodies of Colin, the shackles binding the 5th rank constellation to protect Perictus, have been destroyed. On the white dialogue box, it said that Su Hayek had successfully passed the third floor of the challenge tower and announced that he had been moved to the waiting room. After passing the third floor, he gained access to the rank list of conquerors in the community. Wrapped in blue light, Su Hayek and Dobby appeared in the waiting room. The dialogue box announced that there were 10 hours left before moving to the fourth floor and recommended that you take a break. Shaking, Su Hayek clenched his fists in front of him. Raising his fists in the air, he happily shouted that they had made it. Dobby shouted happily, raising his hands. Seeing a glass of water on the table, Dobby happily ran over to it. The main character irritably said that he should drink after him. The white dialogue box says that contracts with second and third class constellations are now available to him. There are a lot of dialogue boxes about offers to enter into a contract. Looking at them, Su Hayek thought that he would rather eat. His eyes widened in surprise. Sitting on a chair, Dobby turned around, munching on a piece of bread, and said that he would eat it all. He asked if he could. Smiling furiously, Su Hayek replied that he couldn't. He added that the bread will still appear indefinitely. The main character called up the ranked list of conquerors. The dialogue box said, First place Quan Su Hayek, 4th floor. Total account 44,108, hidden. Second place Ha Hee Young, 5th floor. Shared account, hidden. 3rd place Alexi Braham, 5th floor. Shared account, hidden. 4th place Ivo Andrik, 5th floor. The total score is 802. 5th place Matsubai Kara, 5th floor. The total score is 782. The dialogue box asked if he would like to make his account public. Su Hayek glanced at Ha Hee Young's hidden account and said he didn't want to. With a sigh of relief, he said that Ha Hee Young was definitely fine. I hit myself on the head. He smiled with tears in his eyes and said that he needed to worry about himself more. Dobby called out loudly. He asked why he was hitting himself and said that it would be better to hit him. Dobby irritably punched the protagonist in the face while standing on the table. Su Hayek fell to the floor. He opened his eyes irritably. Angry, he sits on the bed next to Dobby, who is holding his head, which shows a lump. Su Hayek noted that he can be annoying. Raising an eyebrow, he asked why the person in fourth place only had 802 points and where he got 43,000. He asked why the others were on the fifth floor. Su Hayek remembered that he could use the community. Grabbing his wrist, he called up the community window. Several messages appeared in front of him. In the first message, a person asks who Quan Su Hayek is in the first place and why he is on the fourth floor. In the second message, the person is dissatisfied with the fact that the priests and magicians have only one battle to reach the fourth floor. In the third message, someone asks if anyone knows what will happen on the fifth floor for a melee fighter. He added that he was nearly killed by an orc warrior on the fourth floor. Noticing the last message, Su Hayek thought about why he was fighting a great orc warrior already on the second one. He said they were probably lying. A dialogue box appeared in front of him, telling him that Ha Hee Young had sent him a message. 
Holding up in front of him, he shouted in exultation. In the message, Ha Hyung said that if he passed the third floor, he could send messages with his mind. Dobby looked questioningly at the dialogue boxes. Su Hayek replied that he found a secret quest on the second floor and went straight to the fourth floor. Ha Hyung opened her mouth in surprise and praised him. She asked him if he was tired. She said she didn't think learning without a feature window would be so difficult. He was surprised to think that learning without the stats window would be more difficult. He asked if his training was a little more difficult. She replied that it was much more difficult, and that even she gave up on the second floor boss. Ha Hee Young added that no one else could have done it. She apologized, saying it was her fault. She said she couldn't, but instead would help out otherwise. Su Hayek replied that it was fine and she didn't need to apologize. He opened his mouth in surprise and bulged his eyes, noting that even the regressor had failed. Grinning, he thought about how lucky he was to have a secret mission. Dobby said he had a strange face. Ha Hee Young asked what his score was and said that she had 7,400 points. He replied that he had 44,000. She cried out in surprise. Ha Hee Young said that he seems to be fighting on a completely different level in close combat. He asked her what she was talking about. She said there was no point in explaining. Ha Hee Young complimented him on his good work and told him to use his glasses for good after the fourth floor when the store opened for him. Su Hayek asked if she had any advice on the fourth floor. Ha Hee Young apologized and said that she had only read a few posts about him, so she wasn't sure. He asked her where she had read. She said she would tell them when they met. Ha Hee Young asked how much time he had left. The dialogue box says that there are 9 hours and 14 minutes left before moving to the fourth floor. Su Hayek said it was about 9 o'clock. She told him to rest and not get sick. Ha Hee Young said they would talk later and wish them luck. Smiling, the protagonist told her not to worry. He thought that he would have to search for himself in the community. Ha Hee Young told him not to sit in the community until he was blue in the face. Su Hayek wondered how she had guessed. She said, see you on the sixth floor. Wishing her all the best, the main character fell on the bed. Turning to Dobby, he asked who the Colin was. Dobby shouted incoherently about what he didn't know and how he had lost the constellation. Su Hayek assumed that Colin had sealed Pinrick. Dobby frowned and said he didn't know because he hadn't been born yet. The main character then asked why he believed in Pinrick. Jumping up and down, Dobby said that Penrick's voice had appeared in his head. He shouted incoherently about the necklace, Penrick, and the goblin god. Su Hayek said that he didn't understand anything. He lay down with his head on the pillow and said that there were two more floors to go to the sixth floor. He added that Dobby should not lie down too close. The dialogue box reported that there was one hour and three minutes left before moving to the fourth floor. A dialogue box appeared in front of the protagonist's face as he lay in the dark. It has announced its entry to the community. The following messages are written on the dialogue boxes. Conquerors are not your rivals. By Kevin Eric, 5th floor. You guys know about this, right? We'll lose the planet if we don't make it. It's hardly a joke, since we're stuck in this strange tower. Let's unite and not deceive each other. Ria Archaf, 5th floor, agreed. 5th floor, Eric Sakup, the training is very simple. Maybe the whole tower will be the same. We will also become the gods of the earth. Fifth floor, Wang Wai, teams are for weaklings. So tell me that you are afraid to conquer it yourself. The dialogue box disappeared. A white dialogue box greeted the fourth floor of the trial tower. Su Hayek found himself in a stone structure. He noticed that there was a ramp ahead of him. Turning around, he found a rise. He asked where Dobby had gone. The white dialogue box says, run away. One hour and 59 minutes left. The ground beneath Su Hayek's feet began to shake. He staggered and swore. As he ran down the slope, he assumed it was a speed test. Gritting his teeth, he thought about concentrating. The dialogue box says that there is 1 hour and 38 minutes left. The dialogue box says that there is 1 hour and 27 minutes left. 1 hour and 11 minutes. Su Hayek continues to run. He runs as fast as he can, eyes bulging, and wonders if he's doing the right thing. The main character thought about whether there was a secret mission behind. He wondered if anything was rolling behind him at all. Turning around, he guessed that it might be an illusion. Turning his head forward, he decided that he didn't have time to hesitate because he had run too far. He squeezed his eyes shut and thought that his head was hurting. Festive firecrackers sounded. An inscription appeared above the main character's head, finish. He looked up in surprise, pausing. He looked surprised, not understanding what was going on. A white dialogue box congratulated him on completing his fourth training and announced that he would move to the waiting room after scoring points. The dialogue boxes indicate that there is 1 hour and 8 minutes left. He successfully escaped, extra points were added. 3,208 additional points were awarded. The total score is 47,316. He didn't take a step back. The traps were not activated. 2,000 extra points were awarded. The total score is 49,316. 
moved to the waiting room. Sue Hayek asked in surprise if that was all. Grinning, he said that he always relied on Dobby for such things. With a smug smile, he ran a hand through his hair and thought that he was incredible. The mace was shrouded in electricity. He thought about how he would lead Ha Hyun forward. Wrapped in the blue light, Sue Hayek smiled confidently. The red dialogue box says, not one step back. You have an unshakable will. Level 9 Perseverance, Level 8 Six Cents. The dialogue box announced that the store was now available to him, and he could enter into contracts with fourth grade constellations. Sue Hayek appeared in the waiting room next to Dobby. Dobby complained that he was bored. The main character waved his hand wearily and said that he didn't have time to play with him. He asked if he could see the dialogue box and said it was less than four hours to the next floor. The dialogue box says that there are three hours and 59 minutes left before moving to the fifth floor. Dobby pouted and said he couldn't see anything. Sue Hayek noticed that he couldn't see his dialogue boxes and apologized. He sat down at the table, bread in hand. The dialogue box announced that Ha Hee Young had sent him a message. Sue Hayek happily said that she was just in time. Clenching her fists in front of her, Ha Hee Young noticed that he had passed the fourth floor and praised him for his excellent work. Sue Hayek thanked her while munching on bread. He noted that she seemed to have already finished fifth and asked if she had followed the ranking list. She said she was in the waiting room looking over there and asked him what his current bill was. He replied that he had 49,000 points and at the last level, he didn't find a secret quest. Ha Hee Young said with a smile that he did a great job and added that their lives are much more precious than points. She said that to get into the real tower, all conquerors must complete their training. Ha Hee Young explained that the passage further is blocked until everyone has completed their training. She said with a grin that the community was torn apart because of him. He asked her what she was talking about. Su Hayek opened the community window. Several messages appeared in front of him, in which people swore at him and threatened to teach him a lesson. The main character was horrified. Ha Hee Young frowned and told him to go to the store and buy lightning essence. Su Hayek opened a store. A dialogue box with various items popped up in front of him, and he noted that there was a lot going on here. The dialogue box says that it costs 45,000 points. It looks like a lightning-shaped bottle with green contents. Su Hayek opened his mouth in surprise. Ha Hee Young asked what he was waiting for and told him to buy. She added that he should buy a body-strengthening decoction with the remaining 3,000. Su Hayek stamped his foot nervously. He thought that she was scaring him and agreed. She reminded me about the body-strengthening decoction. The main character replied that he understood. He was flipping through the items in the dialogue box. Lightning essence and body-strengthening concoction appeared on the table in front of him. The dialogue box described lightning essence, a single instance. Contains the power of lightning. The power of lightning has nothing to do with constellations. The level of uptake depends on the user's abilities. The dialogue box describes body enhancement decoction, a limited quantity item, an infusion that strengthens the conqueror's body. The level of absorption depends on the user's abilities. Ha Hee Young told him to remember that he should first drink the body enhancement decoction, and then the lightning essence. Surprised, he agreed. An image of Ha Hee Young in a business suit at the podium with potions in her hands appeared in his mind. As he opened the body enhancement decoction, he asked about the fact that he just needed to drink it. Ha Hee Young answered in the affirmative. He opened the golden lid of the decoction. He began pouring the red contents of the jar into his mouth. He stiffened and frowned, noticing something. Looking at the vessel that was doubling in his eyes, he noticed that his eyes were closing. He fell face first on the table. Looking at the lightning essence, he thought that he needed to drink it all. Dobby called out in concern, asking if he was okay. The red dialogue boxes say, you used a body strengthening decoction. All physical stats have been improved. The applicant's status has been confirmed. Restrictions on the body strengthening decoction are lifted. All physical characteristics have been significantly improved. You use lightning essence. Your body is charged with the power of lightning. After using the body strengthening decoction, the absorption rate was noticeably improved. The applicant's status has been confirmed. Restrictions on the body strengthening decoction are lifted. The absorption rate has been noticeably improved. The white dialogue box says task, get at least one enlightenment. Five hours and 52 minutes to go. Su Hayek abruptly opened his eyes. Turning around, he found himself in some outer space. He asked what kind of place it was and how much time had passed. He called out to Dobby, but there was no answer. He assumed that he would have to go through everything by himself again. He asked what it means to be enlightened. He guessed if he needed to get some special battle sense or enlightenment himself. Clenching his fist in the midst of lightning, he wondered what he was supposed to do in the first place. He looked questioningly at his fist, which was wrapped in electricity. He thought that for a moment he had felt some kind of power. Frowning, he said that he didn't have time to think about it and asked what enlightenment was. Closing his eyes thoughtfully, he said that all he did in the tower was fight. 
He wondered if there was something special about fighting a paladin or Karaksh. He thought about how he always saw the enemy's actions and moved as efficiently as possible. He remembered dodging the paladin's punches and Karaksh's punches. Su Hayek noted that there was one detail. He thought about how he would never let his guard down even if he was stronger than his opponent, and how everything depends on instant decision-making in a fight. He remembered how he had killed Karaksh. The dialog box says there are 5 hours and 52 minutes left. Scratching his head, he said that he had not guessed correctly. He thought about the fact that he had another thought during the subjugation. He thought about how the tower had given him a lot of choices and how he young had helped him, but in the end, he was the one who made the decisions and he would have to take responsibility for them. Su Hayek frowned seriously. He wondered if this counted as enlightenment. It began to glow with a white light. The dialogue box announced that the remaining time had reached zero and he had received enlightenment. The dialogue box congratulated the main character on completing the fifth floor and announced that he would be moved to the waiting room after scoring points. The dialogue box says, you have received 4,000 points. Total score, 5316 points. Move to the waiting room. Su Hayek appeared in the waiting room, sitting in the lotus position. Dobby was standing on the bed with two loaves of bread in his hands. The dialogue boxes say, you have completed your training. The stat window is obtained as a reward, but this stat window is different from what could be obtained on the first floor. Su Hayek exhaled slowly. He held up his palms. He was surrounded by a yellow aura. The dialogue box says, Juan Su Hayek, Earthling, C66432. Title, Seeker at the Crossroads. Affiliation, None. Constellation, No. Skills, 3rd level Lightning Essence, 8th level Sixth Sense, 18th level Tenacity, 18th level Combat Concentration, 5th level Regeneration. Dobby asked if he was okay, because he fell down and suddenly disappeared. Getting up from the floor, Su Hayek replied that he was fine. He wondered if he had relaxed while he was gone. Dobby shouted happily about water and bread, holding two wet loaves of bread in his hands. Smiling, the main character thanked him and said that he only sees bread. Su Hayek took a bite of the wet bread, frowning, and Dobby said he wet it. The main character thanked him indifferently. The dialogue box informed him that contracts with 5th and pre-5th grade constellations were now available to him. Su Hayek was looking at the dialogue box while munching on bread. Dobby looked at him happily, saying that he had wet him with his own saliva. The main character recalled how Ha Hee Young had explained to him that there would be a break room after training. She said that before going up to the sixth floor, you need to make a contract with the god who looks the worst. Looking at the dialogue boxes about contract offers, he said it was better to consult Ha Hee Young. It brought up a message box. A dialogue box appeared in front of him, which says, before entering into a contract with Constellation, the message function is disabled. You must sign a contract with Constellation to get to the next floor. Noticing that the messages weren't working, Su Hayek assumed it was the tower's doing again. He said that she did not forbid you to enter into a contract yourself, and the tower forces you to do it. In front of it was a dialogue box that said, Constellation of the Preliminary Fifth Grade. A farmer in a quiet garden offers you a contract. Su Hayek decided to sign a contract with him. He imagined himself jumping on crumbling platforms and thought that there are times in life when people trust a decision completely. He thought he thought that was exactly what happened when he saw his message. Su Hayek thought that it was as if his sixth sense was telling him that he needed to make this contract. A bright yellow light shines above it. The dialogue box asks if he wishes to enter into a contract with the constellation of the pre-fifth grade farmer in the quiet garden. Su Hayek said, yes. The dialogue box says, Conqueror Kwan Su Hayek signs a contract with the pre-fifth grade constellation farmer in the quiet garden. The red dialogue boxes say, Applicant Kwan Su Hayek has completed applicant training. 10,000 points were obtained. Total score, 15,316. The challenger Kwan Su Hayek received enlightenment and fulfilled the minimum conditions to become a preliminary constellation. Received the title of seeker at the crossroads. The white dialogue boxes say, community and private messages are available again. There are two hours left before moving to the sixth floor. It is recommended to take a break. Sitting on the bed next to the sleeping Dobby, Su Hayek said that the higher he went, the less time he had to rest. Ha Hee Young noticed that he was back and asked how many points he had. He said he had 15,316 points and asked if he should have gotten more. She replied that she thought it was because he had been trained without a characterization window. She explained that with such an account, you can buy a high-level conqueror suit or strong leather armor. Su Hayek, who was wearing the armor he had just purchased, moved his arms and legs and said that it fits perfectly. The dialogue box announced that teaming up was available from the sixth floor of the challenge tower and asked him to choose the conquerors he wanted to team up with. Su Hayek smiled and thought about how he could finally meet Ha Hee Young. The dialogue box says, the hidden names of the constellations were made public. 
the deity that conqueror Quan Su Hayek has contracted with is the first class Thunder Iron Constellation, a master wherever he goes. A dialogue box greeted the protagonist on the sixth floor of the Tower of Trials, the lost world of the infected. He and several other people appeared near the construction site. Su Hayek patted Dobby's head and noted that they were together this time. Ha Hee Young waved and called out to Su Hayek. The dark-skinned man shouted when he saw the goblin. The blonde-haired boy pulled the string of his bow and arrow and fired at Dobby. Su Hayek deflected the arrow with a mace kick. Dobby's mouth dropped open and his eyes bulged. He wept as he looked at the broken arrow lying on the ground. As he drew an arrow from his quiver, the man with the bow asked him what he was doing. Su Hayek turned to him with a threatening expression. He asked who he had just shot. Ha Hee Young yelled at them to stop. She said this goblin was on their side. The guy with the bow was surprised, but agreed and lowered the bow. A big man in a tank top and short shorts asked Su Hayek about how he had just deflected an arrow. He said he had. The guy with the bow asked if it was his goblin. Su Hayek replied that he wasn't an item, so no. He explained that his name was Dobby, and they were climbing the tower together. Dobby fearfully hid behind the main character and said that he was his friend. The guy with the bow raised his palm and apologized, saying that he thought he was going to attack him. Su Hayek said with a grim face that he understood, because he didn't know. Ha Hee Young irritably told him to calm down. She offered to test the strength of the group. She counted the people present, two warriors, one mage, one archer, and three priests. Ha Hee Young concluded that it would make a good squad. The big bald man asked if foreigners understood him. He said that they had just met, and suggested that they at least get acquainted. They agreed. The bald man introduced himself as Sio Ho Sio, 45 years old. He introduced a lilac-haired girl standing next to him with a staff in her hands as Sio Ha Rin, his daughter. Sio Ha Rin introduced herself and said that she was 19 years old. Su Hayek introduced himself and said that he was 24 years old. He pointed at Ha Hee Young and introduced her, saying that they were the same age, and said that the goblin's name was Dobby. Ha Hee Young countered that she could introduce herself. The others asked in surprise if it was Kwon Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young who were ranked first and second in the ranking table. Seo Ho Seo asked Su Hayek if he was the first on the list. He replied with a smile that it was him. Seo Ho Seo exultantly raised his hand in the air and shouted that they were very lucky, and that now they will definitely pass the sixth floor. Seo Ha Rin calmly agreed. The guy with the bow introduced himself as Cole Sprouse, 27. The dark-skinned girl said her name was Chloe Bennett. Su Hayek whispered to Ha Hee Young if he knew any of them. She told him that Cole had walked up to the 90th floor with her last time, and he was probably in the top 100 conquerors. She said that she had met Seo Ha Rin since the 41st floor, and she was known for her heavy temper, but she had nothing to say about Seo Ho Seo and Chloe. Su Hayek noted that they had a whole deck of trumps. Ha Hee Young agreed. Chloe pointed her finger at Dobby and offered to kill him, adding that he was disgusting. Seo Ho Seo called out to her, asking what she was talking about. Chloe explained that they were going to drag the monster with them. She asked him what if he stabbed them in the back. Ha Hee Young cursed at her with a dark look, calling her crazy. Chloe asked her irritably what she'd called her. Ha Hee Young told her to stop acting like she was the only person here. She told her that if she didn't like something, she could leave here. She was standing in front of Chloe, pointing her index finger at her throat. Chloe said that people tend to stick together. Ha Hee Young asked irritably if people were stabbing people in the back. She asked if she wanted to check out which one of them in Goblin was the best healer. Chloe said nothing. Seo Ho Seo smiled and urged them not to swear. He told Chloe to apologize. Closing her eyes and frowning, she apologized. Ha Hee Young, her face still grim, said that useless people always make the most noise. The main character noted that she scares when she is angry, and it is better not to make her angry. Ha Hee Young stuck out two fingers in exasperation and asked what she was looking at, and said that she was afraid to look her in the eye before. Su Hayek decided it was best not to fight with her. When he heard a sound, he turned around, reaching for his weapon. Ha Hee Young asked what had happened and if anyone was there. Su Hayek and Dobby stood with their weapons ready. Seo Ho Seo asked why everyone was tense. The main character said that something was coming. A crowd of zombies opened the gate and rushed in with loud noises. Chloe and Seo Ho Seo exclaimed in fright. Seo Ho Seo asked if it was a zombie. The zombies were closing in on Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young held out her staff, surrounded by fire. She shouted, Fireball. The fireball flew forward and hit one zombie. Running forward, she shouted to the main character to lead the others. Su Hayek agreed and ran forward. She called out to Su Hayek and Seo Ho Su to be in the vanguard, while Cole stayed in the center. She said that she, Seo Ha Rin, Chloe, and Dobby would be in the rear. Someone asked Su Hayek if they could handle it, since they would have to fight their way through. They were all running towards the crowd of zombies. Smiling, the main character swung his mace. With a shout, he hit the ground with the electric mace, and the zombie was thrown back. With a confident smile, he said they could handle it. 
Ha Hee Young's past life, 66th floor. A guy with dark hair and a large backpack with a can of beer in his hand clarified that he was asked about the times when he won first place. Grinning, he replied that he couldn't forget what he found on the sixth floor. With a mad look, he said that the floor was a replica of Seoul. He said he didn't know why, but there were a lot of people near his house and everyone wanted to hide. He took a sip from the can and waved it away. The guy said that there were too many enemies from Myeongdong Street to Chunyuro, so they fled to the subway. He said that's where he saw the thing while walking on the tracks. He invited the other person to take a sip from his can. In response to a question about why he got it, he said that he would say it only once into this person, and this is not because of alcohol, but because he thinks that he will understand him. Rolling his eyes in a crazy smile, he clarified that his companion was the same famous killer who killed everyone, just like him. The dagger pierced his chest, and he coughed in surprise. Trembling, he asked why, clutching the wound in his chest. Ha Hee Young watches in silence as he falls to the ground. Horned zombies, opening their mouths, approach the main character. He swung them aside with an electric mace. The dialogue box says, hold out for 48 hours. There are 46 hours and 32 minutes left. While making his way down the street, Su Hayuk fights off the zombies with a mace and yells at the others to follow him. Ha Hee Young yelled for him to come inside. They enter the building's doors while Su Hayuk and Seo Ho Seo guard them. Once inside, they try to catch their breath. Seo Ho Seo noted that they had some time to rest and asked if they thought this place was similar to Korea. He noted that even the signs on the road were in Korean and asked where the monsters were coming from. Su Hayek replied that he didn't know, but he noticed it too. Seo Ho Seo asked if the earth could be destroyed. Ha Hee Young said that she thinks the gods just created conditions similar to their world. She said there must have been other people left on Earth. With an awkward smile, Seo Ho Seo said that he hoped so. Su Hayek thought about how she didn't lie. Seo Ho Seo addressed the main character, and the latter said that he could address him as convenient because he was older. He smiled back and noticed that his mace, which had been glowing before, was starting to release powerful lightning bolts. Looking at his mace with a smile, the main character said that he was lucky to find a secret mission on the fourth floor, where he got it. He added that it can be covered by electricity. Holding up two fingers, Seo Ho Seo said that he now understood that he had spent so much time there. He said that Su Hayek won first place for a reason, and he's still doing a great job. The main character replied that all are good. Cole asked them what they thought of the constellation contract system. Seo Ho Seo laughed and said that he thought he would get a fourth grade constellation, but it turned out to be a second grade one. Chloe asked why she would even enter into a contract with a fourth grade constellation. Seo Ho Seo replied while laughing that he didn't like the names of others because they lacked imagination. Chloe said that if the constellation class turned out to be a real one, then he would be left out of it. Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young looked at her in annoyance, thinking that she was a fool herself. With a chuckle, Seo Ho Seo assumed that Chloe had received a fifth grade constellation. She grimaced and said nothing. Seo Ho Seo asked who Seo Ha Rin's contract was with. She replied that she had signed a contract with a first class constellation because she felt that first class should be the best. Cole said he followed the same logic and asked what constellation Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young had. Su Hayek replied that he was in first class. Ha Hee Young said that hers was too, and she just liked the name. She whispered in the protagonist's ear that she had signed a contract with the same one as last time. They nodded to each other. Seo Ho Seo asked if anyone knew what these contracts were. He said that the constellations should support them, but so far nothing has happened, and asked what this means. Su Hayek agreed and said that he thinks they'll figure it out in time. Cole asked what the percentage of ownership was next to the name of the constellation. Su Hayek thought about how he didn't know what he was talking about. He called up the characteristics window, and a dialogue box appeared in front of him. It read, ownership percentage, 0% out of 100. He wondered when it had appeared there. Su Hayek asked Ha Hee Young in a whisper how to use it. She said she would tell me later. Chloe glumly asked what they were going to do next, and if they had any ideas. Ha Hee Young said that she was just about to suggest that we leave. Cole asked if they should think about a plan of action first, since they wouldn't easily find another safe place. Seo Ho Seo agreed and said that the next step should be discussed. Ha Hee Young said that she has the skill of predicting the future, so she knows that staying in one place is dangerous. Seo Ho Seo exclaimed in surprise, and Su Hayek noted in his mind that she had a clever idea. She said they would be found if they stayed here and the enemies became stronger. She added that it was strange that they could take a quiet break at all. Cole agreed. Seo Ho Seo asked where they should go and what she sees in the future. Ha Hee Young replied that they would go to Chunguro Station. He asked in surprise. Smiling, she asked if they had heard that Su Hayek had found a secret quest on the previous floors. She said they had a first and second place in their room, and they should try to find one on the sixth floor as well. Cole agreed and picked up the bow. Seo Ho Seo also agreed, believing in her divination skill. Turning around, she said that everyone seemed mentally prepared. 
She said go ahead. They all got up and followed her. They fight against zombies. Ha Hee Young holds a staff surrounded by flames in his hand and shouts for everyone to come here. Su Hayek called out to her that he would cover the rear. A zombie with long hair approaches him, and he grins with an electric mace in his hand. Dobby holds out his glowing green hands and shouts, healing. Seo Ho Seo, wrapped in the green light, turns to him with a smile and thanks him. Ha Hee Young shouted to run. They fight their way through a crowd of zombies rushing to attack them. They ran to the railway, and the main character shouted at them to jump on the tracks and hide. They jump down one after the other. Hiding, they look up as a snarling mob of zombies passes them. After waiting for the zombies to leave, Ha Hee Young signaled for them to turn around and they walked along the track. Seo Ho Seo smiled and was glad to be able to exhale. Su Hayek told them that they did a great job. Seo Ho Seo addressed the main character and said that he used to like to read books about the fantasy and Nurem worlds. He explained that in such stories there were different towers, teams, a menu of characteristics, constellations, in general, fantastic adventures. Turning to look at him, Su Hayek wondered why he had brought it up so suddenly. Seo Ho Seo continued and said that he now realized how different everything is from books. He said with a smile that just in case, he wanted to say that if it was necessary to save him or Seo Ha Rin, he would save his daughter first. He gave a thumbs up and asked if he agreed, adding that he could only rely on him. Su Hayek hesitated and agreed. Smiling, he said that if he was given a choice, he would save everyone. Suddenly, He Ha Young stopped them with a raised hand. She said tensely that there was something on the other side. Looking around, the protagonist asked what she was talking about. In front of them was a huge yellow egg with green veins, wrapped in wooden roots. Leaning over it, Seo Ho Seo noticed that it was an egg. The dialogue box says that this is an unknown infected egg. They noticed that next to the egg were a necklace, a ring, and a pink elixir. Dialogue boxes describe them as unknown ring, unknown necklace, and unknown elixir. Reaching out for the items, Ha Hee Young said that she and Su Hayek would take them. She explained that they found this place thanks to her, and without their help, they would hardly have made it here. Chloe argued that it was wrong to take everything without discussing it with them. Cole said that he agreed with Ha Hee Young because they had only come here because of them. Looking at the egg, he assumed it was part of a secret mission. Ha Hee Young said that the quest will start when they break it. Seo Ho Seo enthusiastically offered to do it. Su Hayek nodded with a smile. He said he was going to break it and swung the mace. He was interrupted by a cry for help from three guys who were being chased by a mob of zombies. Scratching his head, the protagonist decided to deal with them first. The red dialogue box says, an infected Seraph Queen egg was found on the sixth floor in Area 54. Secret tasks in other zones are cancelled. A mace strike cuts off the zombie's head. Seo Ho Seo, behind the main character, fights off the zombies with a shield, shouting, strike. Su Hayek thought about how that didn't sound like the name of the skill. With a blush and a grin, Seo Ho Seo said that he added charm to the battle. Gritting his teeth, Su Hayek thought that he thought so. While bowing, the three conquerors thanked the group of main characters. Su Hayek asked how they got to the tunnels with such skills. An older guy with black hair was breathing heavily and said that they were heading to Chunyuro, but there were too many zombies on the way, so they escaped and ended up here. This is the same guy that Ha Hee Young talked to in her previous life. Su Hayek asked about Junyuro again. The guy replied that their house was located there. He looked at the egg and asked what it was. The main character told them not to even look in that direction, because they found him first. Fussily waving his hands, the guy replied that he hadn't even thought about it, and he was just curious. He asked if they were going to Chunyuro. Seo Ho Seo put his arm around the boy and said with a smile that they were going there too. Su Hayek whispered to Ha Hee Young that he found this guy suspicious. She whispered back that it was better to kill him right there. Surprised, he replied that it wasn't to that extent. She replied that the guy was a jerk who would stab him in the back at the first opportunity and that she would kill him right now if she could. Startled, the protagonist asked her to calm down. Smiling, the guy suggested that they go to his house if they had nowhere to hide. Su Hayek, with a serious face, decided to do just that for now. The dialogue box says that there are 37 hours and 32 minutes left. Cole asked Ha Hee Young if the mission would start right after they broke the egg. She replied that she did. Seo Ho Seo enthusiastically encouraged them to do it faster. Looking at the egg, Cole noticed that it was ugly. Seo Ho Seo clenched his fist in front of him with a smile. Ha Hee Young asked the protagonist what he was waiting for and told him to break the egg. Su Hayek tensely thought about how he had a strange feeling that he shouldn't be doing this. He said they shouldn't break it. Ha Hee Young was surprised. Seo Ho Seo said that Ha Hee Young has a divination skill and may have good intuition, but it's better to listen to her. Cole agreed that the egg should be broken. Su Hayek said that he had a sixth sense skill and told Dobby to use purification on the egg. Dobby agreed, raising his hands in the air. He held out his hands, shrouded in blue light, and said, purification. The egg, shrouded in blue light, moved. Su Hayek noticed this and exclaimed in surprise that it had moved. 
Dobby danced happily, singing that it had moved. Ha Hee Young urged everyone to do the same together. Dobby, Seo Ha Rin, and Chloe held out their hands wrapped in blue energy and said, Purification. The roots around the egg began to fall off. The dialogue box described an egg, an unusual looking egg. The egg protector is somewhere nearby. Handle with caution. Ha Hee Young said that she saw in the future that they would find the key inside the egg, but didn't expect that there was a different development. She moved to the side and told Su Hayek to come over to her and the others not to touch the egg. The main character followed her while the others sat on the floor around the egg. Office, Ha Hee Young told Su Hayek that the secret quest had changed. She explained that initially, after 24 hours, the queen appeared, and the secret task was to find a safe zone using the key. Su Hayek asked in surprise about the queen. Ha Hee Young said that the biggest problem is that the queen appears in a random place and she doesn't think they can beat her right now. Closing his eyes thoughtfully, he noted that there would surely be a big reward for her. Ha Hee Young tapped her staff on the ground and offered to hand over the egg. She said it looked unusual and assumed it was a queen's egg. Snapping his fingers, Su Hayek said it was a great idea. She said she didn't expect the assignment to change so suddenly. He waved his hand in front of him with a grin and said that mages don't always think with their heads. Bowing her head furiously, Ha Hee Young asked him to repeat what he had just said. Fire could be seen in her hands. Laughing nervously, he said that he was saying that he didn't become a mage because he was stupid. The dialogue box says that there are 37 hours and 18 minutes left. Su Hayek asked if they would be killed while they were handing over the egg. Ha Hee Young replied that if it was her egg, it wouldn't be a problem. She explained that the queen was not infected, but simply looking for the people who killed her child. She added that they can just run away if there are problems. Ha Hee Young said that they have a break until the queen arrives, and if something goes wrong, they will have to run away for 24 hours. Su Hayek agreed. The dialogue box says that there are 24 hours and 15 minutes left. Ha Hee Young asked if everyone was ready. Chloe said that they didn't even consult with the others and decided to date the monster queen, and she decided to stay here. With a sigh, Ha Hee Young replied that she wasn't going to drag her along to listen to the accusations later. They walked out the door, and Su Hayek shouted, Go! Chloe watched the door slam shut and asked why they were putting themselves in such danger in the first place. They are standing on the street. Ha Hee Young smiled and said that she had forgotten something. Su Hayek said he would go with her. She said she didn't need to, and she'd be right back. Su Hayek wanted to protest, but Seo Ho Seo put a hand on his shoulder and told him that women have their own secrets. Dobby said he was stupid. Ha Hee Young said that she would be warming up soon. Su Hayek agreed, and Seo Ho Seo gave a thumbs up. A few minutes later, the main character asked if everything was fine. Ha Hee Young responded positively. The dialogue box says that there are 24 hours left. The road of a city street. An anthropomorphic monster in a black dress with what looks like horns on its head stands on the road with two black monsters. A dialogue box announced that the queen had appeared at a random location. The monsters were surrounded by a purple aura. The queen opened her mouth and let out a loud cry. Ha Hee Young told Su Hayek with a serious face that it looked like it would start soon. He nodded. They stand with their weapons ready. The red dialogue box says, In Area 54 of the 6th floor, the infected Seraph Queen Egg was not destroyed. The Lost King of the Infected Secret Quest has been cancelled. The Secret Quest Lost World of the Seraph Queen has begun. The reward is 5,000 points. In Area 54 of the 6th floor, a real Seraph Queen appeared, not a fake one. Su Hayek and the others walked down the city street, surrounded by the corpses of people lying on the ground. The main character noted that last time there were no bodies here. Bloodied bodies lie on top of each other. Ha Hee Young said that it's only been 4 hours and there are already so many dead. Turning around, Su Hayek asked if she was afraid of corpses. He noted that she didn't look scared. She replied with a smile that she was already used to it and was more worried about him. Su Hayek replied with a smile that he was fine too. As they were leaving the alley, they noticed the queen surrounded by people. Her monsters were fighting humans. Ha Hee Young put on the necklace and asked Su Hayek if he had the ring and elixir. He said he had them, putting the ring on his finger. People were screaming for help as they ran from the queen, who was killing them by impaling them with her hands. The queen let out a loud cry, opening her mouth. Next to her were two black monsters with dark blue paws, infected guardians. Spreading her arms, the queen let out a high-pitched cry. A blonde-haired guy covered in blood shouted at them to not even think about fighting and run away. He shouted that they were real monsters. Waving her hand, the queen let out a loud cry. It tore apart the fleeing guy, and he fell to the ground. Su Hayek looked at him in horror. Seo Ho Seo asked tensely if it was the queen. Turning around, the main character told Ha Hee Young that she said they wouldn't be infected. Surprised, she asked why they had changed. She asked if he thought he could beat them. Su Hayek raised his eyebrows in surprise. She gave him a thumbs-up smile and said that she knew his characteristics, and they were more than enough. That wasn't true, he thought. 
She said he hadn't really fought since the fourth floor anyway, and now was the time. Seo Ha Rin said wordly that this was a bad idea. Dobby raised his sword and said with a smile that Su Hayek was scary. Seo Ho Seo asked in surprise if she really wanted to send Su Hayek to fight this monster. Cole said they should just run away. Su Hayek said that even he would have a hard time killing everyone by himself. Ha Hee Young told them to trust her. She said that they can take care of the guardians and help Su Hayek with buffs. The guards were jumping around the queen. Ha Hee Young told the protagonist with a smile that he knows that she can see the future. She pointed a finger at her head and winked at him, telling him to believe in her. Su Hayek smiled and twirled the mace in his hand as he decided to give it a try. He leaped forward and gave the command for everyone to attack. The guards rushed to meet him with a loud clatter. Su Hayek knocked the guardian away with a mace strike. Seo ho -oh, while fighting the guards, shouted at Su Hayek to take care of the queen while they took on the others. The main character approached the queen, who raised her hand in the air. Su Hayek blocked her blow with his shield and quickly moved behind her. He yelled at Ha Hee Young to throw him an egg. The queen hit the ground, breaking the asphalt. Ha Hee Young threw him an egg. He jumped up and caught it. When he landed, he raised the egg above his head and called out to the queen. He asked her if it was her thing and if it made her angry. She lunged at him, shouting angrily and waving her arms. While dodging her attacks, he threw an egg. Seo Ho Seo caught it, shouted that he had caught it and started running away. Seo Ha Rin and Dobby held out their palms, shrouded in blue light, using purification. The queen, shrouded in blue light, was shouting and waving her arms. Su Hayek noticed that she only cared about the egg. As he dodged her attacks, he shouted for them to cover him while he picked up the shield. He picks up the shield from the ground as the queen's hand moves swiftly towards him. He was shouted about the attack from behind. In the reflection on the shield, the main character's electric mace could be seen. Turning quickly, he struck out with his mace. The queen's arm was thrown back, and Su Hayek thought about taking aim at the weak spot to stop her attack. He spins the mace in his hand and hits her in the leg. Shaking with pain, the queen bent over. She glanced at Su Hayek, who was approaching her while swinging his mace. He asked her how she liked his mace. He slapped her across the face, and she screamed and fell to the ground. Su Hayek thought that it was time for the final strike. He swung the mace at the fallen queen. Ha Hee Young stopped him, reminding him to clean up. The protagonist's mace froze in front of the queen's face. He came to his senses and said that it needed to be cleaned. Seo Ha Rin and Dobby sat on the ground next to the queen, applying purification to her. The queen was lying on the ground, unconscious, shrouded in blue light. Su Hayek asked what to do next. Ha Hee Young replied that it looks like the queen has been cleansed, but she needs time to wake up. She suggested we go to the media center. Su Hayek told the three guys to help carry her because they had more stamina. She tearfully thanked for the rescue and agreed. Cole announced that they were going to the media center. An hour before the battle, Su Hayek and the queen's teams are waiting. Su Hayek's group is waiting for Ha Hee Young outside. She rings the doorbell. A guy with dark hair meets her inside, looking at his phone, and tells her that he thought they had already left. She shot a fireball at him, and he fell to the ground, burned. The others in the house jumped out in surprise, wondering what the noise was. One of the guys asked her if she was crazy and what she was doing. Ha Hee Young holds a staff wrapped in fire in his hand with a dark look and says that he was willing to betray his comrades for a secret mission and deserved to die. Chloe screamed at her, startled. Ha Hee Young said that Chloe Bennett hated creatures of other races so much that she poisoned her own allies on the 16th floor. Chloe asked, startled, what she was even talking about. With a threatening face, Ha Hee Young said that the others are trash who abandon their comrades in battle and run away. Two guys, annoyed and frightened, asked her if she had proof and shouted that they were innocent. She calmly replied that she had nothing more to say to them. Surrounded by fire, she said that such scoundrels are unlikely to understand anything. Seo Ha Rin and Dobby used purification. The queen awoke, her horns pink and her eyes green. As she bowed, she thanked them for saving her. Su Hayek was glad that her sanity had returned. The queen said that she had woken up in the morning, but she was quiet so as not to frighten them. She apologized. Seo Ho Seo shouted that he should have said it earlier because it was heavy. Seo Ha Rin called out to him in displeasure. The queen asked if she could take her child away. Ha Hee Young agreed and handed her the egg. Picking up the egg, she thanked them and turned to the vine-covered wall. Parting the vines, she placed the egg in the hole in the wall. The main character asked Ha Hee Young what the queen was doing. She said she wasn't sure and told him not to relax just yet. The egg glowed and was covered with green cracks. A small white creature that looked like a queen hatched from the egg. He had a key in his hand. The queen took the creature in her hand, admiring her child. She announced with a smile that she would finish the case first. She held the creature up to the keyhole, and it inserted the key. The dialogue box says, Congratulations. You have passed the sixth floor, the lost world of the infected. Calculation of passing points. The wall split in two with a green crack. 
Su Hayek asked what was up with the timer and why they finished earlier. Ha Hee Young whispered that this kind of thing sometimes happens after secret missions. The dialog box says that there are 23 hours and 8 minutes left. They completed the secret mission Lost World of Infected Seraphim. Calculating the reward, Su Hayek said that apparently they are called Seraphim. The queen said she would like to know the name of her savior. Su Hayek introduced himself and started introducing Ha Hee Young, but she stopped him, saying that there was no need. The queen asked how best to thank them for saving their lost world. She said she would pray to the gods that they didn't lose their world the same way. Su Hayek thanked her with a smile. The dialogue box says, receive 22,732 points. The total invoice is 42,028. Move to the waiting room. The queen and her child wave goodbye to the conquerors, shrouded in blue light. The red dialogue boxes say, you have completed the secret mission. All stats have been increased by three. Fifth grade constellation horn separating mountains thanks first grade constellation thunder iron. The horn that divides the mountains is trying to repay the thunder iron challenger, Su Hayek. The community window on the dialogue boxes says that they were only able to finish the sixth floor thanks to Su Hayek who fought the queen, and so the floor ended when there was still time. The main character asked in surprise where so much praise came from, adding that he was even embarrassed. Dobby is sleeping on the bed. With a chuckle, Su Hayek said that he had drunk the body strengthening decoction and was sleeping. In the chat, Seo Ha Rin told Ha Hee Young that she also bought a body strengthening concoction and asked if she should drink it right away. She responded positively and asked if Seo Ho Seo had bought it. He said he'd just bought it. Su Hayek mentioned that Ha Hee Young cares about everyone. She replied that even though Su Hayek is the leader of the group, she can still help others if she is a regressor. The group leader has the power to expel and add group members, and in the wrong hands, it can lead to problems. Su Hayek told her that they still had room for one person. He asked what they would do. She replied that it would remain empty for the time being, because the fewer people, the greater the rewards for everyone. Su Hayek asked if she thought it would be better with a full group. She said they'd done fine before, especially since they had Dobby. She said she'd tell them when they needed someone else. Su Hayek agreed and asked if he needed to buy something for the new floor. Ha Hee Young asked him how many points he had. He answered, 42,028. She was surprised to see that he'd done almost everything himself. She said there was no need to buy anything yet, and he already had the elixir. Su Hayek glanced at the pink elixir on the table. He told her that he didn't drink it, as she asked. She said that his equipment and mace were enough for now, and if the shield was already a little frayed, it was still safe to use it. Su Hayek agreed. She said with a smile that she would buy the necessary things herself, and told him to save up points for the time being and not spend them just like that. He replied in surprise that he had a lot of them, and they should be enough. Ha Hee Young smiled and told him not to worry and that she would ask if he missed her. Su Hayek agreed and asked what would happen on the seventh floor. She said it was a secret. She explained that she would only tell him critical details. Su Hayek wondered why. Ha Hee Young asked what was the point of passing if he knew everything. She explained that he needed to develop his sixth sense and combat skills. She told him to go on his own while they were on the lower floors. Scratching the back of his head, Su Hayek thought it made sense. Ha Hee Young added that if she was suddenly killed, he would have to do everything himself. With a noticeable frown and scowl, he said that she would never die. With a chuckle, she said that she had just brought me here and that it was necessary to think about it. She told him to drink the seraph elixir and go to bed, because soon he would have to pass the seventh floor. Su Hayek put his hand on his face and agreed, telling her to rest as well. He exhaled heavily. He thought about what she said, that she had already seen him die in his previous life. He asked her how she felt. Su Hayek remembered that she said that she died on the 91st floor. He wondered how she knew he'd made it to 94. Su Hayek asked Ha Hee Young how she knew he made it to the 94th floor if she herself died on the 91st floor. There was no answer, and he assumed she was asleep. Taking the elixir in her hand, she decided to drink it and also go to bed. The red dialogue boxes say, You have drunk the elixir of Seraphim. The power of the Seraph fills your body. The applicant status has been confirmed. The absorption rate has been increased. Increased strength, agility, and health. Obtain the second level iron skin skill. The next day, the dialogue box says that Su Hayek's team has been moved to the seventh floor. The main character and Dobby are standing with weapons in their hands in the middle of a rainforest. The dialogue box says, Juan Su Hayek, Earth, C66432. Title, Truth Seeker at the Crossroads. Location, Challenge Tower. Constellation, First Class Thunder Iron. Ownership Percentage, 0% out of 100. Skills, 4th Level Lightning Essence, 9th Level Sixth Sense, 2nd Level Iron Skin. The main character noticed the question marks about a percentage of ownership and thought what it was. A dialogue box greeted them in the strange forest on the seventh floor of the challenge tower. Seo Hoseo said that everyone looks much stronger than before. 
He asked if it was the decoction. Seo Ha Rin said it looked like it and thanked Ha Hee Young. The dialog box reported that the forest was inhabited by insane were-tigers. The dialog box says, kill at least three were-tigers. After killing five were-tigers, the king of were-tigers will appear. They will either have to kill the king of the were-tigers or make a worthy sacrifice to him. Six hours to go. Su Hayek said with a smile that at least the assignment was explained to them this time. Ha Hee Young put her index finger to her lips and frowned as she said be quiet. Su Hayek was surprised. They stand among the forest vegetation. Ha Hee Young tensely said that the test had already begun. A dialog box announced that you were joining the dead community. The blue ghost appears in a dark space and asks in surprise that death is not the end. Yellow Ghost mockingly said that he was so scared that he didn't even see the system notification. Blue Ghost looked at him in surprise, not understanding what he was talking about. He saw Su Hayek and his group fighting zombies from above. He asked who Su Hayek was and why he was so strong. The Yellow Ghost reproached him for his stupidity, explaining that it was the hope and light of the dead. He asked how anyone could not know their star. Blue Ghost asked irritably how he was supposed to know about this. Yellow Ghost laughed and said it wasn't his problem. The green ghost with glasses said that he was watching him from the first floor, and he is on a completely different level. The blue ghost reproachfully asked him about how proud he was to have died before everyone else. The green ghost replied that it made no difference whether he died on the sixth floor or on the first. Yellow ghost told them to be quiet and that star Su Hayek was fighting the queen. They watch as Su Hayek fights the queen. One of them said that you should immediately run away from this. Another said that the queen now has two seconds of screen time. The ghost said to look at his weapon and said that with it he would have become the best and killed the queen, and it's not fair. Another told him not to even dream. Cole asked Ha Hee Young how they were supposed to get to this floor. She replied that she didn't know because she couldn't see the future at any time she wanted. He said he understood. Su Hayek looked at them with a smile and thought that she was trying to reduce the influence of her knowledge so that the whole group would become stronger. He said they needed to kill at least three were-tigers. He suggested we start looking for them. Cole said it would be difficult to find three people in six hours. Seo Ho Seo, laughing, told him that he should be more confident, because since he was an archer, he must have a good sense of smell. Cole humbly agreed with a chuckle and said that Su Hayek should be even better at it. He asked them what they thought of the murder of the five and the appearance of the king. The main character thought that perhaps this means a threat to people who are too greedy for points. Ha Hee Young said that one must either kill the king or make a sacrifice to him. She assumed that the victim meant a person. Cole agreed and said he couldn't believe that they were given such an assignment right after the band was formed. He asked if the tower was trying to destroy their trust. Seo Ho Seo asked what he was talking about. Cole explained that given that the leader of a group is usually a strong person, perhaps tower wants to make the group members weigh each other's worth through achievements. Seo Ho Seo frowned and said it made sense. Su Hayek said that if there is no cohesion between the team members, then this floor can lead the group to chaos. He glanced at Seo Ho Seo. He started to say with a suspicious face, don't tell me that. Startled, the protagonist asked if he thought he was one of those people. Seo Ho Seo laughed out loud and said that he was just joking. Seo Ha Rin slammed her elbow into his chest in displeasure. She asked if they should even worry about it. Dobby asked her what she was talking about. She said that Su Hayek can handle the were-tiger king. Seo Ha Rin explained that he easily defeated the Seraph Queen. Cole thoughtfully agreed that he was able to defeat the queen in two strikes. Su Hayek asked what they would do if the were-tiger king was stronger than him. Cole asked in surprise if the floor boss could get so much harder. Turning to him with a serious face, the protagonist replied that it was better to always think about the worst-case scenario and that he wasn't going to sacrifice any member of their group. Seo Ho Seo and Seo Ha Rin shed tears at his words. Ha Hee Young smiled contentedly. Su Hayek suggested that we find the were-tigers first. Seo Ho Seo agreed. Looking around, the protagonist asked which way they needed to go to find them. Exhaling, he frowned and said that they wouldn't have to do anything. Two were-tigers leapt out of the forest, swinging their paws, and Su Hayek told everyone to get ready to fight. The were-tigers were snarling at them menacingly. Su Hayek thought that it looked like there would be more and more of them. He shouted to the others to remember that they had to kill less than five were-tigers in those six hours. He shouted to everyone to be careful and that he would clear the way. Seo Ho Seo stood behind him with a smile and said that he could help. They charged. They hit the were-tigers with their weapons, knocking them aside. While still running, Su Hayek shouted for everyone to follow him. Seo Ho Seo shouted that he was going back to the rear. Several were-tigers run after them as they run through the forest with weapons in hand. The dialog box says that there are 4 hours and 42 minutes left. Number of were-tigers killed by Su Hayek's team, zero. They move forward, pushing the attacking were-tigers away with their weapons. The main character forcefully hit the were-tiger's neck with an electric mace. He grabbed the place of impact with his paw, which was shrouded in electricity. Su Hayek's mace glowed brightly with lightning. 
he swung the mace again, slamming the opponent to the ground with a bright blue flash. The other were-tigers began to shake. Cole shouted at him to slow down. Su Hayek turned around and asked if Sioha Rin and Dobby were the reason. Three shivering were-tigers stood before him. Cole said they were tired because they were running too long. Breathing heavily and leaning on his staff, Sioha Rin asks him to slow down a bit. Dobby, panting, says he's going to die. Frowning, Su Hayek thought about how the priests would always fall behind in such a chase, but they couldn't stop either. He shouted for them to use an endurance recovery spell on themselves. They agreed, grabbing their weapons. The dialogue box says that there are 4 hours and 11 minutes left. Su Hayek shouted, left. He slammed his shield into the were tiger's chest. Seo Ho Seo shouted that they kept appearing and appearing. Ha Hee Young called out to Seo Ho Seo about the enemy approaching from the right. Surprised, he turned to see the were tiger's mouth open in front of him. Su Hayek quickly jumped between them and hit the were tiger with his mace. The were tiger was thrown back by the force of the blow. Su Hayek asked if he was injured. Confused, Seo Ho Seo said that he was fine. He apologized and said they had killed one of them. The dialogue box says that there are 4 hours and 10 minutes left. The number of were tigers killed by Su Hayek's team is 1 out of 3. Seo Ho Seo offered to take a break. Su Hayek held up his mace. Looking at Ha Hee Young, who was sitting on the ground, breathing heavily, he noticed that she was also tired. Pursing his lips, he thought that it didn't make sense. He thought that even though they were holding back, they still had a team with the best rank on the list and a regressor, and the chase shouldn't be so difficult. He frowned. Su Hayek thought that there were only two options left, kill the king or make a sacrifice. Gripping the mace with a shaking hand, he thought that if they continued to run, they would be completely exhausted, and then the strength for the king would not be enough. Su Hayek lowered his eyes gloomily and thought about how he was sure that he wouldn't lose to him, but the whole group would be in danger if he was stronger. Ha Hee Young told Su Hayek that they would do as he decided. He opened his eyes in surprise. She said with a smile that it was fine and he didn't need to hold back because of them. Su Hayek smiled and thanked her. He decided that he would fight seriously now. Su Hayek leaps towards the two were tigers, swinging his mace and holding a shield in his other hand. With a swing of his mace, he parried the attacks of the were tigers and said, one, two. Another were tiger was running toward him from behind. Cole hit a red glowing arrow between the were tiger's eyes and said, three. Striking out in front of him with his sword, Seo Ho Seo shouted, universal rampage. Four. Dobby stood between them. Opening his mouth tensely, he said, five. He stabbed the were tiger from behind, and blood spurted from the were tiger's mouth. Dobby stood with his hands on his waist, looking pleased with himself. Su Hayek said with a smile that he was cool. Seo Ha Rin looked at him in surprise. The dialogue box says, number of were tigers killed by Su Hayek's team, six out of three. The king of were tigers has appeared. Kill him or make a worthy sacrifice. There was a loud sound in the forest. Many were tigers run through the forest, snarling. Su Hayek shouted about them running here. He said to apply buffs. Seo Ha Rin agreed. She shouted, Endurance. Seo Ho Seo and Su Hayek were enveloped in blue light. The main character raised a mace above him, which glowed brightly with lightning. He swung it, and three were tigers were struck by lightning. Su Hayek swung the mace repeatedly once more, throwing the were tigers into the air with his punches. Seo Ho Seo noted that he is now fighting with all his might. He shouted that then he must not be left behind, and rushed forward. Ha Hee Young caught up with him with a fire in her hand and told him to go back to the rear and help there. Surrounded by flames, she said, a wall of fire. She pointed her hands and staff at Su Hayek, and he was surrounded by fire. Smiling with tears in his eyes, Seo Ho Seo said that he was not allowed to take a step. Whirling around, he saw a were tiger charging at Seo Ha Rin from behind. After chopping it down with his sword, he shouted angrily if he knew whose daughter he was attacking. Remembering, he added, universal violence. Dobby asked him what the universal rampage was. Seo Ho Seo asked with a smile if he liked it and if it sounded cool. He added that they call it the romance of adventure. Dobby said he didn't know. Seo Ho Seo heard a sound from the forest behind him. He called out to Su Hayek. He flexed his arm and said, finally. Su Hayek frowned and looked ahead with a serious gaze. He said the were tiger king had come. A large were tiger with red eyes walks between the two were tigers who are bowing down. He growled and said, human. Su Hayek thought about whether he could talk and if there was an option to settle things peacefully. The dialogue box says, the king of the were tigers has appeared. Kill him or make a worthy sacrifice. Su Hayek stared at him in silence. Grinning with an electric mace in his hands, he noticed that he was waiting for a victim. The were tiger king replied with saliva coming out of his mouth, human. Su Hayek said that unfortunately, there's nothing to be done. He said they weren't going to sacrifice anyone. He took up a fighting stance, enveloped in electricity. The were tiger king looked at him and let out a loud growl. Many were tigers emerged from the forest behind him. They jumped to attack the main character. He thought the others might be able to handle the were tigers, 
but the king would be too strong for them. He decided to separate them. Two were-tigers run towards Su Hayek. Dodging the attacks of the were-tigers, he charged towards the king, swinging his mace. The king swung his hand up, growling loudly. It swiped its long clawed paw, and Su Hayek covered himself with a shield shrouded in electricity. An electric shock erupted. The king growled a question. Su Hayek asked if he understood now. He said his opponent was him. Su Hayek stands in front of the were-tiger king with a confident grin. The were-tiger king jumped back. He growled angrily. Su Hayek noticed that the lightning bolts didn't work. He supposed the were-tiger king was too thick-skinned. The main character rushed to the king of the were-tigers, swinging a mace, and said that then he would just beat him up. He slammed his mace into the man's back, and the were-tiger king growled in question, arching under the blow. He jumped back again. Su Hayek swung his mace with a menacing look. The were-tiger king screamed in fright, shrinking back and covering his face with his hands. Su Hayek swung the mace once more. The were-tiger king was startled again, holding his hands out in front of him. Twisting his brows nervously, Su Hayek wondered if this boss was much weaker than he thought. With a loud growl, the were-tiger king charged. Su Hayek jumped up and found himself under the torso of the fleeing were-tiger king. He hit him in the stomach with an electric mace. The were-tiger king screamed and rolled on the ground, holding his stomach. Su Hayek indifferently asked the boss if he was a weakling. The were-tiger king raised his head with tears in his eyes and growled in protest. Su Hayek noticed that he understood him. He asked if he had been pretending all this time. He said that even his pupils were shaking. The were-tiger king averted his trembling gaze. He crouched down and growled angrily. With a chuckle, Su Hayek said that although he was weak, he was still the boss. The were-tiger king charged, swinging both hands. The main character said that by doing so, it opens up from the other side. He closed the distance between them with a shield shrouded in electricity. As he swung his shield, he said that it allowed him to make such an attack. He slammed his shield into the were-tiger king's stomach, creating a bright blue flash. The were-tiger king screamed in pain, sticking out his tongue. As he fell, he rolled on the ground. Lying on the ground, he growled viciously as he looked at Su Hayek. The main character flexed his hands with a threatening expression and asked if he wanted to continue. The were-tiger king squeaked in alarm. Ha Hee Young held out her hands and shouted, Fire wall. There was a wall of fire in front of her. Turning to Seo Ho Seo, she said that Su Hayek seemed to be finishing up. He replied with a smile that he was, as expected, on a completely different level. Rushing forward, he slashed at the were-tiger with his sword and shouted, Universal murder. Dobby suggested that then they might ask for help. He added that he was dead tired. Cole, standing with the bowstring taut, told Dobby to come over and rest if he was exhausted. Dobby looked at him intently. Holding up his hands, he shouted, Endurance. It was shrouded in green energy. Showing off his muscles, he said that he was strong. Cole laughed and said he was strong. Sioha Rin ran forward, holding out her staff. She fired blue projectiles from her staff. The were-tigers screamed in pain as they were hit. She smiled and said it worked out pretty well. Ha Hee Young thought that Sioha Rin was a warrior priest in her previous life, and she might have been better suited to a melee class. Sioha Rin scratched her head happily. Ha Hee Young told Su Hayek through the hole in the fire wall that it was time to finish and that she needed to regroup. With a small smile, he noted that as soon as the situation was assessed, she was already giving out orders. He decided that it was really time to finish. As he approached the king of the were-tigers, weapons drawn, he told him that this was the end. The king growled furiously. Su Hayek chuckled, put his hand on his face, and said that he wasn't learning anything and it wouldn't work on him. He opened his eyes in surprise and saw the were-tiger king leap over the wall of fire. Su Hayek called out to Seo Ho Seo tensely. Seo Ho Seo stood with his sword raised and shouted his favorite phrase. The main character shouted that the king of the were-tigers was running towards them. Seo Ho Seo turned around in surprise and saw the were-tiger king leaping at Seo Ha Rin. She turned around in surprise. Su Hayek thought that sometimes a person can find strength that will surprise them. Opening his eyes wide, Seo Ho Seo ran towards her with all his might, shouting her name. He leaped in front of her, and the were-tiger king bit into his neck. Seo Ho Seo cried out in pain, clutching at the king's muzzle as it bit into his shoulder. Su Hayek thought that this was exactly what happened to Seo Ho Seo. Cole drew the arrow, calling out to Seo Ho Seo. Swinging the mace, Su Hayek shouted at the king to immediately get rid of Seo Ho Seo. Seo Ho Seo put his hand to the king's muzzle, which was digging deeper into his flesh, spattering blood. Su Hayek hit the king on the head. Seo Ha Rin called out to her father. Su Hayek holds the king's body on her back. Dobby and Seo Ha Rin use healing on Seo Ho Seo. Shrouded in blue light, he thanked them, breathing heavily. The dialogue box says, the king of the were-tigers has been killed. Two hours and nine minutes to go. Seo Ha Rin anxiously ran over to Seo Ho Seo, asking if he was okay. He smiled and gave a thumbs up, saying he was fine. 
He laughed and said that the system said it was over. The dialog boxes say, the king of the were tigers is defeated. Receive 2,000 points. Conqueror Sohoso has consumed too much of the king's blood. The conqueror Sohoso inherited the throne of the king. Siyoho Siyo's whites turned black and her eyes turned red. The dialogue box announced the beginning of the Vertigra transformation. Su Hayek stared at Siyoho Siyo, not understanding what was going on. He bent over, shaking and growling. It growled loudly, the veins on its body bulging, and it began to coat itself with red fur. Siyoha Rin started walking towards him with a worried face. Siyoho Siyo held onto his hands, shaking. His body was covered in tiger hair. Holding his face, he shouted at her to stay away. He shouted at Su Hayek to get Seo Ha Rin to safety as soon as possible. The main character asked Ha Hee Young if there was really nothing that could be done. Seo Ha Rin was shouting at her father. Ha Hee Young shook her head worriedly. Closing his eyes and gritting his teeth, Su Hayek thought that what happened to Seo Ho Seo was his fault, because he was careless, even remembering how he killed Karak the Goblin Paladin. Images of Karak the Goblin Paladin appeared before his eyes. He wondered if he would have to kill him too if Seo Ho Seo became the king of the were tigers. Seo Ho Seo stood there, almost completely transformed into a were tiger, drooling from his snarling mouth. Su Hayek said that he probably will. The red dialogue box says, First class constellation Thunder Iron is ready to support with a neutralizer. The support option is not yet available. In case of preliminary support, the conqueror is awarded an additional percentage of ownership. The last dialog box informed him that pre-support was charging 20% of ownership and asked if he was willing to accept. He smiled and loudly agreed. The dialog boxes say, granting a neutralizer has increased the support constellation ownership percentage for Su Hayek's Conqueror by 1.09%. The use of advanced support added an additional 20%. Ownership percentage is 21.09%. A test tube wrapped in pink light appeared in Su Hayek's hand. He told Seo Ho Seo that it was time to take his medicine. He forcibly opened its jaws and poured the contents of the test tube down its throat. Seo Ho Seo swallowed. He growled loudly, his hands clutching at his throat. A pink liquid gushed out of his mouth. Seo Ho Seo's eyes turned white again, and he fell to the ground. Seo Ha Rin rushed towards him with tears in her eyes, asking what was wrong with him and asking for an answer. Seo Ho Seo's body returned to normal. He opened his eyes. Sitting up, he scratched his head and asked what was wrong. Seo Ha Rin exclaimed that he was awake. Seo Ho Seo said that he fell into unconsciousness after seeing that he had turned into a were tiger. Seo Ha Rin said with a smile that Su Hayek saved him. She talked about how the medicine suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Su Hayek brushed the dust off his shoulder with a smile. He asked if it was just his imagination or if Seo Ho Seo had changed somehow. Cole agreed, saying that his skin had turned red and his eyes were as sharp as a wild animal's. Seo Ho Seo looked at them in surprise. Bobby said that his height increased and he looked like a tiger. Showing off his muscles, Seo Ho Seo said that maybe it was just their words, but the tiger energy was still bubbling up inside him. He called out to the main character. Su Hayek looked at him questioningly, wondering why he was calling him. Seo Ho Seo abruptly ran to him, hugging him and thanking him loudly. Su Hayek said with a smile that he said he would save them both. Seo Ho Seo looked at him with tears in his eyes. He remembered asking Su Hayek to save his daughter first in case of danger. Seo Ho Seo gave him a thumbs up and said that he was relying on him. Su Hayek agreed and said with a smile that he would save both of them anyway. Seo Ho Seo burst into tears and said that he was very grateful to him. Su Hayek smiled back. Cole asked how he'd managed to do it. He replied with a smile that the constellation helped him and gave him a neutralizer. Wiping away her tears, Seo Ha Rin said that the constellations can still support them. Su Hayek said that this is preliminary support, which is not yet available. He suggested that it opens with an increase in the floor as a community or store. Raising his eyebrows, Cole said that was why no one had heard anything about the support. Looking down, he said that no one had managed to get it except for Su Hayek. Su Hayek said that because of this, an additional percentage of the support constellation's ownership was added. Seo Ho Seo and Seo Ha Rin looked at him in shock, trembling. With an awkward smile, he waved at them and told them that everything was fine and it wasn't their fault. Cole said that he assumed that this would happen and it's about the fine that constellation will receive. Su Hayek and Seo Ho Seo asked about the penalty for the co-star. Cole said that even in the community, he didn't see any positive comments about increasing ownership percentage. He explained that there is a high probability that the increase in the percentage is beneficial for the constellation. He said that, however, none of the constellations used pre-launch support. He asked if that meant they were also facing a fine. He said that the fact that they don't use advanced support, even knowing that it will increase the percentage of ownership, means that the penalty is much greater than the benefit. In his mind's eye, the image of a huge man with a grin appeared, in front of which many small people were climbing a mountain of rubble. Su Hayek thought about what it meant that his support constellation had suffered more than him. 
Cole said he doesn't know why his co-stars used the support, but he thinks they should thank him too. Cupping his hands, Seo Ho Seo thanked Su Hayek and said that no matter how much he said, it wouldn't be enough. Seo Ha Rin said with a smile that she was very grateful to him. Looking up at the sky, Seo Ho Seo thanked support constellation Su Hayek. Seo Ha Rin raised her head to the sky and also thanked the constellation. Ha Hee Young apologized for interrupting and said that they were kind of done here. She suggested moving on. Cole said the boss was caught. He asked if it would be better to rest a little longer. Ha Hee Young said it was because of the Providence skill that was awakened after they killed the king. She said she didn't know if it was a hidden mission or not, but they might get something. With a loud laugh, Seo Ho Seo said not to worry about him. He said that he now has the tiger blood skill and his stats have gone up a lot. Su Hayek raised the neutralizer in his hand and asked with a worried look if it would swell to the size of a were-tiger with the skill level up. Showing off his back muscles, Seo Ho Seo gave a thumbs up and said with a smile that it was quite good. Su Hayek thought about how he was a fan of the gym. He asked Ha Hee Young where they should go. She said she'd seen a place like a cave, but she didn't know exactly where it was and they'd have to look. The main character thought about how long it would take. With an evil grin, Seo Ho Seo said that he thought he knew where it was. He pointed his finger at the forest and said that ever since he got the tiger blood skill, he could smell a foul smell coming from there. He supposed they should go there. Ha Hee Young and Su Hayek turned to each other and nodded. Smiling, Ha Hee Young said that they would go in that direction. Seo Ha Rin asked if they thought the forest was getting brighter. She noticed that there were even rabbits. A white rabbit with a horn on its forehead was chewing something. Dobby asked if he could eat it. Smiling, Ha Hee Young glanced at Seo Ha Rin and thought that she was cheering up. She suggested that it was Seo Ho Seo's influence. Seo Ho Seo, Seo Ha Rin, and Dobby walk along, smiling happily. When Seo Ho Seo noticed the cave entrance, he asked if it was the right place for them. Cole said it looked like a tiger cave. Seo Ho Seo asked why there was an unpleasant smell coming out of tiger cave if this was their home. Su Hayek replied in surprise that he didn't know, and he didn't feel anything. He suggested we go in and check it out first. Seo Ho Seo behind him nodded with a smile. They readied their weapons for battle. Su Hayek and his group entered the cave. The red dialogue boxes say, Conqueror So Ho So has inherited the blood of the king. A deserted forest. Tiger and bear secret room added to the seventh floor secret room of the first desolate forest zone. Ha Hee Young's first life, seventh floor, desolate forest. Seo Ho Seo stands with a sword in his hands, frowning. Seo Ha Rin hides behind him. It asks you to repeat it again. The four conquerors stand in front of him. Behind them is the king of were tigers and four were tigers. They ask Seo Ho Seo if he offers to let them die. They shouted that they had already made a sacrifice, but the were tigers were still chasing them, and he couldn't take the priestess and escape. Seo Ha Rin's hand was shaking, and Seo Ho Seo took her hand. Turning around, he smiled and told her to trust her dad. One of the conquerors cursed, asking how they should fight the king. He demanded that the priestess be turned over to the were tigers. He shouted that she was already exhausted anyway. Seo Ho Seo interrupted him by chopping off his arm with a swing of his sword. The boy screamed, and Seo Ho Seo found himself right in front of the lick, who was holding an arrow in her hand in fright. He said with a grim face that they could now sacrifice that armless guy. The archer screamed, trembling. Another guy charged at Seo Ho Seo with a sword, shouting that he was crazy for attacking his fellow soldier. Another guy attacking him asked if he thought he could defeat them alone. With two quick movements, Seo Ho Seo slashed at them with his sword. The archer drew her bow and shouted at him not to approach, calling him a murderer. Running up to her, he impaled her with his sword, and she dropped the bow and arrow from her hands. Seo Ho Seo frowned, his face bulging with veins. He asked them that they considered themselves saints after trying to sacrifice his daughter. There are four bodies lying in front of the king. The king says, ma'am. Seo Ho Seo, standing in front of him, asked if that wasn't enough. Smiling, he asked the tearful Seo Ha Rin if she remembered the protection spell he bought her and whether she had it or not. She tearfully said that she couldn't be serious. Seo Ho Seo smiled and told her to activate it and close her eyes for a while. He said he loved her very much. Seo Ha Rin closed her eyes, gritting her teeth, and tears came out of her eye. Seo Ho Seo, his back to the king, exhaled and asked if he was waiting because his subordinates were like children to him. He asked him to wait a little longer. Seo Ho Seo put his hand on Seo Ha Rin's cheek, telling her not to cry. The king swung a paw behind Seo Ho Seo. He tearfully apologized for not being able to defend her to the end. He told Seo Ha Rin to go upstairs. Blood spurted out. The dialogue boxes say, you made a sacrifice that satisfied the king. The were tigers aren't going to attack anymore. Ha Hee Young's second life, seventh floor. Su Hayek and his group walk along the stone wall. Su Hayek leaned over to Ha Hee Young and asked if it was okay for him to have 21% ownership. She asked in surprise about the fact that the constellation had absorbed as much as 20%. 
Su Hayek looked down and said that it had absorbed 1% for the neutralizer. She said that it wouldn't be a problem for the current Su Hayek and he could lower it later. She added that he would find out all the details in the waiting room. Agreeing, the protagonist asked if this cave was a secret mission. She whispered back that it was a secret room like the one he'd found on the second floor. She added that there is no need to fight here. Turning to her, he asked if they had defeated the king in their first life. Closing her eyes and frowning, Ha Hee Young said not to remind me. She said that half of her team had died, and that was when she clearly sensed his abilities. Su Hayek asked in surprise if it was on the sixth floor. Ha Hee Young replied that on the sixth floor, they were busy casting spells left and right and running away from the queen while they were being covered. With a nervous chuckle, Su Hayek said that he felt a pang of guilt. He asked what would happen if a sacrifice was made. He remembered the king of the were tigers. Ha Hee Young replied that out of six people, only one will be able to survive and climb higher. She explained that there's a catch in the seventh floor because initially it's not too difficult to face the king and although there are other were tigers, ultimately it's a six versus one battle. Raising his head, Su Hayek said that running away wouldn't solve anything. Ha Hee Young told him that it didn't mean that he made the wrong decision. Raising an eyebrow, she smiled and said it was a natural choice when you didn't know how things would end. Su Hayek thought of Seo Ho Seo turning into the king of were tigers. He thought that even if he had gone back in time, he probably would have done the same. He clenched the mace in his hand. Ha Hee Young said that Su Hayek didn't have a shield before, and maybe that's why it was inconvenient for him to fight. He asked about the fact that he didn't use a shield. She said that he was faster then, and could do more attacks. He thought about his battle tactics. For the sake of safety, he hid behind a shield, making mostly counterattacks. Ha Hee Young suggested that he try it without the shield. She added that she did not insist. Frowning thoughtfully, he said he'd think about it. He asked what weapons he used most often in his previous life. Raising her head, she replied that he used the axe the longest, although the weapon changed from time to time, but the axe was with him even on the 94th floor. Su Hayek asked, an axe. Ha Hee Young said that for some reason, he got upset every time he used it. He thanked her. Ha Hee Young shouted for everyone to look in his direction. Next to him, a sword that glowed yellow was stuck into the stone. Seo Ho Seo shouted that it was definitely his. The dialogue box described the Tiger King's one-and-a-half-handed sword, the sword that the tiger wanted to use when it became a human. The sword reveals its true value only in the hands of the Tiger King. Seo Ho Seo smiled and asked him if he thought so. Su Hayek exclaimed that he was just made for Seo Ho Seo. Seo Ho Seo happily pressed his face to the sword and asked if he really could take it back. Su Hayek thought about what a clever idea it was. After sniffing the sword, Seo Ho Seo said that the smell wasn't coming from him. He walked over to the huge rock, sniffing the air. Chuckling, he shouted that this was the place. He began to move the stone with his hands. A purple light could be seen behind the stone. There was a purple magic seal on the ground, surrounded by skulls and bones. On it lay a battle axe. Seo Ho Seo said that he thought so. He noticed that there was some kind of curse here. A round dark object lay on the pillow next to the axe. The dialogue box describes the Bear King's gallbladder. The Bear King regurgitated this bubble when he became a human. It contains the power of the Bear King. The dialogue box described the Bear King's Labrys, a two-sided axe that the Bear King wanted to use when it became human. Labrys is shrouded in the malice of the Bear King. Ha Hee Young said something incomprehensible, and fire appeared in her hand. A ring of fire appeared above the magic seal. The magic seal started to disappear, and Ha Hee Young said that the curse was dispelled and they could enter. She said that Su Hayek's constellation had anticipated the events and helped them, so it was only fair to give both items to Su Hayek. Seo Ho Seo and Seo Ha Rin nodded with a smile. Cole said he agreed. Su Hayek offered to spend the rest of his time hunting. Dobby asked me to take him with me. The dialogue box congratulated you on conquering the seventh floor of the tower and informed you that the remaining time was up. The next dialogue box announced the calculation of the reward. The dialogue box says, total score, 44,798 points. Move to the waiting room. Dobby sleeps on the bed in the waiting room. Su Hayek is sitting at the table with his arms folded, his face serious. He asked if that was enough. The dialogue box says, would you like to register? With a smile, Su Hayek announced that it was time to register for the strategy guide. The dialogue box reported that the entry about the strategy of conquering the seventh floor was successfully entered. The dialogue box describes the ordering of the support system, which the main character posted to the community. Other people's comments are written in black dialogue boxes, asking what if the support constellation doesn't help anymore so as not to get hurt even more. Another person asked if anyone had received any support from constellation at all. Su Hayek thought back to how Ha Hee Young had told him to upload a post about conquering a floor to boost his image. 
He looked at the dialog box and asked if it would definitely help him maintain his image. He noted that the comments exploded. Dobby, getting off the bed, called out the main character's name. Sue Hayek responded, covering his mouth with his hand as he noted in surprise that he had just called out his name. Dobby said it was true and called him by his first name again. Wiping away his tears, Sue Hayek said that he can't believe he called out his name and he's moved. He said he thought Dobby was getting fatter and his clothes looked too tight for him. Dobby protested that he wasn't getting fat and he was just the same as he was. Sue Hayek gave up and asked why he called him. Dobby shouted indignantly that he was tired of bread and hungry. While flipping through the dialogue box, Sue Hayek said that he would have to spend the points he earned on other dishes. Closing his eyes, he shouted that it wasn't a problem and he would just catch one more enemy. He asked Dobby what he wanted to eat. Dobby spun around and shouted that he wanted meat. Sue Hayek agreed, and two plates of meat and vegetables appeared on the table. The dialogue box described boneless steak, boneless earth steak. It will delight with the most delicate taste. Sitting at the table, Dobby happily held up his fork and knife and thanked the protagonist. They're sitting next to each other, munching on a steak. Sue Hayek assumed that it was airlifted straight from the ground. Looking up, he thought that the taste made him want to go straight home. He slapped himself in the face and thought that he shouldn't let up. He decided to summon his willpower. On the dialogue box as it says, the rest of the conquerors still failed to conquer the seventh floor. Remaining time before moving to the eighth floor, no. The eighth floor of the challenge tower is focused on the participation of the entire group of conquerors. You'll have to wait. Remaining time before moving to the eighth floor, no. Enjoy your vacation. Sue Hayek sat down on the bed. He said that there was probably still plenty of time before moving to the eighth floor, but he needed to make some preparations first. He crossed his arms over his chest. He asked Ha Hyun what things to watch out for on the 8th floor and what things to watch out for. She smiled and said he could handle it himself. Su Hayek asked if they wouldn't be together. Ha Hyun took a sip from her mug. She said that even though everyone participated, it was more like an individual competition and she had nothing to advise him. Su Hayek thought about the fact that the whole team is participating, but individually. He suggested that a survival game where everyone is on their own is something like a battle royale. Ha Hee-young said that they wouldn't even have to fight and they could lower the ownership percentage right now. Su Hayek agreed thoughtfully. He asked how many percent of the limited stats could be restored on a single floor. She said that the average is 5%, but it depends on the activity of the employee and some have more and some have less. Smiling, the protagonist said that by the 10th floor, they would more or less return to normal. She scratched her head, said something about the 8th and 10th floors, and concluded that they would probably recover by the 11th floor. She explained that it's actually for the best for Sue Hayek. She asked if he knew that the higher the stats, the harder it was to improve them. Ha Hee-young said that with the stat restriction, more points are accumulated to increase them, and once he removes the restriction, he will become stronger than he is now. Scratching his head, Sue Hayek said that it would be better to get rid of the ownership percentage right away. The dialog box asked if he wanted to spend 20% of his possession to limit 20% of his stats. It explained that the characteristics will gradually recover with the increase of the floor. Sue Hayek said, yes. The dialog box says, Conqueror Sue Hayek has limited 20% of his stats by spending 20% of his power. Final ownership percentage, 1.09%. The main character was surrounded by small blue lights. Waving his fist, Su Hayek noticed that it felt worse than he expected. Ha Hee Young asked if he liked the axe. He replied that he didn't know yet and he needed to fight with it at least once to understand. She told him to test it on the ninth floor and asked if he had swallowed any more gallbladders. Su Hayek glanced at the gallbladder on the table and replied that he had left it for dessert after lunch and would eat it when he talked to her. He asked her if he would turn into a bear like Seo Ho Seo if he ate it. Ha Hee-young told him not to worry and explained that he became like this because he swallowed fresh blood and Su Hayek has a refined pill. Letting out a sigh of relief, Su Hayek said that he shouldn't have worried. Ha Hee-young asked if he had any more questions. She told him to swallow the gallbladder and tell her about the effect later. Su Hayek agreed and said his goodbyes. The dialogue box described the Bear King's gallbladder. The Bear King regurgitated this bubble when he became a human. It contains the power of the Bear King. The main character looked at him with disgust. He held out his hand and said in a trembling voice that he needed to endure and that they say that good medicine is never sweet. He shouted with a frightened face that he would just swallow it. He popped the balloon into his mouth. The red dialogue boxes say, You have consumed the gallbladder of the Bear King. Your body is filled with the power of the Bear King. Obtain the fourth level Bear's blood skill. The status of the Conqueror is confirmed. 
the percentage of absorption is significantly increased. Strength, agility, and stamina are greatly increased. Obtain the seventh level bare blood skill. Su Hayek folded his hands in front of him, enveloped in a purple aura. The dialogue box says, Huan Su Hayek, Earthling, C66432. Title, Master Wherever You Go. Affiliation, None. Support Constellation, The First Class Thunder Iron Constellation. Ownership Percentage, 1.09% out of 100%. Strength, 77.2 minus 18. Agility, 71.2 minus 16. Stamina, 73.7 minus 17. Magic, 42.8 minus 11. Skills, 5th level Lightning Essence, 9th level Sixth Sense, 19th level Tenacity, 7th level Bear Blood. With a smile, Su Hayek noticed that 5% of the domain had already recovered. Dobby, glistening with cleanliness, was looking at him with a towel around his neck. The main character noted that he had already washed. Dobby frowned in displeasure and shouted about the stink of the place and told him to take a bath at least once in a while. Su Hayek smiled furiously. Dobby lay down on the bed under the covers and turned away, telling him to wash up. He announced that he was going to bed. Smiling nervously, Su Hayek clenched his fist in annoyance and hit him on the head. Standing with his back to Dobby, who had several bumps on his head from the blows, he thought that he had spoiled him too much. Su Hayek noticed that he had just received the bare blood skill, and he was already level 7. He asked what kind of skill it was. He assumed it was something like tiger blood, so he decided to ask Sio Ho Sio around. He asked Sio Ho Sio, who was eating bread, if he had figured out what the tiger blood skill was. He replied with a smile that he didn't really understand it himself, and he had a feeling that he just increased his strength. Su Hayek thanked him and wished him luck. Sio Ho Sio wished him the same. Su Hayek said it wasn't too bad when the power overwhelmed the body, but he was confused about whether he would become a bear. He picked up an axe that was wrapped in a black aura. Picking it up, he decided to swing the axe, testing it out at the same time. The dialogue box described the Bear King's Labrys, a two-sided axe that the Bear King wanted to use when he became a human. Labrys is shrouded in the malice of the Bear King. He swung the axe wrapped in electricity. He noticed that the axe was noticeably lighter and it seemed to him that something flashed. He swung the axe twice more. Looking at the electric shrouded axe, Su Hayek said that it fit perfectly in his hand and it's much better than a mace. Dobby sat up in bed, wiping his eyes, and called out to him in disgust that he was insensitive and stank. Su Hayek apologized and said that there was something to check out and he got carried away. He said he was on his way to bathe. Dobby put his head down on the pillow and told him to be careful because he wasn't alone. Su Hayek thought with a smirk that 20% stat limit wasn't a problem for him. Looking ahead confidently, he thought that no matter what was waiting for him on the next floor, he was confident that he could beat everyone. The axe in his hand was shrouded in electricity. The dialogue box announced that the time was up and reported moving to the 8th floor of the challenge tower. The red dialogue boxes say, The Bear King's malice that envelops the Bear King's lab resonates with the bear's blood. The power gained from the bear's blood is greatly increased. Hidden mission evil of the Bear King is launched. A dialogue box greeted on the 8th floor of the Tower of Trials in the Grab and Save Thief's room. Conquerors of the 8th floor can choose to capture or save. If both choose capture, the conquerors begin the fight. Round Gladiator Arena. The losing side dies, and the winning side loses two of the highest level skills. If A chooses grab, B chooses save, then A grabs one random skill from the skill zone by B. If both choose to save, everyone goes to the ninth floor. The circular gladiator arena is surrounded by water. First, ranked Su Hayek and third ranked Alexi Braham stepped onto the eighth floor. Remaining time, 59 minutes 59 seconds. Su Hayek and Alexi appeared in the arena, shrouded in blue light. Looking back and stepping forward, Su Hayek noticed that Dobby was gone again. I didn't realize that he was probably sprawled out on the bed, asleep. He pictured Dobby slumped over the edge of the bed, asleep. He slapped his cheek and told himself to concentrate, thinking that this wasn't the time to think about Dobby. Looking at the girl with the big axe in her hand, he realized that it was the third place in the ranking, Alexi Braham. She has long blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail and light blue eyes. Sue Hayek noticed that she gave off an unusual aura. He noticed that she was also using Labrys. He thought that just as Ha He Young had said, this level was simple. He thought that, from the position of the strongest, he could just say that he would choose capture. He imagined a huge man with a sack in his hand, laughing at a small man, leaning on the ground with his hands in frustration. Su Hayek wondered who would want to get involved in a scam that could cost them their lives. Alexi went up to him. She smiled, noted that he was Korean, and said it was nice to meet him. Su Hayek asked with a smile if she was from Russia. She replied that it was true, and said that she wanted to meet him at least once. She said that now she knows which person won the first place. Su Hayek thought about how to convince her. He suggested that, 
First of all, it is necessary to explain the difference in strength. He imagined himself standing on top of a cliff next to the number one, and Alexei looking down at him from below, standing next to the number three. Su Hayek started to speak with a smile, but she interrupted him and said that she would choose capture. Irritated, he tried to speak again, but she repeated that she would choose capture. He opened his eyes furiously and shouted that he was crazy. With an awkward smile, he asked her to listen and began to talk about his characteristics. Alexei confidently repeated that she would choose capture. Stopping her with a wave of his hand, he asked irritably if she could at least listen to him. She replied that she knew he was stronger but would still choose capture. Su Hayek scratched the back of his head and said that she decided to make things difficult. Frowning, he thought that after showing off his physical strength, he was going to rely on his sixth sense for the choice, but he didn't expect the dialogue to reach a dead end. He thought that if both of them didn't choose save, they would have to choose capture. He decided to think about which skill was the worst to lose. Su Hayek thought about how the highest level of skills was perseverance and battle concentration. Su Hayek gritted his teeth. He thought about whether the level raised by the artifact counted. As he closed his eyes, he thought that if it counted, the worst thing would be to lose perseverance and combat concentration, and if it didn't, then combat concentration and either perseverance or a sixth sense. He said quietly that he didn't want to lose either. He thought hard about the fact that if he chose save and the opponent chose capture, then he would lose the random skill. When he opened his eyes, he thought that he definitely needed to avoid having his lightning essence taken away. Su Hayek wondered why she was willing to fight even though she knew the difference in strength. Alexei looked at him with a confident smile. He asked her why she insisted on the capture. She didn't answer. He asked her if she wanted to see how he would react to her words about the capture and she would choose to keep it. Alexei replied that this was not the case. Spreading out his hands, Su Hayek asked what the reason was since she would die if she fought him. She replied that she knew, but his energy was different from the others. He asked her why she was doing this, even though she knew she was going to die. Alexei leaned her hands on her axe and said with a smile that she hated when people tried to take something away from her. She explained that the Russians do not run away from the battle, and it is better to take them themselves than to let them rob themselves. Su Hayek wondered if that wasn't something worth talking about in a situation like this. He grabbed his axe and said that then he wouldn't have to persuade her anymore. He told her to do whatever she wanted, but stopped. Su Hayek thought about how he felt like he had left something out. His gut tells him not to choose capture. He decided to analyze the situation once more since he arrived at the 8th floor. The dialogue boxes say, Welcome to the 8th floor of the Tower of Trials, the grab and save thief's room. Conquerors of the 8th floor can choose to capture or save. Su Hayek recalls how they appeared in the arena. He thought about why it was a thief's room and how it could be called just grab and keep. He noticed that Alexei's face looked somehow unnatural, like a robot's. Su Hayek recalled the words of the girl and thought that her manner of speech also sounded clumsy. With a smile, he realized that there was a thief in this room right now. He asked where he was hiding. He noted that he does not feel someone else's presence at all. Looking around the arena, he assumed that this entire space was fake and so he couldn't sense it. Frowning, Su Hayek decided that the easiest way to test would be the lightning essence. Lightning appeared in his hand. With a cry, he raised his hand up, and it sparked with lightning. He threw a lightning bolt into the ground, shouting for the thief to die. Lightning struck the ground with a bright flash. A small black creature with red eyes jumped out of the ground. After discovering it, Su Hayek grabbed the creature with his hand. The creature struggled against his fist, screaming. Su Hayek irritably shouted at him to die at last, striking him with lightning once more. The illusion around him shattered, and a appeared in front of him, shouting at him to choose preservation. She opened her mouth in surprise. The dialogue boxes say, Conqueror Su Hayek has destroyed the Gremlin Skill Thief. You have recognized the secret mission Gremlin Skill Thief, the 8th floor challenge is gone. She saw Su Hayek floating in the air with a gremlin in his hand. The dialogue box says, You have conquered the 8th floor of the Tower of Trials, grab and save the thief's room. Calculating the reward, Su Hayek greeted him with a smile. She greeted him in surprise. Cursing, she shouted something she should have noticed right away. Stomping her foot viciously, she screamed about why she hadn't thought of that. After landing, Su Hayek said that she would have figured it out soon enough and said goodbye. Smiling, Alexei thanked him and said that thanks to him she earned more points. She said her goodbyes and a blue light enveloped them. The red dialogue boxes say, Exceptional Sixth Sense. Gained a sixth sense of the tenth level. Random skill selection. Obtained sixth level lightning essence and first level imitation. Conqueror Su Hayek broke through the eighth floor. Stats limited to percent ownership recovered by 5.2%. Current stat limit, 14.8%. On a city street, a huge screen on the building shows the news. The screen says, rating update. Su Hayek retains the top spot. 
The host reports on urgent news, this Friday, at 1 o'clock in the morning, the rating of the test tower located in the Pacific Ocean was updated. She said that Sue Hayek from the Republic of Korea was once again ranked first in the table. The tower features portraits of Sue Hayek, Ha Hee-young, Seo Ho Seo and Seo Ha Rin. The host said that the second, fourth and sixth places were also occupied by citizens of the Republic of Korea, Ha Hee-young, Seo Ho Seo and Seo Ha Rin. She said that, thanks to the relentless work of Earthlings, Earth held the top spot among the four planets even on the eighth floor of Zone C-66432. Ha Hee Young points his staff and sets the gremlin on fire. The host said that scientists around the world are showing great interest in the Tower of Tests, as well as other intelligent life forms of the universe, but so far they have not been able to achieve real results. Cole stands tensely in the crumbling illusion of the eighth floor. The host said that, because of the mention of the green zone and a mysterious voice that covered the entire planet, the theory of an alien invasion is gaining momentum, and religious sects, as expected, insist on God's punishment. Seo Ho Seo happily raised his hand in the air, while Seo Ha Rin calmly looked to the side. Su Hayek hangs in the air with a gremlin in his hands amid the crumbling illusion of the eighth floor. The host said that the situation is still unclear at the moment, and thanks to Su Hayek's efforts, Earth once again retains the top spot. The screen shows a smiling Su Hayek holding a gremlin. Chat users are surprised and happy that their country won first, second, fourth, and sixth places. At the same time, in the waiting room of the test tower, Su Hayek eats meat. The dialog box says, Juan Su Hayek, Earthling, C66432. Title, Master Wherever You Go. Affiliation, None. Support Constellation, The First Class Thunder Iron Constellation. Ownership Percentage, 1.09% out of 100%. Strength, 81.7 minus 14. Dexterity, 75.2 minus 14. Stamina, 77.8 minus 13. Magic, 46.5 minus 8. Skills, 6th level Lightning Essence, 10th level 6th Sense, 1st level Imitation. Su Hayek noted that the stats limited by the percentage of proficiency had recovered by about 5%, and the imitation skill had appeared. He assumed that he got it when he caught a skill thief. He thought that he was lucky because it was a random skill. He figured that if he lost a random skill on the 8th floor, it would probably be Lightning Essence. He remembered a woman who said that she hated it when people tried to take something away from her, and that the Russians would not be happy with the battle and would rather take it themselves than let them rob themselves. Su Hayek noticed the new message. Cole, naked and with a towel draped over his shoulders, was glad that everyone was still alive. He asked if anyone was hurt. Seo Ho Seo laughed and said that he had tiger blood and the sword of the were-tiger king, so it would be difficult for him to die. He said he was perfectly fine. Showing off his biceps, he said that he even gained the iron shield technique skill and became even stronger. Cole let out a frustrated sigh, putting a hand to his face and said that he had lost one skill. He said it wasn't exactly important, thankfully. Seo Ha Rin said that she and her opponent both chose to save, so they just moved on. After thinking about it, Seo Ho Seo said that his opponent persisted for 20 minutes that he would choose capture, but ultimately chose save. Seo Ha Rin frowned as she said that her opponent kept repeating that he was choosing save. She said that she was sorry, but she also chose to save. Smiling, Su Hayek gave a thumbs up and told Seo Ha Rin that she had held up well. He said that as a priestess, it was best for her not to tempt fate. With a smile, Seo Ho Seo agreed and said that even if she didn't get stronger, he and Su Hayek would protect her. She thanked them irritably and declined. She said that she had to get stronger too, otherwise she wouldn't pass through the private floor. With an awkward chuckle, Su Hayek scratched the back of his head and agreed. Seo Ho Seo let out a tear as he said that his Seo Ha Rin is already so grown up. He asked Su Hayek how he was doing. Holding up two fingers, he replied that, in fact, at this stage, you need to catch a gremlin a skill thief using illusion magic. He said he understood it and got both skill and points. Slamming his fist into the palm of his hand, Cole said that he now realized that the entire community was on its toes. Su Hayek opened the community in surprise. In the first message, a person swore at Suki Lafren at 8321 places for saying he would choose to save. In the second message, someone said that they both chose capture and his hands are still shaking. He added that they did not lie when they said that they would have to kill. In the third message, someone bragged about getting a great skill. In the fourth message, someone said that it was all an illusion and urged to stop fighting with each other. In the fifth message, someone said that they both chose capture and started fighting, but in the course of the battle, the mage accidentally caught a skill thief. In the last message, someone said that liars should be held accountable for what they did, referring to Lee just saying at 182,731. Su Hayek closed his eyes, put his hand on the table, and said that just like Cole said, the community is in chaos. 
He said that the comments made him dizzy and that he was going to take a break. Seo Ho Seo wished him luck. Exhaling, Su Hayek fell on the bed. Dobby happily rushed over to his plate, glad that all of his food was now his. Su Hayek said that, come to think of it, Ha Hee Young should have sent a message by now. He asked why he was still missing. He thought about how she wanted him to try to kill a human. He thought that if she didn't, then there was no reason for her to cut off contact with him. He wondered if he would have been able to survive this in his right mind if he really had to kill a man. He imagined hitting someone with a long weapon with tears in his eyes. Su Hayek wondered if he would be able to make the same decisions for her future if they were reversed. He imagined them standing with their backs to each other in a blue-violet space. Su Hayek silently glanced at the dialogue box. He told her that he had caught a skill thief. Ha Hee Young didn't answer. Exhaling, he said that he knew she wouldn't answer and decided to change the subject. Folding his arms across his chest, he asked what things to look out for on the ninth floor. Ha Hee Young is sitting on the bed with his hands folded in his lap. She said that even if she did, it wouldn't make any difference. She explained that this is the command floor, where you need to break through the maze, and she herself does not know how to get out of it. Su Hayek replied that it was impossible to remember all the floors ideally. He asked about the fact that if we are talking about a maze, then we will need to act as quickly as possible. She replied that it was true, and the team should find a way out. Ha Hee Young said that they say there is a secret room on the floor, but she doesn't know if it will be possible to find it. She told him that as long as they had any luck, they could make it to the exit. She told him not to worry too much and use the 10th floor to test his axe. He agreed, and with a smile and a glance at the mace in his hand, said that he would take a mace as well, just in case. He explained that the axe might not be suitable for him. Ha Hee Young told him to get some rest because there wasn't much time left. Smiling, Su Hayek agreed and told her to rest as well. He added that they would see each other on the ninth floor. The dialogue box says that the ninth floor is one hour and four minutes away. Sitting on the bed, the main character said that he would be able to rest for an hour. Closing his eyes, he decided to take a nap. The dialogue box says, Welcome to the ninth floor of the Tower of Trials in the Labyrinth of Kashiatum. In the allotted time, find a way out of the Kashiatum maze. The remaining time is eight hours. Su Hayek and his group are standing in front of a huge door in a stone dungeon. Cole asked what floor it was this time. Seo Ho Seo said that he didn't know why, but the atmosphere reminded him of the training floor. The dialogue box says, the current location is the exit from the Kasyatam maze. Su Hayek thought that just like Ha Hee Young said, it was a maze. He decided that to get out of the maze, it was better to follow one wall because it would make it easier to remember the way. The dialogue box warned you about moving to the center of the maze. They were dragged through the maze. Noticing that they were moving deeper into the maze without moving, they realized that they were being drawn into the maze. Opening his eyes wide, Su Hayek decided to memorize the entire journey right away. Memorizing the turns, he found an orc standing in front of them. Deciding to dodge, Su Hayek tried to move his legs but noticed that his body wasn't moving. As they continued to rapidly approach the orc, they realized that they were going to crash into it. Su Hayek was surprised to find that they had passed through the orc. He raised an eyebrow. Su Hayek frowned as he tried to figure out where they were now. He tried to remember the turns and realized that he couldn't because the orc had distracted him. They continued to move rapidly deeper into the maze. They stopped in a room with stone chairs. Seo Ha Rin held her mouth with her hand and said that she was going to be sick. Seo Ho Seo patted her on the back, asking if she was okay. Dobby threw up rainbow vomit on the floor. Su Hayek said that even this can make you feel sick. Glancing at his companions, he noticed that everyone was exhausted pretty quickly. He said they needed to get out of here before time ran out and said they would take a quick break and then move on immediately. Cole said with a smile that he thought there was another way. Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young looked at him questioningly. Pointing a finger at his head, he said that he had an amazing memory. He explained that he easily remembers something after seeing it only once and he clearly remembered all the way to the specified exit. He told them to follow him, and then they could save their strength. Seo Ho Seo gave a thumbs up and said that he supported the idea. When he asked if he really had such a great memory, he said that he was just like a guide. Laughing, he added that he was lucky to have met such wonderful companions. Turning around, Su Hayek thought that Cole wasn't the type to throw words around, so he should be trusted. He thought about the endurance of their team. Then he opened his eyes wide and wondered if they should go straight to the exit. He asked Cole if he could remember the way to the exit if they took a different route now. Raising his eyebrows, he said he could, and asked why. Su Hayek said that he didn't think they needed to go to the exit so quickly since they already knew the way. He said it would be a good idea to look for a secret mission or a hidden room. Cole gave a thumbs up and said that this idea was even better, as expected from Su Hayek. Seo Ho Seo nodded approvingly. Dobby said with admiring eyes that Su Hayek was cool. Smiling, Su Hayek said that then their goal would now be to search for a secret mission or hidden room. Seo Ho Seo said with a smile, go ahead. 
Siyoha Rin happily supported him with a raised hand. Su Hayek told Cole that he was counting on his memory. Cole nodded with a smile and said he could count on him. Su Hayek turned to Dobby. He turned around in surprise, asking if he had called him. The main character with a stony expression told him to lead them. Dobby tilted his head in surprise and walked forward. Su Hayek said that he didn't mean that he would lead them, but only asked him to be their guide because he has a good sense of smell. He asked him how long he'd been listening to him so well. Dobby turned around in disgust and said that he should have said so right away. Su Hayek laughed nervously as he scratched the back of his head and apologized. Dobby pointed to the side and said he thought they should go there. Su Hayek asked if there was anything there, and Dobby said he thought so. Dobby happily shouted that he thought so because it smelled like Su Hayek's feet. Su Hayek stopped him with his hand. In front of them was a huge minotaur with a mace wrapped in a red aura. They prepared for battle, and Su Hayek thought that was what he thought. Sio Ho Sio, Sio Ha Rin, and Cole charged with a battle cry, but Su Hayek stopped them. Sio Ho Sio looked at him questioningly, and Su Hayek said that he would try to deal with him himself. Sio Ho Sio asked if it wouldn't be easier if they all attacked together. The main character gripped his axe tightly and said that he wanted to try out his new axe. Frowning, Sio Ho Sio said that it was the first time he had seen such a monster and asked if it would definitely be fine. Su Hayek replied that he didn't think he could lose. He asked them to help him if they thought he was in danger. He took out a mace from behind his back. Sio Ho Sio agreed with a grin because it's about Su Hayek. He told him to let him know if he thought he couldn't handle it. Su Hayek turned around and agreed with a smile. He ran forward towards the Minotaur, the axe and mace in his hands shrouded in electricity. The Minotaur growled angrily. With a loud roar, he swung the mace at Su Hayek. Su Hayek swung his axe, but their weapons hit each other, flashing a bright blue flash. Jumping back, Su Hayek cursed. Frowning, he thought about how he felt like something was missing. He wondered if it was because of the mace or because he wasn't using a shield. Su Hayek glanced at the axe and mace in his hands. He decided that since he was trying to test this axe in battle, he should try to fight only with it. He placed his mace on the ground. The Minotaur swung its mace again, growling loudly. Su Hayek grabbed his axe with both hands. He swung his mace, deflecting the Minotaur's attack. Su Hayek leapt forward, swinging his axe. He shouted for the Minotaur to die. He swung his axe at the Minotaur's torso, and it let out a heavy growl. The Minotaur fell to the ground in front of the main character. Looking at it, Su Hayek asked if that was all. He smiled and put his hand on his belt. Su Hayek suggested that we continue on our way. He turned around when he heard a delighted exclamation. In front of him stood his companions, amazed at what they saw. Sio Ho Sio asked him how he did it. Su Hayek replied that he fought as usual, but he really had a feeling that the axe would fit him perfectly. Sio Ho Sio retorted in surprise and said that everything was on a completely different level right now. Dobby admiringly told him that he really was on a different level. Cole agreed and said that everything was much more concise and organic than before. He added that you can even say that these were his best shots. Sio Ho Sio agreed and said that Cole chose his words well. Sio Ha Rin nodded silently. Su Hayek scratched his head in embarrassment and thanked him. Ha Hee Young said with a smirk that Su Hayek's back must be so beautiful that Sio Ha Rin couldn't take her eyes off. She said that after the battle, they exchanged serious glances. Su Hayek, Sio Ha Rin, and Sio Ho Sio were all surprised. Sio Ho Sio's mind conjured up an image of Su Hayek and Sio Ha Rin happily jumping up and down while holding hands. He cried out in shock. Sio Ha Rin asked irritably what she was talking about. Sio Ho Sio looked at the main character with a fiery gaze. Su Hayek waved his hand awkwardly and said that it wasn't like that. Su Hayek hit the orc with his axe and said, 8. In his other hand was a mace. The orc fell to the ground, and Sio Ho Sio said that last time was much cooler. Turning around, Su Hayek agreed and suggested that he should wield the axe with both hands. Sio Ho Sio asked with a smile if it would be better to switch completely to the two-handed axe. He added that it was a romantic reception. Su Hayek walked up to him and said that he also felt like he was the best fit for him. He added that he thinks he will continue like this for now, since he can't do anything with his mace. Sio Ho Sio said that he understands that giving up something so good isn't easy. Su Hayek looked at Sio Ha Rin in surprise and wondered why she was acting like this all of a sudden. She was looking at him with bright, admiring eyes. Her cheeks were flushed. Su Hayek was shining brightly in her eyes. Ha Hee Young called out to Su Hayek about the mace. When he heard her, he was surprised to think that she had nothing to do with Sio Ha Rin. He thought about what she had said, that Sio Ha Rin was a support priestess known for her heavy temper. He wondered what she meant by hard temper. He imagined Sio Ha Rin breathing furiously with a mace in her hands. Su Hayek thought that she was scarier than he thought. He held out the mace and asked Sio Ha Rin if she wanted to try it. Sio Ha Rin was surprised. Su Hayek said that although she wouldn't be able to use it very often, 
He thought it would be nice if she could defend herself when the enemy was aiming at the rear. He smiled and handed her the electric mace. Looking down, Siyoha Rin said that she would love to take it, but it's not an ordinary mace. She said that she would be embarrassed if she kept it, and suggested that she return it to him when they cleared the ninth floor. Su Hayek replied with a smile that it was fine, and it would be more convenient for him to hold the axe with both hands, so he probably wouldn't use it anymore, and if she wanted to, she could take it for herself. Siyoha Rin wanted to protest. Su Hayek insisted and said that everything was really fine, and he felt that the best weapon for him was a two-handed axe. Siyoha Rin accepted the electric mace from his hands, saying that it was a priceless item. She thanked him sincerely. The main character replied that it was nothing. Siyoha Sio asked if she really needed a melee weapon because she might get hurt. Siyoha Rin replied with a smile that she thought she could do it because it was given to her by Su Hayek. Ha Hee Young snidely said that there was definitely something going on between them. Su Hayek asked her to stop with his palm out. Seo Ha Rin closed her eyes and called out in displeasure. Ha Hee Young smiled smugly. The dialogue box says that there are 6 hours and 47 minutes left. In front of Su Hayek and his group was a group of goblins. Su Hayek thought it was worth testing Seo Ha Rin's fighting power. He told her that he would lure the goblin to her. He told Cole and Ha Hee Young to come to her rescue if they thought it was too dangerous. Seo Ha Rin picked up the mace and agreed, expressing her desire to try it out. Cole agreed, drawing an arrow in his bow. Seo Ho Seo told her to be careful. She told him to be careful, too. Su Hayek told everyone to get this over with quickly. Seo Ho Seo jumped forward, calling out to Su Hayek, who also ran forward. With blows from the axe and sword, they sliced several goblins apart. As they ran to the last goblin, they nodded to each other and ran past him as he swung his sword. The goblin sneered at them as he called them stupid humans and leapt to attack Seo Ha Rin, swinging his sword. She gripped the mace tightly in both hands. Closing her eyes, she swung the mace in front of her, hitting the goblin in the face. The impact sent him flying backwards. Seo Ha Rin opened her eyes in surprise. Seo Ho Seo gritted his teeth, cheered with tears in his eyes and said that he was proud of her. Su Hayek turned around with a blank expression. Seo Ha Rin, while stretching her hands with the mace, said that the mace fits perfectly in her hand. Su Hayek thought that apparently she should have chosen a weapon like his. She smiled and asked him if she could try out some tricks. Su Hayek asked if she wanted to. She said she wanted to. The goblin behind him let out a surprised cry. Behind Seo Ho Seo and Su Hayek, four goblins run to attack, swinging their swords, shouting that the stupid man underestimated them and they will kill him. Seo Ha Rin, who was surrounded by a blue aura, stamped her foot on the ground with a threatening face. She swung the mace in front of her, hitting the goblins. While she was attacking the goblins, two more jumped on top of her, shouting that there were more goblins here. The arrows hit the goblins in mid-flight. Turning around, Seo Ha Rin gave a thumbs up and thanked her for her support. Cole, Ha Hee Young, and Dobby all smiled back. Su Hayek said with a smile that they would definitely not have any problems with the rear from now on. There was a chest behind them. Turning around, the main character asked what it was and said that he had seen it before. Seo Ho Seo asked what he meant by that. He turned to the chest that was shrouded in a purple aura and said that the goblin squad had it from the very beginning. He added that this chest was strange. Seo Ho Seo asked why he was here. As he approached the chest, Su Hayek said that from the outside, it looked like a treasure chest. He asked if it was suspicious. Seo Ho Seo asked if he thought there was a creature masquerading as a treasure chest. Carrying the axe behind him, Su Hayek grinned and said that they would only be able to test it if they cut it in half. He cut the chest in half, and it screamed. His tongue and teeth were visible under the lid. A small box with arms and legs ran out of the chest. Seo Ho Seo asked what it was. Ha Hee Young yelled at Su Hayek that he had to catch him no matter what. Su Hayek turned around in surprise. Then he grinned and, shouting that he would do it, ran off in pursuit of the small chest. He gave a startled cry. Su Hayek runs after the chest with all his strength, his hand outstretched. Frowning, he thought that he was much faster than he thought, and that by catching him, he would lose the rest of the squad members. He thought about how to catch up with him as soon as possible. Su Hayek thought about what skills he had, perseverance, sixth sense, battle concentration, imitation, bare blood, lightning essence. After paying attention to the lightning essence, he guessed that by using it, there was a chance that he could run even faster. He grinned hard. Su Hayek decided to give it a try, and he was enveloped in electricity and his hair turned white. As he approached the fleeing chest, he jumped off the ground and said that he was going to pick up speed and catch it. He reached for the trunk, which turned and screamed. An electric flash flashed on the floor, sending a cloud of dust into the air. Su Hayek is standing in a cloud of dust. Exhaling, he told the small chest in his hand not to even try to escape. Su Hayek's legs began to shake. Panting, he fell forward, one hand on the ground. The electricity around him began to dissipate, and his hair darkened. He was breathing heavily, his eyes bulging. He frowned, and the veins on his face bulged. 
The main character thought about why he was so short of breath. Ha Hee Young ran up to him, asking if he was okay. Su Hayek turned around, breathing heavily. Narrowing his eyes, he said that he suddenly felt extremely tired. He asked me what was wrong with him. Ha Hee Young said with a smile that it was because he had used up his magic and he would feel better in a minute. She asked if he had caught mimicry. He picked up the little mimic in his hand and said that he had caught it. Su Hayek asked what was up with the others. Ha Hee Young said that she had something to discuss with him separately, so she asked the others to search the bodies of the goblins and mimic. Su Hayek wondered if there were any other items besides the mimic that popped out of the treasure chest. Ha Hee Young said she was glad because catching a little mimic isn't easy. She asked him if he had used the lightning essence just now. Su Hayek replied with a smile that he thought it might help, so he gave it a try and it worked. She praised him and said that she was wondering when he was already going to use it in a non-standard way. She said he did a great job. The main character replied that it was all thanks to her. Ha Hee Young held up her hand with a smile and said that she wanted to give him some advice about this floor in case he hadn't figured it out yet. She said that he could use the essence as he wished and he shouldn't push himself too far. Su Hayek pondered the words about not pushing himself too far. He remembered using lightning bolts on the 8th floor. Su Hayek stands in the arena with his lightning bolt hand raised in the air. He thought about how, apart from the battle, he really hadn't even tried to use it in this way. He thought that as soon as he got this power, surely Ha Hee Young, who knows what her potential is, was disappointed. Gripping his axe, Su Hayek decided that in the next waiting room, he would need to think about ways to use the lightning essence. He handed her the mimic and asked if it would be useful later. She replied that he could use it as an inventory. The mimic in the protagonist's hand frowned in displeasure. Looking at the mimic, he asked about the inventory. He Ha Young explained that he can put items and money in it. She said he had played games before and should know that. He said he knew. Su Hayek asked about what kind of monster it is and whether it can really be used like this. She took the mimic from his hand and said that adult mimics are difficult to carry around, and they are too aggressive even for training, and with a small mimic it is possible. She said that with a high-profile scoundrel like this, it should be done like this. The little mimic was waving its arms and shouting in her hand. Ha Hee Young furiously frowned, and the mimic in her hand was engulfed in flames. She said he needed to be knocked out. Trying to remember if it was called a collection chest or a storage chest, she said that she just needed to buy what she said and move the mimic there. She added that it's been a long time and she doesn't remember exactly. Su Hayek smiled awkwardly and said that he understood. He thought it was scary. He said he just needed to wake it up and move it to that chest. Ha Hee Young replied that if he did that, the mimic would no longer get bigger and only he would be able to open it and the mimic would become a real inventory. With a smile, she told him to collect all the trophies he had earned during the battle for now because they would be needed on the 10th floor. Su Hayek asked about the 10th floor. She shook the mimic in front of her and said that the tower would have a rest every 10 floors where you could even sell items. Su Hayek lowered his eyes thoughtfully and noted that this was why she said there wouldn't be a battle. He asked if he would get achievement points in return if he sold the items. She replied that everything was correct and although the price ratio compared to the purchase is bad, it is better than nothing. Ha Hee Young added that it is also possible to get trophies instead of points for inspecting or repairing equipment. Su Hayek thought about inspecting and repairing the equipment. Seo Ho Seo called out to them, asking when they would be back. Ha Hee Young dropped the mimic in Su Hayek's hand and suggested that they stop there for now and go back because they started talking. Su Hayek agreed with a smile. As she left, she said that after the 11th floor, the single floors would start. She told him to start preparing for it because the difficulty level might change again. Frowning, he lowered his eyes thoughtfully and repeated her words. Ha Hee Young started to leave and said that she went. Su Hayek suggested that we go together because he forgot where to go. They were reunited with the rest of the group. Su Hayek asked Dobby if he found anything. Doblin scowled and crossed his arms over his chest, saying that he hadn't found anything, and the goblins were all beggars. Su Hayek thought about the fact that he was also a goblin. Dobby's eyes widened and he asked him if he had caught the mimic. The main character took out a mimic from his pocket and said that he put it in his pocket, and then he will use it as an inventory. Seo Ho Seo said with a frustrated face that there was almost nothing here, just a few gems and worn-out weapons. There were three gems in his hand. He said it was all because the chest was guarded by weak goblins. Seo Ho Seo turned to Su Hayek with a smile and said that if he uses facial expressions, they can test how it works by putting the items in there and taking them away at the same time. Su Hayek agreed with a smile and took out a mimic from his pocket. He opened the mimic, and a purple light was coming from inside it. There was a small black hole inside it, sucking in the air. Seo Ho Seo said that an adult mimic looks strange, but this one is different. He assumed it was because he was still a child. With a smile, Seo Ho Seo held an armful of swords, a shield, and a steel gauntlet in his hands and said that he would put everything in there. Su Hayek wondered if this was too much. The mimic sucked the objects inside itself, and Dobby marveled at the way they fit inside it. 
Su Hayek exclaimed as he realized how it worked. Ha Hee Young asked if it was also there. A few more items went inside the mimic. Cole agreed that it was quite roomy. Seo Ho Seo happily threw a few more items inside the mimic. Seo Ha Rin asked if they were putting too much in there. Seo Ho Seo held up a huge rock above him and said he was wondering if it would fit too. The mimic gave a startled cry. The black sphere inside the mimic flashed evil eyes. With a bright purple flash, the mimic threw out its contents. Seo Ho Seo noted with frustration that he had spat it all out in one go. Seo Ha Rin said that he went too far. He opened his eyes in surprise and asked what the shiny thing was. Su Hayek picked up something shiny from the floor, asking if that was what he was talking about. The dialog box described Little Golden Key, the treasured mimic key. Apparently, it is connected with the Cassiatum Labyrinth. In the main character's hand was a shining golden key. The red dialog boxes say, New Use of Lightning Essence. Level 7 Obtained. Golden Key Obtained. From now on, the secret room will be opened. A dialog box announced that you were connected to the Forum of the Dead. Blue Ghost shouted, asking about what the point was and whether any of them had been following Su Hayek since the first floor. Green Ghost said he was watching. Blue Ghost said that he started watching him from the sixth floor. He asked if he had found a secret room or hidden quest on each floor. Green Ghost replied that everything was correct, and Su Hayek found everything that could be found. Blue Ghost said it was amazing. He asked if he thought he was a regressor or something. He noted that sometimes he doesn't hear Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young talking. Green Ghost laughed, asking if such a thing was even possible. Blue Ghost frowned and said that even if Ha Hee Young could see the future, there was still no logic to it. He said he had heard that he was alone on the lower floors and acted without her. Green Ghost adjusted his glasses with a grin and asked him if he had found everything on the sixth floor thanks to Ha Hee Young's foresight skill. He said it was all because of good deeds, because he saved Dobby and Seo Ho Seo. He concluded that this was good karma. Green Ghost grinned ominously, folding his hands in front of his face and offered to explain it to him again. He said it all started when she saved Dobby. He started telling Su Hayek's story. The dialog box says that there are 5 hours and 54 minutes left. Su Hayek's group found themselves in front of two passageways in the maze. Dobby said he didn't know where to go. Su Hayek, quickly pointing from one passage to another, told him to just listen to his feelings and choose the path. Dobby scratched his chin thoughtfully. He snapped his eyes open and said he thought something was wrong. Su Hayek asked about how he didn't know where to go. He nodded back. Frowning, the protagonist thought that he was relying too much on Dobby. He wondered what they should do now. Su Hayek asked Cole if he remembered the entire journey they had made so far. He nodded and said that he remembered exactly all the way. Closing his eyes thoughtfully, Su Hayek said that it was hard for him to choose between choosing which way to go now or going back. Cole asked if he meant to get out of the maze completely. Su Hayek replied that he was talking about that intersection and assumed that they had lost their way there. They stood in front of the fork in the road, thinking. Su Hayek suggested that they go back to the intersection they passed for now and said that he thought it would be better to make a decision there. Cole and Seo Ho Seo agreed. After a while, they stand in front of two passages in the maze. Dobby, pointing to the left, says they should go there. Pointing at the passage with his finger, Seo Ho Seo frowned and said that this was the left turn they had just taken, but Dobby said that it wasn't him. Dobby protested that it was all right and they really should go left. Su Hayek thoughtfully asked if they didn't think they had found her yet. Seo Ho Seo asked what he was talking about. The main character said in frustration that the secret room might be in the corridor between this intersection and the next and they still haven't found it. Cole snapped his fingers and said he was right and they hadn't checked that passageway. Dobby grudgingly agreed and told the protagonist to think for a while because he was suffering alone. Su Hayek laughed as he scratched his head and apologized. Turning to Seo Ha Rin, he suggested that this time they check everything carefully while they were walking. She raised her fist and agreed with a smile. Su Hayek and his group walked through the maze while looking around. Cole stopped, leaning forward. He asked them if they thought something was strange. Pointing to the stone bricks that make up the dungeon floor, he asked if it didn't seem small to them. Seo Ha Rin said that they all looked the same. Seo Ho Seo said that he didn't see anything strange. Ha Hee Young said that when compared to other bricks, there is a small space next to this brick, even though only a fingernail can fit there. Su Hayek stamped on the brick with his foot and said that if you push it, nothing happens. Cole said Seo Ho Seo walked on it, so there's definitely no chance. Taking the arrow in his hand, he suggested that he should lift the brick through this crack. He inserted the arrow into the slot and Su Hayek noticed that the arrow had entered there. Cole moved the arrow, and Seo Ho Seo noticed that the stone was giving way. Cole lifted the stone with an arrow, and Seo Ha Rin said there was something inside. Seo Ho Seo patted Dobby's head and said that his intuition was right. He praised Dobby with a smile. Dobby puffed out his cheeks proudly and exhaled forcefully, saying that he was smart. Seo Ho Seo was clapping his hands and praising Dobby as he spun around in front of him. Cole said there was a lever under the rock and asked if he should pull it. 
He agreed and said they would sort it out and get out of here. Cole grabbed the lever with his hand and announced that he was lowering it. He pulled a lever, and the dungeon began to shake. The floor in front of Cole began to part, and they scattered. Ha Hee Young yelled for everyone to step aside. Seo Ho Seo screamed in fright. Dobby asked if Su Hayek wanted to kill him. They looked ahead. A passage opened in the floor with a ladder leading down. Ha Hee Young said that she didn't see anything like this happening in the future. Su Hayek reached for the axe on his back and said he would go down. He told the others to stay on guard here. They agreed. The dialogue box says, Welcome to Dog Paradise, hidden room on the ninth floor. Su Hayek, Dobby, and Seo Ho Seo went downstairs with their weapons in their hands. Su Hayek thought about how it was quite dark in here. The dialogue box says, The secret room of paradise for dogs has been opened. Kashiatam hunting dogs were released. Su Hayek heard a dog barking. Turning around, he called out to Ha Hee Young. Holding out her fire-shrouded staff, she shouted, Flash of fire. Su Hayek's entire group went downstairs. The fire from Ha Hee Young's staff moved along the tunnel, illuminating it. There were several angry black dogs in front of them. They noticed that the dogs were running straight at them. The dogs leaped at them, barking. Su Hayek, holding an electric axe with both hands, told everyone to prepare for battle. He told them to hold their formation and that he would attack from the front. Su Hayek shouted at them not to let their guard down. He leaped forward. The dogs leaped forward, snarling with their open mouths. The main character, swinging the axe, thought that he should lighten the load on the rear as much as possible. Su Hayek's axe was shrouded in lightning. He swung it in front of him, slicing through the four dogs in front of him with a bright blue flash. The dogs, wrapped in electricity, flew into the air from the impact, barking. Su Hayek gripped his axe tightly and grinned. He angrily shouted at them to attack him. Swinging the axe at the dogs, the protagonist gritted his teeth. He thought that there were too many of them. The dogs continued to attack him. With a serious face, Su Hayek thought about how he shouldn't be in a hurry. Surrounded by many angry dogs, he decided that he would do what he could. Swinging the axe, he gritted his teeth and charged. Surrounded by the dead dogs, Su Hayek breathes heavily and thinks about how there is no end to them. The dogs continue to attack him. As he stood in the midst of the running dogs, he thought that killing hunting dogs was not an option. He thought about what he should do. His eyes snapped open. Su Hayek thought that he definitely heard a sound coming from the passageway. He realized that a door was opening somewhere here. An iron pipe lies in front of the screen gate. Su Hayek decided that he should close it. Turning around, he called out to Ha Hee Young. She responded by firing fireballs from her staff. Su Hayek runs forward, swinging an electric axe and yelling that he needs to get past them. She asked in surprise, what? Su Hayek, shrouded in lightning, runs past the angry dogs. Jumping off the ground, they swung the axe. The dogs around him flew into the air with blue flashes. Su Hayek noticed a fireball flying near him. Looking at the fireball, he wondered if it was Ha Hee Young Lee's magic. Frowning, he thought that if he went after her, he wouldn't use all his magic like last time. He decided that he was fast enough to catch up with her. Su Hayek runs after Ha Hee Young's spell, fighting off the attacking dogs with his axe. Glancing ahead, he noticed two passageways where crowds of dogs were coming out. He decided to start on the left. Su Hayek swung his hand, which was glowing blue. He held it out, and lightning struck in front of him. He picked up the stick from the floor and decided to close the door before the dogs came running again. He closed the door with a stick. He touched the door with his electric hand, and the door, where the dogs were barking and growling, was covered with electricity. Su Hayek exhaled. Looking contentedly at the dogs behind the electric grid, he said it was over. He ran among the running dogs and said that he needed to get back to the others. Seo Ho Seo gave a thumbs up with a smile and praised Su Hayek for doing a great job. Smiling awkwardly, the protagonist scratched the back of his head. He said that he was able to do it thanks to Ha Hee Young, who cleared the way for him. Seo Ho Seo laughed and told Ha Hee Young that her reception wasn't bad. Seo Ha Rin cupped her hands and said that it was really cool. Ha Hee Young looked away in embarrassment. Su Hayek said with a smile that he was glad no one was crying. Cole told Seo Ho Seo that he also did a good job. Laughing, he said that Ha Hee Young did it all by herself, setting them on fire with her own fire. Ha Hee Young chuckled in embarrassment. She noticed something and turned to the side. She drew their attention to the fact that the dogs they killed are resurrected. The dogs rise to their feet, grinning angrily. The two dogs started to approach them, growling angrily. Ha Hee Young realized that they were undead. She pointed her flame-shrouded staff and shouted that she was sure there must be a dark wizard somewhere. She told everyone to prepare for battle. Su Hayek asked how they could kill them all again if they didn't have time. Many dogs were running towards them. Su Hayek asked Ha Hee Young how much time was left. He guessed that there were about five hours left. She said that if she did something now, she wouldn't be able to use magic for a while. She asked him if he could manage without her. Her hand was shrouded in fire. Su Hayek turned around in surprise. Ha Hee Young was saying something incomprehensible with her eyes closed, shrouded in flames.
frowning, she said, flame tsunami. She was surrounded by huge flames. She pointed her staff forward. A huge stream of flames engulfed the dogs. Su Hayek and Seo Ho Seo looked on in surprise. Su Hayek thought that this was the fantastic flower that he had been dreaming about. Looking at the flames that filled the passageway, he admired her magic. Ha Hee Young staggered, and Seo Ha Rin caught her and asked if she was okay. She said it was fine, just that she had used up all her magic. She said with a tired face that they didn't have much time left, so she decided to get it over with as soon as possible. With a nervous grin, Seo Ho Seo said that Ha Hee Young was second in the rankings, and he was still far from Su Hayuk. Cole is surprised, looking at the charred bodies of the dogs in front of them. Seo Ho Seo noticed that there were secret rooms everywhere. Cole was surprised. Su Hayuk walked up to the wall. He put a gold key in a keyhole in the wall and said he would open it. Opening the door with his hand, he and Seo Ho Seo entered a room where a man in a black hoodie was standing next to a two-headed dog. Looking at the two-headed dog, Su Hayek cursed, saying that it appeared at the exact moment when Ha Hee Young has no magic. Gritting his teeth, he told everyone to prepare for battle. He gripped his axe tightly with his hands wrapped in electricity. He shouted at Seo Ha Rin and Cole that their main task was to protect Ha Hee Young. They took up a fighting stance. Cole put an arrow in his bow, Seo Ha Rin held a mace in her hand. Su Hayek said that he thinks the wizard will be a big nuisance, so you need to kill him first. The wizard and the dog turned to look at him. Su Hayek leapt forward and swung his axe at the wizard. The wizard gritted his teeth as he stared at him. Su Hayek swung his axe, cutting the wizard down. He shouted at Seo Ho Seo to protect the squad. He said he could handle it on his own. Seo Ho Seo agreed and told him to do whatever he wanted. The dog lunged at the protagonist, snarling with its two heads. Su Hayek gritted his teeth as he swung the axe. He swung the axe, chopping off the dog's heads. Next to them, a purple magic seal with an item was visible. Seo Ho Seo asked Su Hayek if he was okay. He replied with a smile that everything was fine and offered to collect the items. Seo Ho Seo happily agreed. Kashi Autumn Sky Shoes Dialogue Box, you can become proficient in everything you do with your feet. You can step on nothing twice. Agility plus three, stamina plus two. Ha Hee Young said that they should let Su Hayek keep the shoes. She offered to leave here. Cole nodded back. Dobby asked Su Hayek what it was and said it was amazing. Seo Ho Seo supported him and said that he was worried that the dark wizard would let the dogs out again, but Su Hayek knocked him down in just one punch. The main character chuckled awkwardly. Cole seriously told him that he needed to be a little more confident. He said that he always solves problems when they are in danger. He added that the same applies to Ha Hee Young. Su Hayek told him to stop and that he wasn't that good. Cole suggested that he might be doing this on purpose to help them grow. Su Hayek interrupted him with a grim face and said that's definitely not the case. He thought about how he had almost been discovered. Seo Ho Seo thought that they might be young, but they were still very attentive. Su Hayek thought about how it wasn't like that. The dialogue box says, congratulations. The ninth floor of the Cassiatum maze was completed. Points are counted. The door in front of them began to glow with a bright white light. The dialogue box says that there are 43 minutes and 59 seconds left, and that the dog paradise room has been completed. Battle results are added. Points are being counted. 5879 achievement points will be added. Total achievement points, 55,804 points. Move to the waiting room. Su Hayek and his group were shrouded in blue light. The red dialogue box says, received, battle concentration of the 16th level, regeneration of the 7th level, steel skin of the 3rd level. The dialogue box says, constellation of the Tower of Trials, a look back at the Earth God. Author, Jimmy Handlick. Right before the conquerors of the Tower of Trials enter it, they will remember a mysterious message talking about the Green Belt. Su Hayek and Ha Hee Young are sitting in a cafe, looking at the dialogue box in front of them. There are many conquerors who dream of invading extraterrestrial civilizations. However, no matter how advanced science is, it is no different from magic, and the author believes that this phenomenon can only be described as a joke from God. A faceless man holds a blue flame in his hands. The constellation classes are as follows, how many planets do you own? Several faceless men stand surrounded by auras of different colors. Or, how strong is the power of God? The author asks if this is how they are separated. So, we can assume that the constellations that exist throughout the universe are the gods of the planets. On planets in space, white human figures sit wrapped in auras of different colors. One might even think how the conquerors were deceived by the constellations and their classes on the early floors. Dialogue boxes with offers to enter into a contract appear in front of the main character, like a kind of social security policy between the gods. Even sports have a draft system. 
However, there is one thing that raises doubts. A human figure wrapped in a blue aura stands on the planet Earth. Where do the conquerors, whose class is a priest, draw their divine power from? Standing next to planet Earth are Sioha Rin and Chloe. Why doesn't divine power appear in the priest status window? Sioha Rin stands with a serious face, holding out a staff that is shrouded in blue energy. Unlike the other types found in the Tower of Trials, why do they use up mana when casting healing spells? Thus, the author believes that the Tower of Trials is the process of selecting the god of the planet. A white human figure wrapped in a yellow aura stands surrounded by black human figures worshipping it. However, there is something that bothers the author, the phrase belonging, Tower of Challenges, which is written in the Conqueror's status window. He wonders what that means. Su Hayek chews and thinks about how the ability recovery that was previously limited has now increased. He's holding a fork and knife. Su Hayek thought about how by the time he reached the 11th floor, his skills would be even better and the 10th floor would be a break. Smiling, he thought that his skills had also improved significantly. The dialogue box says that the 10th floor of the test tower is 30 minutes and 21 seconds away. Su Hayek said that he even bought a chest to store the mimic. The dialogue box describes a chest for storing facial expressions, purchase price, 1,000 points. A chest that can store a small mimic, can't store the host. Su Hayek picked up the chest in his hand, touching it with his finger. He asked Ha Hee Young how to put a mimic in this chest because it is smaller than the mimic itself. She replied that it was not difficult, and he just needed to open the lid over the storage chest and turn it upside down, and then the little mimic would get sucked in. Su Hayek puts the item in the chest, and mimic can be heard shouting from it. He told Ha Hee Young that the mimic was inside. He asked if that was all. As she brushed her teeth, she told him that he just needed to train him. Ha Hee Young said that it won't work properly at first, but if he trains it a little bit, he can use it as an inventory later. Su Hayek asked about the training. Smiling with a toothbrush in her mouth, she raised an eyebrow and said that he would be much cuter than he thought and only needed a little shake every time he didn't listen. The main character looked at the chest, thinking about training. Dobby shouted at him that he was a good trainer and asked him to trust him with it. Su Hayek replied that Dobby had never trained a mimic before. He said it didn't look very difficult, so I'm sure you can handle it yourself. Dobby puffed out his cheeks. Turning around in a huff, Dobby said they'd see how he did. Su Hayek put the trunk back in his pocket and said that he would probably understand when the time came. He asked Ha Hee Young what was going on with the armor. He added that she said she would learn more. She replied that she was studying it right now, but it was difficult to understand it right away. With a smile, she said that there wasn't much time left and suggested that they discuss it when they got to the rest area. The dialogue box announced that the time was up and announced the move to the 10th floor. The dialogue boxes say, Su Hayek Squad is entering the 10th floor recreation area. The 10th floor is a place where conquerors can relax. All combat operations are prohibited in this zone. Su Hayek and Dobby found themselves on the grass, surrounded by medieval residential buildings. The dialogue box says, please rest to your heart's content. Time remaining, 35 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. Su Hayek sighed in delight. Dobby did the same. They cheered, and Su Hayek announced that this was the 10th floor's recreation area. Seo Ho Seo chuckled and said it was fine. Seo Ha Rin exclaimed in delight. Cole exclaimed in surprise. Seo Ho Seo said with a smile that he knew it was a recreation area from the beginning. Seo Ha Rin exhaled and said that she shouldn't have worried. With drool coming out of his mouth, Seo Ho Seo said that usually such places give rewards according to the ranking. He asked what they would get here, and grinned. Laughing, he asked about how they didn't have anything here. He said that if there was, they would take everything. Looking around, Su Hayek noticed something. Many other conquerors appeared around. He guessed that there were approximately a thousand people here and wondered if this place could accommodate them. Ha Hee Young said that this is the first sector of the 10th floor's recreation area, and the recreation area is divided into different sectors. She explained that each sector has its own advantages. Pointing at the buildings nearby with his staff, Ha Hee Young said that it looked like these buildings were their hideout. She invited them to go there. Seo Ha Rin and Seo Ho Seo agreed with a smile. Dobby happily held up his hands and said that he was excited. The recreation area is divided into four sectors, housing, dining, weapon store and general store. According to Ha Hee Young, accommodation and meals are provided free of charge. Dobby is eating an intelligent dinner in an expensive suit and top hat. He lies in bed, dressed in his pajamas, and has a dream about Su Hayek worshipping him. For this reason, recreation areas are used for exchanging and selling items rather than buying. The weapon shop and general store are similar to the stores in the waiting room, but sometimes they have items that are not sold in the waiting room store. The problem is that they are more expensive than in the store, and if the buyer is not satisfied with the price, he can only leave. Dobby stands behind the counter, frowning sternly and folding his arms across his chest. 
Sue Hayek decided that since the stores would open tomorrow, they wouldn't go there today. Smiling slightly, he thought about how this was the first time he had come to such a peaceful place since entering the tower. He noticed that everyone seemed to enjoy the joy of survival. He glanced at the conqueror in front of him, who was glad that they had made it here. The blonde-haired guy exclaimed when he noticed Sue Hayek. People started talking, asking if this was really the first one in the ranking. A guy in an orange t-shirt called out to him and happily asked for his autograph. Sue Hayek thought about how he was too enthusiastic. Ha Hee Young nudged him with her shoulder and told him to turn around and just stare without changing his expression. He wondered why she was suddenly acting like this. He assumed it was because she was once again worried about them being surrounded by girls. He imagined a lot of girls admiring him. He thought that if that happened, it would be a problem for their group. Sue Hayek put his hand on his face and decided to try installing the concept. Opening his eyes, he announced in his mind that mind control was complete. He thought that the first impression was very important, so leaving the impression of being superior in the eyes of other conquerors would be an advantage. Without turning around, he said with a grim face that he was busy with his own business. The guy in the orange t-shirt looked at him admiringly. Sue Hayek thought that his plan was a failure. Night. Sue Hayek, beer in hand, happily asked Seo Ho Seo if he really lived near Dangjiang Station too. Laughing, he said it was true. Surprised that Sue Hayek lived in his neighborhood, he said that the world is small. There's a lot of food on the table in front of them. Cole, fork in mouth, said the food was delicious. Seo Ha Rin agreed with a smile and admired the fact that these extraterrestrial beings could cook Earth food. Su Hayek said that their food is even tastier than most things they've seen on Earth. Ha Hee Young said that the situation may be different in other sectors. Cole asked her what she meant. She replied that there were rumors that they could sell items in exchange for achievement points or only give water and bread. Cole said it was possible. Su Hayek lowered his eyes, thinking that maybe if it wasn't for Ha Hee Young, they might not have made it to the first sector. As he sipped his beer, he realized that this was what she meant by benefits. A voice called out to them, asking if a seat was available at their table and if they could join them. Turning around, he saw a drunk girl with a bottle in her hand, who was smiling absurdly. He recognized her as Alexi Braham, the third-ranked conqueror. She sat down next to him, and he thought about how he hadn't even told her she could sit down yet. Alexi said with a smile that they had finally collected seats from first to sixth at the same table. Dobby said irritably that he was here, too. When she saw him, she greeted him and said that she wanted to meet him. They touched hands, and Dobby said it was nice to meet her, too. Dobby said that unlike Sue Hayek, she is a very warm person. Sue Hayek looked at her with a smile and thought that if she was kind to Dobby, then she wasn't a bad person. The main character looked at Ha Hee Young, whose eyes were burning with rage. He wondered if something had happened between them in a previous life or if Alexi was a bad person. Su Hayek spread his hands and asked why she was acting like this. Ha Hee Young turned away in annoyance, crossing her arms over her chest. Su Hayek didn't understand what was wrong. Alexi said that one of the members of her group offered to collect the wills of the conquerors and asked what they were doing. Su Hayek asked about the wills. She said that a friend of theirs, Jimmy Handlake, had mentioned it. She explained that if anyone survived and left the tower, they would deliver the wills to the families of the fallen conquerors. Cole said there were a lot of conquerors, and they didn't know how many of them would die. Alexi replied with a smile that they have a community, and wills should be as short as possible. She said the wills would be delivered by the conquerors who left the tower. Sue Hayek asked how to remember them all. Alexi said that the store sells automatic recording notebooks, and someone can organize them and transfer them separately. Handlake said he'd take care of the records for now. In, a hooded guy stands with a notepad over his hand, shrouded in purple energy. She said that he would update the notebook every floor and post to the community chat. If it dies, someone else will replace it, like a transferable project. Laughing, Seo Ho Seo said that he was happy with everything and Handlake seemed like a good person. Alexi smiled and said that it was true. She added that he is also a wonderful wizard. Taking a sip of beer from his mug, Su Hayek thought that if the earth was still in order, it might actually bring peace to the conqueror's families. Smiling, he thought that having such thoughts was fine and that Alexi's group were good people. Blushing, she asked Su Hayek if he would like to have a drink with her. He didn't understand her and said they were drinking right now. With a flirtatious smile, she said she meant to have a drink together. Embarrassed, he sprayed beer out of his mouth. A dialog box announced that you were connected to the Forum of the Dead. The dialog boxes say, the conquerors have entered the 10th floor, the recreation area. Dead conquerors can't watch conquerors in the recreation area. The yellow ghost in tears wails, why? He complained that it wasn't fair, because if it was a recreation area, they would do interesting things there. Green Ghost asked what they were going to do if they didn't even have a physical body. Yellow Ghost asked irritably if he was Masal. A Masal is someone who has never been in a relationship. 
Green Ghost asked what it was and if it was edible. Yellow Ghost said he was only a Mossal. Bursting into tears, he shouted that he didn't care if they were Mossals or not, and just wanted to see the recreation area. Green Ghost asked if Su Hayek should even save such people and told them to just die. He added that he also wanted to go on a date. Ha Hee Young asked Su Hayek if he had time to do such things. Her eyes were blazing with rage, and she said that he said that he was going to discuss the armor with her today. Crossing her legs, she asked if he was going to drink with her. After scratching his head awkwardly, he apologized and said that he needed to talk to Ha Hee Young. Glancing at Ha Hee Young who was drinking beer, he thought about how he shouldn't be seduced by someone in front of his childhood friend's eyes. Alex turned to Cole and asked him. Cole looked up and apologized, saying it wasn't that he didn't like her, but that he already had a partner. Laughing, she said she was joking. She said that, for some strange reason, she lost interest in other people after the eighth floor. She rose from her chair. Putting her hands on the protagonist's shoulders, she hugged him and told them all to work hard. Su Hayek's stony face thought that it was as if time had stopped for a second. Smiling with a blank stare, he thought about the fact that he farted. Su Hayek watched the group leave. Ha Hee Young stared at him, burning with anger. Irritated, he asked her why she was acting like this. He added that he had done nothing. Blushing, Ha Hee Young frowned, looked away, and asked what she had done. With a laugh, Seo Ho Seo asked why the first and second places in the ranking were acting like this. He urged everyone to knock their glasses together. Seo Ha Rin asked if she could drink because he told her not to drink earlier. He patted her on the head and said that everything was fine and she was already an adult. They held up their beer mugs, shouting a toast to their squad. Dobby is holding a small glass with a happy face. Su Hayek thought that they were a very strong squad all along. Ha Hee Young looked at them with a gentle smile. Su Hayek happily raised his beer glass. Tonight, in the living quarters, Su Hayek is lying in bed next to Dobby. Crying voices call their loved ones, say that they love them and miss them, and that they want to go home. Su Hayek thought about how loneliness comes when a person is alone, making them weaker. Seo Ha Rin is crying her eyes out in bed. Cole folded his hands in prayer. Seo Ho Seo covers her eyes with her hands, shivering. Ha Hee Young is sitting in the window looking at the night sky. Reaching out to his parents, Su Hayek told them not to worry because he would definitely come back along with everyone else. Clenching his fist, he raised it above him. Weapon store. The stone man in the apron, noticing the conquerors, smiled and said that he was glad to see them. He told them to look at the items themselves and just pay when they left. He said that they can go up to the second floor to repair, craft, and sell items. Su Hayek thought about how he looked like any NPC in the game. Su Hayek thought that there are a lot of overgeared carrying games, but that is probably impossible here. Ha Hee Young hummed beside him with a smile as she studied the counters. He thought that if this were the case, there would be no need for regress. There were items for 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 points on the shelves. Frowning, Su Hayek said that they were expensive. Ha Hee Young said that she had told him that the prices here were quite high. Su Hayek agreed. He asked if there was any useful armor here. Raising her index finger, Ha Hee Young said that she was looking for her right now and asked him to wait for a while. Covering her mouth in surprise, she was surprised that it was here. Su Hayek asked what she was talking about and what happened. The dialogue box described the Underworld's mana accumulation gauntlets, exclusive, price, 70,000 points. Su Hayek cried out in shock, which gloves could be worth 70,000 points. Ha Hee Young said that if they were here, there was no way she could have known about it. The main character asked in surprise if there was any problem and why they were so expensive. She asked if he remembered what they had been told when they first came to the tower, that there were four sentient species involved. Su Hayek replied that he remembered. She said that these gloves were worn by the Conqueror in the first place ranking of another planet. She remembered the gloved centaur. Thinking about it, Ha Hee Young said that those gloves made things very difficult back then. Pointing her finger at the gloves, she told Su Hayek to find him an armor later and buy it first. Su Hayek retorted that he didn't have enough points because he only had 54,000. Ha Hee Young pointed at the gloves with her finger. She said she would give them to him. The main character asked if she could give others achievement points. She spread her hands and said that they can be passed on to others, although no one knows yet. She explained that since the collected points do not change, the rating also does not change. Raising an eyebrow, Su Hayek asked if she could really just pass her glasses around freely. Clapping his hands, Ha Hee Young says that he will be charged 10% commission, but if he can buy these gloves, it will be worth it. She smiled grimly and told him to trust her and make sure to buy these gloves, otherwise she would kill him. Chuckling nervously, he said that he should listen to the regressor. The dialogue box announced the acquisition of the Underworld's mana accumulation gauntlets. The dialogue box described them, highest grade gauntlet produced by the Underworld. More mana accumulated the more you kill. More mana accumulated the closer you get to killing. 
grows in accordance with the user's level. All abilities plus two. Su Hayek smiled as he clenched his gloved hand into a fist and wondered if the next floor would be too difficult. He and Dobby ended up in a shaft of lanterns. A dialogue box greeted the 11th floor of the challenge tower. The dialogue box says, kill all enemies. Time left, 12 hours. Su Hayek noted that this floor is lighter than the previous single floor. He remembered Ha Hee Young, who had told him to remember not to relax even if there was a goblin in front of him. She told him not to forget that even if it's the same goblin warrior, their strength changes with the floor. Closing his eyes, Su Hayek told himself to never relax and focus as hard as possible to finish this completely. He opened his eyes. Grabbing his sword, Dobby called him forward. Su Hayek, axe in hand, agreed. They went deeper into the mine. Two armored orc guards appeared in front of them. Su Hayek told Dobby to stand behind him. He said he understood and stood behind me. The orcs charged at them. Su Hayek thought that since they were wearing steel armor, it would be easier to attack them with lightning. But he needed to learn more on single floors, so he would fight using only an axe. He charged, swinging his axe. He thought about how he wanted to protect everyone, and quickly swung his axe at the orcs, who were bleeding from their wounds. Dobby looked at him admiringly. Dobby waved his sword happily and said that he was imitating him, and he was strong. Su Hayek exhaled with a smile as he glanced at him. The dialogue boxes say, you have entered the boss room. Please select one of the two doors and continue. Remaining time, 5 hours, 52 minutes, 59 seconds. Su Hayek and Dobby appeared in front of the red and black doors, shrouded in blue light. Su Hayek asked if there really wasn't a secret mission or a secret room. Dobby said he didn't feel anything at all. The main character asked him what he thought about how he fought on the way here. Dobby gave me a thumbs up and said he was cool. Lowering his eyes thoughtfully, Su Hayek wondered if this was how it looked to others even though he made so many unnecessary moves. He remembered swinging the axe. He thought about how, for the moment, he was happy with the fact that he sometimes had a few good moves. Su Hayek drew Dobby's attention to the doors in front of them. Dobby asked what was wrong. He asked him if he thought they were related to the monsters they would have to fight against. Dobby grudgingly replied that Su Hayek was stupid, and he obviously didn't know that. Su Hayek asked if he wanted to enter any of these doors. He replied with a smile that he didn't want to enter any of them. Su Hayek made sure that Dobby was completely useless on this floor. He cursed at Dobby in his mind, grinning menacingly as he pulled Dobby's face into his cheeks. Standing in front of the red door, the protagonist told Dobby to stay there. Dobby stood resentfully, saying that he was stupid. As he touched the red door, Su Hayek thought about how the energy coming from that door sent chills down his spine. He tensed and thought that according to his instincts, he shouldn't go there. He decided to start with the black door. Su Hayek and Dobby went to the black door, and the protagonist opened it. He looked inside and said it was dark. Dobby knew it was dark. Su Hayek guessed that it was a dome-shaped arena, trying to figure out what those holes in the ceiling were. The main character tells Dobby that since they don't know anything for sure, he will go first. He told him to stay put for a while. Dobby told him to be careful. Su Hayek thought if that is just a channel that's passing through. The dark ball rolled down. After hearing it, Su Hayek realized that it was a trap room. Turning around, he shouted at Dobby to stay where he was and not relax. A ball shot out from the hole in the wall, and Su Hayek dodged it by jumping to the side. He said it was easy. Bouncing off the wall, the ball flew at the main character and he opened his eyes in surprise. Su Hayek noticed spikes sticking out of the ball flying at him. He hit the ball with the axe and it bounced off the ground several times. He spun around and turned out to be a living creature with swords in his hands. The dialogue box is described in Tutuli Guardian, can roll its body up like a ball and roll on the ground, can furl and unfurl the awl on the back of its body, has advantage with its sharp dual-wielding swordsmanship. Frowning, Su Hayek thought about how he didn't look that strong. He thought about seeing dual-wielding swordsmanship for the first time and wondered if it would help him with his axe mastery. Several more Tutuli guardians rolled through the holes. When Su Hayek noticed them, he knew that he wasn't alone. As he took a fighting stance, he thought about how he needed to get stronger so that he could avoid situations like this. Glancing at his opponent, he noticed that he wasn't in a hurry to attack right away. He assumed that their plan was to defend while waiting for a weak spot. Tutuli Guardian grinned viciously. Su Hayek thought about how, after discovering a weak spot, they were going to use their attack from both sides. He thought about how he hadn't played around on the way here either. He took out a dagger from his belt, holding it in his other hand. Tutuli Guardian ran to attack, swinging his swords. He swung his sword, striking in front of him, and Su Hayek swung his axe. Tutuli Guardian held out his sword, shrouded in yellow energy. Su Hayek hit him in the torso. He grinned and clutched the dagger and axe in his hands. He waved them in front of him, gritting his teeth. Blood gushed out of Tutuli Guardian's mouth. 
He fell to the ground in front of the main character. Su Hayaki closed his eyes and snapped them open, enveloped in electricity. His hair turned white, and two more Tutuli guardians flew out of the walls. He thought about how time had stopped. He leaped up, swinging the axe. With swings of the axe, he struck at the opponents. He thought that in this state, he was the best. Su Hayek had his back to the Tutuli guardians lying on the ground. His hair was turning back to black. He grinned smugly. Tutuli guardian slammed into him, knocking him off his feet. Blood gushed out of Su Hayek's mouth. Dobby screamed his name in fright. 